Hello, everyone. I have a very good friend of mine here today, and you are going to have such a treat. This is going to be a long video, and it's because this is Janice Boynton. She's over there in Maine, which is on the other side of the world for me. So it's she's three <laughs> hours ahead of me. And it's almost nighttime for her, I guess. Yeah, the day the day's half over. <laughs> she's a very good friend of mine. We've been associated together for a long time. She is an artist, and you can see some of her art behind you. She does a lot of collage and a lot of other creative things. And she's also an expert in uh, facilitated communication. And I am just amazed at the level of uh, investigation she does and research she does. So when I asked her today, <clears throat> yesterday, I said, do you want to do this video with me? We're going to, I'm going to give you a video and um, take notes and, and we'll talk about it on Zoom and uh, put it up on my channel. And she's like, oh, that sounds like fun. And so she's done all sorts of research and looked into it and, and, started uh getting into it herself so um this should be interesting so i know it'll take a while because janice and i when we get together we we, we tend to talk a little bit <laughs> it's just kind of the way it is so you might need to watch this video in doses but that's okay this is a really interesting look into a um a summit that i got my hands on and it was done in 2021 and Thomas John arranged this. And that's important to know because he selected these mediums. They're all supposedly evidential mediums. And he selects them for, I guess he believes they're real. I think some of them are his students. I'm not quite sure. But they all say, you know, give homage to him. You know, oh, Thomas John, he's so amazing. Completely ignoring the fact that he's been busted multiple times. And this is recorded in 2021. So he's the information about him being busted is out there multiple times. So um, anyway, so there's a whole, it's four hours of reading by multiple different uh, psychic mediums. And of course, we're not showing you those today. We only have one hour of reading. And so this is a clip out of the mediumship um, event. It's called a medium summit. I think it's called the medium summit. And um, some of the things to know, it's being done over Zoom. So we have access to everything. We have the names of all the people who are on, you know, as they're on Zoom, you can see their name. So if somebody needed a hot read, it wouldn't be that hard. But it's even more than that. What, we're, what Janice hasn't seen the other videos that I have, all of them are pretty much cold reading so far I've gone through. This one has a blend. And I think it's really curious about that blend. And I and you're going to hear more about it whenever Janice and I get towards those parts of it. So keep that in mind when you're watching it. Also, these women who are on this mediumship summit, and I think there's two men, and they're all, all women. I think there's 36 of them. Somebody mentioned at the beginning, 36 people were on the call, which isn't very many. I think they paid $50 to get to have this full day. Hmm. and um, I think it was an early bird special for $45. <laughs> oh, boy. And the women you'll see when they come on the screen, they're going about their day. Some are shopping, some are driving. They're all doing different kinds of things, and they have a lot of things in common. One of them is not only that they're women, but they've had multiple readings. Some, A lot of them seem to have had readings by Thomas John before, which means they've probably been hot read. No, not probably. They were hot red. <laughs> and um, the other thing is, the since the person we're going to be reviewing, her name is Kelly Eckhart, she's appearing in the middle of the summit. She's also been able to see the readings from before. Hmm. So as the, other, hmm. so as, as the other psychics have found out information about people, she just has to listen in and she's got uh, more information. That's something that's not going to be obvious for somebody just watching this video. The other thing to pay attention to is that just like with TV and so on, what is missing is, is more, is just as important as what's there. And what we can see is a person on the screen on zoom. But what we can't see is that they're on a screen with multiple pictures on it. So they can watch when they say something, they say, 
I'm getting such and such, such and such. They can see somebody in one of the little Zoom squares going, oh, oh my gosh, that's me. You know, they can see that. They can see people going, no. Just because we can see only one person doesn't mean they can't see them. So as they're doing a reading and they're going, well, <clears throat> you know, they say, oh, who is, um, who's the person who had this happen to them? And they're going, I don't, I don't know. We can't see that person's actions and facial expressions. Only the person who's speaking will appear on the, on the screen. It's speaker's view on like Zoom, right? And they have chat. <clears throat> so they're talking and chatting and they could read the chat and we can't. So with that said, so Janice, what do you think of this little endeavor we're going to do today? Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm really interested in, um, like when I was watching the video, like some of the language the person used and, um, the, the title, like she was introduced as a certified advanced psychic evidential medium which i had never heard those terms but ooh, that seems like a juicy title they, they um, all use that evidential medium so i'm really curious uh, uh about what that actually means and and what evidence they can act the evidence the way that i understand evidence um how that might play well, out and something different i think to them they think uh i suspect yeah i think from Okay, my definition of an evidential medium in their mind is that somebody validates it. Oh, okay. Evidence. I've heard that oh. many times. Well, you need to get a reading yourself, Susan, so that you can so that you can know if they're real or not. And you're like, I'm not so sure that's going to be doing it, you know, because if I'm getting a reading and they say something about something that could possibly be true, they're like, well, then you validate that. And that's how you know that it's true. And you're like, okay. I see. She also used evidence at one point. And when we get to it, I'll I'll try to remember to pick okay. it out. Yeah. But but it wasn't it wasn't what I would call evidence necessarily. So yeah, this is what I I tell people in the skeptic community. We're all speaking English. We're speaking English to each other, but the words don't necessarily mean the same thing. You know, like the word energy. We, we we have a totally people in the scientific community have a different definition of the word energy i believe <laughs> evidence theory so we're, we're speaking english but we're not quite on the same page when it comes to the word so right and i think this is interesting too and if you want to relate this back to the to the fc the facilitated communication world a lot of people probably watching this have never heard of facilitated communication and probably heard, and that's good <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or spelling yeah. to communicate or any of the others but janice and i have a belief i think it's more than a belief that the world of the facilitated communication and you guys can look it up there's a really great wikipedia page and there's a really great website called facilitated communication.org um, that the two worlds have a lot of similarities in it that the person who's being facilitated and oh, well, the parent who, who is having their child facilitated um, and the world of a person who wants to hear from someone who's passed away, the, the motivation is the same. Can you, can mm -hmm. you expand on that just like in a minute or two? Yeah. Well, I think, I think with the psychic, a, a lot of the introduction to the psychic world is that, that somebody really wants to get in contact with a lost loved one you know, somebody who's died and they, they want to make a connection. And I think with facilitated communication, what happens is that it's used with people with severe communication difficulties. And, and that parent probably um, has gone through the grieving process in terms of, of losing an idealized version. Like when you think about, okay, I'm going to have a child and what all that means um, it's a very different version than if you your child is severely communication impaired or or developmental development developmentally disabled. Sorry, um, and so I think that desire to make a a human connection with something or someone that you've lost is a very strong and powerful emotion, and so I see I see an overlap. Um, There's one point where. Um, the psychic talks about ta um, 
working with people with Alzheimer's and even before oh, they're right. dead. Oh, that's they, right. Um, yeah. And I, with them. I thought of you immediately. Yeah. And I thought, I thought about the facilitated communication because what, what happens with facilitated communication is that the facilitator controls the messages, just like in this case, the psychic would control what the person with Alzheimer's is is saying and thinking and feeling and um, using their words to describe it. But they they say that it's the person with Alzheimer's, but it's really the psychic that's coming up with all these stories about what the what the person feels and thinks. And um, that's very similar with facilitated communication. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I'd forgotten that. That is absolutely true. I did. Yeah. I wrote that in one of my notes. I'm like, oh, yeah. You're able to communicate with people who have not died yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, that to me is very troubling. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Very troubling. Yeah. Um, the I'll mention really quickly that we're going to use the word psychic, but in that's kind of a generic term. These people are claiming to be mediums, which are psychic, and that an extra uh, bit on there is the mediumship is communicating with the dead. And not just talking to the dead, because I mean, anybody could talk to dead people, but what is it they say? They don't always talk back. So these people claim that they're able to communicate back. And mm -hmm. um, so we will use the word psychic, but not all psychics say they're mediums, but all mediums are psychic. So we just use that word. So mm -hmm. calm down people. Um, hot reading, cold reading. Do you want to say what cold reading is? Uh, cold reading is like fishing for information. Let me get, um, thinking of a letter B and like, I want to, I want to say this person is a B name uh, and she says it in here, like Brian, Brian or Byron. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the person that, that, um, understands this message says, oh, I've got a B name, Bob, which is nowhere near. Yeah. That, that was one of the ones in here, I believe. And I thought yeah, it is, Robert, yeah. right? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And so it's sort of like fishing for information and you get a reaction from somebody and then you go from there and you kind of def define it. You start broadly, like, oh, I'm thinking, of, I, I might be thinking of a person that's, you know, like a mom and who's very charismatic. And, and then you narrow it down to really funny. that mom had three children instead of one or two children, you know, so you're eliminating, and that happens too in this, in this mm -hmm. example, is that she eliminates people. She gets two people that responded to whatever her prompt was then she eliminates it by saying oh this this mom had three children and that that eliminated the one of the people because yeah. they only had one Very other sibling cold, yeah. yeah cold reading also is whenever people are throwing out statements that are general to every everybody you know he had a really great sense of humor um he really loved, uh, she really loved gardening. She really loved flowers. I, does that mean anything to you? You know, and yeah, um, just things that feel like they could be specific. And like, you know, you have a scar on your knee. That's a real classic one. Um, everybody has a scar on the knee probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's just real kind of general statements that feel specific, but they're really not. Or they use demographics like, if you're looking at a person and you can see how old you they appear to be and you can hear their accent like janice has an accent in the sometimes you pick up on it that you're you're definitely from that part of the world you're definitely from maine or somewhere in that area and so if you pick up on that you can say you might you know maybe throw out things that are more lobster oriented or, <laughs> <laughs> or weather uh, you know, that you have, you live in an area that there's snow and there's weather and things like that. Whereas mm -hmm. I'm in California and if people hear my accent, they might pick up on, oh, well, it, you know, she's, she's going to have different kind of demographics or just the age of a person or their, their perceived um, gender perceived um, uh, culture that they're raised in. Mm -hmm. You're going to have different names associated with them, like Bob, Robert, Mary, John, Whereas if we were in Norway, <laughs> you would have a whole different series of names that would be used. Or if we were in Mexico, they would they would use different names, Maria and Jose. And, you know, they wouldn't common names in different countries is what I'm trying to say. So mm -hmm. that's all cold reading. All right. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to see, actually, you're not going to see it. It's just um, a screen. 
is just uh, it says Tracy on it. Now Tracy is Thomas John's assistant, and she is a full on, full on believer. And I'm not going to get into the the history of Tracy. She's she's uh, she's not somebody whose mind will ever be changed. I I don't I can't even imagine if somebody were to be able to prove to her something. And it's just exactly like with facilitated communication, right? Well, you get emotionally committed and then what's, and, and like some of these public figures, if you're a public figure, you're also staking your reputation on, on psychics working. And so it, I think it would take a, a, a really huge psychological um, strength uh, um, to break out of that belief system. Like you have to, I think it would be really difficult to do that. Think, and the more I you believe in it, the, the harder it is to. Yeah, it would be like know. a psychotic break, I think, because oh, yeah. Tracy, Tracy's son has died and she believes that Thomas John is in communication with him. And if it were proved to her that Thomas John is indeed hot reading and has never been in communication with her son, which is what I believe and what I believe that through the work and the research I and other people on my team have done that he's never been in contact with the dead. If that was somehow to be proved to her, it would be like losing her son again. Yeah. So yeah. she's, she's unconvincible. And it's a coping strategy, you yeah. know, it's an emotional coping strategy. And, and this is what happens in facilitated communication with these people that are suddenly communicating with their child that is, you know, a teenager or a 20 year old mm -hmm. or whatever, who's never been able to like, I, I, I hate to say that they're not communicating because they're obviously communicating. It's just not reading and writing and speaking mm -hmm. like we do right now. It's, it's a different kind of communication. Right. Um, it's mostly based on spelling. And all of a sudden, like overnight, these people who have not shown academic or literacy skills all of a sudden overnight, just by having somebody hold the letter board for them in the air, they're able to spell out these sophisticated um sentences yes. so that's the yeah yeah so if if after a period of time you've heard from your your student your child um how much they love you or um how they feel about things and what they're they're communicating they think you know in written form with this facilitator if after a period of time you've bought into that and then somewhere down the line, somebody says, oh, no, that we just made this all up. Nobody nobody was communicating with your child. It would be devastating. Yeah. yeah. Again, like losing your child again. It, yeah. You mean everything they said was not true? Yeah. You build up. And in these relationships, I, what I was listening to in the with the psychic readings, you know, there, there's a relationship building, you know, like... Um, you know, the person saying they're sorry for the way things happened or they're, you know, they, they wish that they were nicer towards the end of their life. And, you know, that kind of, I was in pain and, you know, supposedly the person from beyond is saying, you know, I was in pain. I'm really sorry that I was a crank. You know, I, I didn't mean to be grumpy all the time. You know, you did, you did a really good job. And that is, that, that's, that's easing something in the survivor's mind, you know, that, and, and they think that they're building a relationship with this person. That's the, their loved one that they've got in their head, but it's really just something that the psychic is, is coming up with just like, like an author creates characters and, and um, yeah. dialogue. And um, that's what happens with psychic. I think what happens with psychic readings and facilitated communication as well. You know, the, the conversation is internal to the psychic or the facilitator. And, and it seems real because a, a lot of times the psychics and the facilitators um, seem sincere in their belief. You know, like, I, I don't know that um, necessarily that, that, all of the mediums or all of the facilitators are doing something to be purposefully deceptive, but they just, just the, the nature of psychic readings or facilitated communication 
um, is deceptive in and of itself. But it, right. the person, the people involved, I think they come from a good place. You know, I, th I think the psychic that we saw, we were going to review today sincerely believes she's helping people. But yeah. I, I don't a, a, a sincere belief that you're helping people doesn't necessarily mean that you are helping people. Yeah, the, just, the ends justify the means. I think that some of the hot readers, especially probably think they're just being helped on by knowing some information ahead of time. I'm glad you brought that out, up about the authorship and the storyline that's kind of going in their mind. Not this woman as much as somebody, another reading I haven't, I've already reviewed, but I haven't released yet. She does, uh, she closes her eyes. She says, I have to reset. And she closes her eyes and there's like a count of 20. And, and then she comes out with, I'm getting a person who's had, and she's, it's like, she's creating a scenario, like a prompt for a book or something like, huh. you know, like, oh, there was this guy and he had this car and he really liked the car. And, you know, you feel like it's just somebody who's trying to like chat GTP or something. I guess they could do yeah. like readings just pretty as easily as um, these people, but you, you get the feeling that they're, they're like, okay, I've got to write a short story today. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be about a kitten that was walking on the sidewalk and it was really hot. You know, that kind of idea. It's, it's almost like they're just making it up. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't get some kind of line of story. Yeah, I think so. Cause it has to make sense in the, in the psychic's head, you know, what the, what they're saying, they have to kind of, and your brain works, your brain works really fast. And so you're filling in those gaps and, you know, like to an outsider, it might look like oh, this story is just like, kind of, you know, I'm wondering about the details of this story, but to the psychic in the moment, it seems to make sense. I think yeah. I didn't get that sense from this person. I got, I got the sense from this person that she had a list, you know, we talked about maybe there was a combination of hot and cold reading going on. And I think that because she asked a lot of questions um, more than more than a storyteller, you know, like she did, she did spend a good deal of time at the beginning trying to create a scenario to, to get people to respond to. But once somebody had, she asked a lot of questions. She wasn't really telling a story. She kept saying, well, I feel like, I feel like he wants to say such and such. And then she'd get a confirmation from the person she was reading. And then she would go a little bit farther. But she, whenever she, whenever she was talking about something that um, you couldn't really prove, she was much more confident than than when she was trying to, uh, uh, or much more direct about her statements than when she was narrowing it down to fit a particular person. And then she kept checking in, yeah, with the person. You know, like, is this right? You know, or is it she'd give them two options, you know, um, and and they would they would respond to one or the other or neither. You know, some of them said, no, that's and then she'd say, oh, that's OK. You know, we'll, we'll just go on to the next thing. And then she'd continue to redefine it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't get the sense from this particular person that her style was a storyteller. I I think she just like her style was more like I'm going to connect with these people by. I'm going to prove that I'm connecting with their loved one by asking them questions and getting verification from the sitter that what I'm saying connects with them somehow. And and whether there was a story to it or not, I don't know that she was all we'll that have, interested. We'll have in to it. let people watching kind of figure it out. But there, all these mediums are different. They all, have, I mean, they're they're alike in a lot of ways, but they also have their nuances. And what that's what I like about this channel that I have, this YouTube project that I'm working on, is that it's trying to understand how these people, how do sitters buy into this? How do they not just go, oh, this is BS. Get me out of here. Good mm -hmm. gracious, I got it. I got other things to do today. If I wanted to listen to a story, I'd go watch a movie on TV or something. How is it that they're so connected to that, I find that interesting. I also find it interesting how the psychic probably is to some extent fooling themselves. And, mm. and it has a lot to do with, you know, authority and wanting to help, wanting to please. Anyway, let's go, let's get started. I'm going to put Tracy's introduction to the to uh, Kelly Eckhart on. And that's just a few minutes. And then we'll pause and we'll see if there's any comments. And then you, and then we'll go into the 
Kelly doing her little thing. All right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's go to that. And here we go. Yeah. Okay. Kelly Eckert is a certified advanced psychic evidential medium and best selling co author of The Last Breath True Story of Mediumship, The Afterlife, and Messages from Heaven. Kelly understands navigating life, shaping grief, having experienced the loss of her older son, Ron, when he was 20 years old. She draws from this devastating experience and her own healing process to offer others an understanding of the spirit world. Kelly has been a noteworthy leader within the mediumship field for many years. She has been recognized and featured as an expert on the Ronnie Deutsch radio show and has been a guest on 98 Rock Radio in Sacramento. Kelly is driven by helping others shift their life experience for the greater good and experience substantial growth. Those people who have had the pleasure of working with Kelly encounter progress through their own personal shadows and turn into closure follows, and in turn closure follows. Clients become more positive and inspired, allowing them to find life purpose and leave with greater clarity. Overall, Kelly's presence is uplifting and empowering as she encourages the collective to trust the divine timing of the universe, but most of all, to trust in themselves. And I would like on a personal note to tell you that I've had many, many readings um, with uh, mediums, and you all know I'm Thomas's assistant. Kelly gave me one of the biggest wow moments I think I've ever had in a reading. Um, it was, I set an intention for Kelly. I, I said, those of you who know me too, I have a son in spirit. And I said, Kelly, and no, beforehand, I told my son, we always thought my son was in spirit with one of my best friend's son. And halfway through the meeting, Kelly had written that morning the name of my friend's son on a piece of paper and held it up and said to me, who is Tyler? And Tyler is who we all thought that he was in spirit with. And that is one of the biggest wow moments I've had in a reading. That was absolutely life-changing. Thank you, oh, Kelly. Thank you, Tracy. That's so <laughs> sweet. I'm okay, I'm going to stop it there. Hmm. So normally when I go through these things, I take extensive notes. And in this case, because I'm doing this whole mediumship summit, this whole series on these people, because these are mediums I've never had anything to do with before. They've not really crossed my radar, except you see their names on things and you go, oh yeah, that one's associated with this person. So I get them all blended together at times if I don't take good notes. But what I've done in a few of these videos that I'll be doing in the future is I'm kind of just winging it. I've gone all the way through, listened to it, and took very tiny bits of notes because I wanted to be fresh whenever I go through. You took a bunch of notes on this one. I did. And um, as I'm listening to this again, I'm hearing things that, wow, I'd forgotten about. Uh, let's address Cal uh, let's ag address Tracy's comment there at the very end first, before you get to the evidence of what she's done. So Tracy is an assistant of Thomas John, as we had said, she's not ever going to probably change her mind and i mean that thing where she says well i first i talked to my son today okay it's nice you talked to your son and told him i thought that people in spirit let's just use that that's their phrase people who've died were in contact with everybody who had died that they wanted to talk to i mean i guess i'd always assumed if they wanted to go talk to einstein they could go talk to einstein you know, or Cleopatra or whoever. <laughs> this idea that you have to be with somebody is mm. made up. Obviously, it's just something that they say, but that's that's just such an odd statement, you know, that he's with him. Well, why wouldn't he be if there was the possibility of endless life, everlasting, hang out with whoever you want? What? <laughs> what do you thought what's your thoughts yeah i don't know i i um i hadn't thought about that particular aspect of it i was interested why in... we're doing two people so that we can yeah 
I yeah. Have um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that, that he, she had to be in a specific, like with a specific person to come through. Some, lots of mediums will say that who is bringing them through, who is explaining the ropes to them and stuff. Okay. Well, you yeah. know, you've been there for a long time already and time shouldn't really mean anything to you. I wouldn't think. And if you're dead, it, I, I don't think it would matter. Would it? Yeah. Wh why does, why does some loved one, here on earth have to be the one to bring you through why couldn't just couldn't you make new friends there i mean <laughs> I, I i can I imagine know. the people i'd want to hang out with <laughs> i think it's interesting it, 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 and maybe that has to do with we, we haven't heard this part about it but kelly has this whole idea about what the afterworld is like and what mm -hmm. the purpose is and maybe the and tracy knows that so maybe that's part of that's yeah, part of the interesting the comment maybe so, so say what you were going to say about tracy's um uh, this T taylor person tyler tyler oh tyler well um i i looked up um kelly's credentials because you know she's she's claiming that she's an expert so i was curious about that and one of the things that um janice the word expert her, means something different to you and <laughs> Right, right, I know. But but on her on her another word. On her page. Well, mm -hmm. and I'll explain that in a second. On her page it says Shay Parker's best American psychics. And she was double tested and validated by them. So and this this will get to the, the Tracy comment in a second. Um so to me, the, there's a difference between double tested, which to them meant um she was they were she was tested twice, once by a professional tester, pro professional tester, psychic, uh, professional. Um, whatever that means. I couldn't find anything that gave specifics about what the protocol was, but that she was tested once with a professional psychic and once with a volunteer um, person that she was reading. So that was her testing and she passed it. So to her, to her that means double testing. To me, in order to... Um, show that this is evidence like the example that tracy gave that um she all of a sudden came up with this tyler name without knowing there would have to be double blind testing which is different double blind is different than double testing oh, and, I think, <laughs> and i and i think they use double i think they use double testing on purpose because they want to blur the lines between this what science and what's what they're doing and so double blind testing would mean that um kelly would not have heard anything about tracy and or tracy's son or who tracy thought her son was hanging out with um, and then if she had come up with that name without knowing any of that, then maybe that would be something to listen to. Right. But it wouldn't be. Evidence, but it yeah, would be that might that right. to me would be closer to evidence than what they're saying, what how they're defining it. But but you have to ask in this situation, what is the likelihood that Tracy has never talked to Kelly or Thomas John or any of the other people that Kelly also knows about her son and this person, T Taylor, right? Tyler, Taylor, Tyler, 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 Taylor. Um, and, and so, or, or posted on social media or, or her website or books that, or I don't know, you know, um, maybe she was on a radio show. Well, she was on a radio show, which is another whole story. But um, so so that's the difference to me. It's like it that that means nothing to me. That's just an anecdote. That's just a story that that Tracy is telling herself um, about the situation, because um, there's no um, there's a high likelihood that Kelly already knew about her son in heaven. Yeah. These are uh -oh. all a close group of right. people who associate together. Tracy's, right. Tracy's um, history is well known to them. And she right. tells so, everybody all the time. So it's not like it's a secret. Yeah. And so, um, and I might know something about Susan that I've forgotten that I know about. And then That's all of a true. sudden I, I'll say, you know, like, um what's this about raccoon? come out and it's sort of like oh you know like we're psychic we, what is, you know. what's going on with raccoons susan why do i see you associated with raccoons <laughs> yes this i've got a, a raccoon something yeah, something about a, some an animal with like 
black around the eyes and yeah, yeah, yeah. sneaks in your cat door and yeah, you used to, yeah. you used to. <laughs> We've got that yeah. Down. So, so the double blind testing, and that goes back to the evidentiary or whatever they call it, psychic evidential evidentiary mediumship. mediumship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about the evidential mediumship is I looked up like what I Googled, you know, what would it take to get a, um, cause she's a certified advanced oh, certified psychic ad evidential medium. I and I found a document right now that says I'm certified too. Yeah. Well, I found online a course for $16.99 that oh you could take goodness. to get a psychic medium master class on evidential mediumship. And it's a three hours on demand video. And there's a one article, there's two downloadable resources, full lifetime access, and you get a certificate of completion. I've got to do that. It's on it's on you you to me, U W E M Y dot com. Say that one time, U W E U W yeah, sorry, U D E M Y dot com. And I just Googled um, oh psychic God. medium masterclass on evidential mediumship is, and it's on sale right now for $16.99. So, wow. um, so now, when you talk about experts, <laughs> when you talk about experts, um, that's another, that's another um, in Tracy's introduction to Kelly, that's another word that she used that this person was, um, I think the term was that she was given expert status on the Ronnie Deutsch radio show and the 98 Rock radio. And so I looked up both of those and um, Ronnie Deutsch was a um, a tax lawyer. And so when a you look at it lawyer. that way, Boy, like how, how would a tax lawyer be um, in a position to um, say that a psychic was... He's, he's an authority an expert. He's on the radio. She. It's she, she. She's, she's famous. And, and yeah. And in, in addition to her, her status as a tax lawyer, she, she was disbarred in California. This is, she's got a Wikipedia page. Um, and she was disbarred in California for defrauding her clients. So, mm -hmm. so when you look at who they're saying is um endorsing kelly you kind of have to wonder like what their credentials are it's r-o-n-i you know i'm looking at them R -O -N -I -D -E yeah r-o-n-i-d-e-u-t-c-h ronnie lynn yep no no photo no info box controversy section is longer than her career and early life section together yeah oh my gosh yeah disbarment 2017 so far before this recording i would so what makes her what her. makes her an expert what makes her in a position to decide whether someone's an expert psychic or not that's what i would i would wonder what her what her education is or oh, like what, the word psychic what is nowhere on her wikipedia page no and the the other the other um radio show that she was on that gave her expert status was called the damn show. And it was like 98 rock radio in Sacramento, California. And it was just two, two um, radio announcers. They didn't have any, it wasn't like, it wasn't even a psychic show. It was a, it was just a show on the, on the radio that's been canceled. The show's actually been canceled. So um, yeah. So when, when, she's introduced by Tracy as having expert status. You kind of have to go back and look and say, what is it that gives her that expert status? Well, she's on two American psychic lists, like directories. The other one was, the first one was Shay Parker's best American psychics. And the second one is Bob Olson's best psychic directory. And those are on her website as giving her, um, credentials and as far as i can tell the only thing i, I thought was interesting about shea park is that they they do criminal background che checks for their psychics so um that tells you you know almost john wouldn't pass that one they're they're you know He's got a criminal history they're right on it so um 
Wow. Anyway, so for me, there's right from the get-go, like within the first minute or two of this video, I'm kind of, I've got questions in my head about what makes this person an expert? What did they, how did they define evidence? And will we actually see that in their readings? You know, uh, and, and I have some major questions about how that will play out. I, I wonder about what's missing. Because if this is what she says about herself, this is the best she has. This is the best she's able to use as her announcement. Mm. What What is missing? I mean, anything mm. have to do with serious scientific evaluation or, you know, if you're going to get evaluated, you want to go through the skeptic community because that's somebody who's going to give you the real, real ring of roll. And trust me, the psychic, the skeptic community really would love to find some sort of evidence. But the thing is, is we, we can't even get close. I mean, they say, oh, the skeptics just throw everything to the side and they, they won't. Well, yeah, because everything that they're giving us as evidence is crap. So yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's bad. Okay. So I want to say something about Tyler, Taylor, Taylor. We decided the name is Taylor. We were just listening. To I think it. I had it written down somewhere. Hang on a minute. Let's see if I can find Taylor. it. Tyler, 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 T-Y-L-E-R, okay, so, Tyler. Okay, so, so the things we got to remember also are not only leakage, which is very likely, but she said her son died when he was 20. And um, I think it's only been a few years. So what was one of the common names of that era? So how mm -hmm. likely would it have been for her to have a, have a good friend named Tyler? And when she's, ask tracy who is tyler she's not saying is tyler dead she's saying who is tyler it could have been anybody in his circle i mean it could have been it's just it's a common name of that era and so um so what, tracy like, made the connection right tracy and, made and, and there could have been a bunch of things she could have said you know i'm getting a uh, she could have gone through a whole bunch of names a whole bunch of different other things she could have said you know i I'm seeing some um, something to do with a motorcycle, a BMX bike, um, something to do with ice cream, something to do with a baseball game, something that had a baseball game. And also there's um, there's this person named William and a person named Tyler and blah, 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 blah. And then Tracy goes, Tyler, you had Tyler written down or, you know, she, mm. I think oh, she, that's she true. saw it to her. Right. So there could have been yeah. a lot of stuff that was that was came out of Kelly's mouth and Tracy hits on the one thing that she was really thinking about oh that's interesting yeah because I mean, that all we have is tracy's word for for her idea of evidence and her idea of evidence is extremely low compared mm -hmm. to what the community the sci science world would consider evidence yeah and, well and don't you the jury that's isn't not there some oh sorry no isn't fine. there something that says you know you remember the hits and you and you um, forgot the failures so mm -hmm. it's sort of like like you said there could be could have been a whole I hadn't thought of it that way but you know there could have been a whole string of um, things that Kelly was saying and then that one word is the one that um, Tracy remembers. That's what I was looking for I was looking for that um, what year let's let me think what would be a popular um, title we say it's Taylor T-A-Y-L I think it's T-Y-L-E-R I wrote yeah. it down as Tyler. Okay, I could so be wrong with that, about that, but I'm going I wrote to... it down as Tyler. Uh, and Tyler is a male or female name. Right? Mm -hmm. T-Y-L-E-R. I think so. That's that's what I have in my notes. I mean, I could be wrong, but. Okay. Well, she did just say it. So it's. T Y L E R. I'm just wondering. I'll look it up whenever whenever we're getting into this next part. That's going to be a little bit longer. Are we ready mm -hmm. to go to the next part, which is where sure. Kelly yep. starts talking about herself? And this is so interesting. Yes. She, her, she's been given the task. Remember, this is a summit. Her task is to talk about what happens in life after death. You know, what is what's the role of being dead? Yeah something like that i find this fascinating the story <laughs> the story she un unravels here. as if she knows yeah as if she knows yeah so and and i think i suspect that you could talk to 10 different mediums and i bet you they would have 10 different stories about what they expect happens in life after death but i thought this yeah this is really it's a nice idea i mean i, I i'd love I to believe this stuff 
Yeah, but I don't know how she can prove it. Oh, yeah, how would you prove it? <laughs> Ever. Okay, so we're going to see Kelly now. I have, after this, I've blurred everything else. So this will be the last time you're going to see Kelly clearly, people. Thank you very much. I'm honored. Well, hi, everybody. I'm so excited to uh, be here today and to um, share my, my little talk here about what happens after we die and then do a few readings afterwards for, I think, uh, 45 minutes or longer. It depends on how long my speech takes. But uh, I'm just going to kind of start with the speech now. I know a lot of people are muted and their camera's off, but I assume they're listening. So um, first of all, I know a lot of people think when death and dying, it kind of implies like it's the end of our life, but it's really not. It's just the beginning to me. Um, it's, you know, because we, we life goes on. It never ends. We're always learning, we're always growing. And what I've experienced, you know, one of the questions I get asked a lot too, and what I hear from spirit all the time, is that, you know, no one does die alone. There always are loved ones in the spirit world right there at their bedside. And the closer a dying person gets to death, the more they're able to see the loved ones for themselves. So I think that's a beautiful thing to know that there's people waiting there for us. And I just wanna give a little background here. Um, I've not had a near-death experience, but I do remember my past, most recent past life and how I died. And I also clearly remember being in the spirit world for close to 13 years. I watched my mother give birth to one of my siblings that she put up for adoption 13 years before I was born. And I also met all of my siblings, I believe, in the spirit world before they were born. So um, I do have a strong memory. It never left me. I came here remembering so much of the spirit world and felt so connected all my childhood and even as an adult. So a lot of this is not only from my readings and my clients, but it's also from my own memory. Okay. Um, so the other thing is, is while your loved ones are in transition, leaving the physical body behind the spirit, that which is the essence and the pure being of who they are is eternal. So after they leave the physical body, their journey continues. The journey is the evolution and the development of our souls. And death is just a transition, and it's another step on our spiritual journey. So death in this lifetime is not the end. It's simply a beginning of a new stage. And I like to think about it like that, because I know a lot of people are fearful of death. And so uh, while many people in transition are transitioning into the spirit immediately out, and at the same time that their physical body gives out, others will leave their bodies before their actual phys physical departure. So they won't feel the pain. I know a lot of people are worried. So for people who've had traumatic physical exits, prolonged processes of dying, or in cases of mental decline, such as Alzheimer's disease, their spirit actually leaves the body or comes in and out of the body prior to the decline. So sometimes, me as a medium, I can connect with somebody's mother who's still here, but she's in an Alzheimer's state and she's not coherent, but she comes through very coherent to me as like a spirit. And it can be confusing to people, so we can connect with them still, even when they're in that state of mind. Um, and then many spirits have come through in readings to report that they have not felt any pain or had any difficulty or suffering because they actually left their bodies just before the actual event or decline of their physical selves. In fact, many deceased loved ones who saw that you were suffering at the thought of their suffering have come back to say, hey, everything was all right. I actually left my body right before the things declined and I was right there with you by, by your side, okay? Um, also, during this time, the spirit often chooses to attend their own funeral. I hear that all the time. People tell me um, when I connect with them in spirit how they were shocked at the people that showed up or they had no idea that they had touched that many people in their lives. So, you know, that, that is something they do enjoy to come and, and see and visit and hear the stories that people tell about them. Um, and then I also know that when they get there, they're not alone. They have people to greet them and love them. And one thing I know is that as soon as you get there, depending on how your passing was, but there is a period of rest and kind of re a reunion with uh, the people that are on the other side already. So sometimes that rest can be a little bit longer depending on how traumatic their passing was. But then they kind of jump right into work and they start doing this life review. And for everybody, that life review could be different. It depends on how long we lived on this earth. It depends on what kind of life we lived, right? So in a life review, they're really going back and they're acknowledging and learning from all their mistakes. 
and seeing the things that they did from other perspectives. And it can be difficult sometimes. So I do feel like they're surrounded from what I've been heard and what I feel that they've been surrounded by a lot of love when they go through this. And I can say when my son passed, one of the things he did every night is he came to me and, and, and I think I left my body at night and went to the spirit world with him. We kind of met and it was a desert and we'd walk through this desert and on our left and on our right were different, almost like rooms you could walk into. And it was, I feel like this was his life review with me. And we went through and we looked at different scenes that we had gone through and we started from the current all the way back to the day he was born. And it was really, a uh, it lasted six months of my sleep and <laughs> it was healing and difficult and emotional but i feel like it was his healing as well as mine so i do think that the spirit continues to heal on the other side um and this is you know part of their growth right but uh it helped me a lot and i think my son allowed me to be part of that because i needed it so know that the life review is an important part of our, our journey and um, we do kind of go back and look over things and we're going to learn from them okay and then i feel like once they're complete with their life review spirit has a choice they can you know take on a job if they want um i was watching i was with my friend when she passed in a hospice and the nurse was coming that was working with her was very nice but every time she came in i saw two spirits with her that were nurses and I knew they were related to her. And I said, is your mom and grandmother a nurse too? And she said, yes. And they kept telling me that their job over there was to help her with people that were passing because they were also hospice nurses. So this is three generations of family being a hospice nurse. And they were helping their, you know, continuing to help the, the living family member who was still a hospice nurse do her job and help the people that were passing in the hospice transition to so it was kind of a beautiful thing so they had a job i've had people's children come and tell me that they were animal lovers and their job over there now was to help the animals pass so they take on lots of things they also you know a lot of times will look after family they will keep an eye on us they'll try to give us signs and clues you know people talk about our guides and our angels I know that our own family can very much be our guide sometimes, not always, but sometimes. So um, a lot of times our family on the other side, they they want to help us because they know what we're going through. They can they have a different perspective on things now. They see things differently. So uh, that's that's that stage. Um, and they do continue to learn. They're constantly learning through us, through other things. But that's part of their job over there. They want to learn. They want to grow. They want to evolve. And at a certain point, they will start planning their next life if they want to or if they choose to. But they're always going to be there waiting for us. Like if they lived here with us on this earth, they're not leaving until everybody they love is with them on the other side. And I do think that we have soul families and we make um, plans with each other for our next lives. Sometimes some people stay behind and decide to be a guide. Sometimes people evolve higher up into the next realm, which could be like the angelic realm and so on and just kind of eventually till they become one with the whole universe is my belief. So it's a beautiful thing. It's something that's never ending and we're all connected so closely. I'm always feeling that and hearing that from spirit. And uh, I just think it's nothing to be f afraid of or fearful or worried about our loved ones. Know that they're always in a beautiful place with somebody that loves them. And even if their life wasn't great, they're learning from those mistakes and they're being guided with lots of love to learn those, those um, lessons. That's my belief. Um, I hope that resonates. And I know that they said we had about 10 to 15 minutes. So I, that was about 10 minutes. So that was good. I was trying to stay there so I could work some more on readings, but does anybody have any questions about what I said or um, anything before I start readings? Well, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Can I put my hand on Kelly? Yeah. Me, me. Load of BS. My God. We're okay. okay. All right. Let me start with this. I did look up Tyler. And there's also, I want to remember, mind you, we're you and I keep forgetting. Was it Tyler or Taylor? And the person could have just and Kelly could have said to Tracy. I'm getting, I'm, it, who is Tyler Taylor? 
they could have done just just that and she would have seized on the name that she was looking for and that would have been the name so i looked it up now trust me psychics who are who are good cold readers and know they're cold readers you know they know they're doing this they know this website is called social security database mm. names. and they've been keeping track of children's names born over you know the united states obviously it's social security so you can go to to ssa.gov and mm. there's an area for baby names and i've used this many times in articles i've written and so knowing the demographics what are if a person is born in x decade what is the likelihood male or female that they're going to get named a certain name and this is just a common thing so right. i looked it up so if her son has been, okay, so if her son was born in 1980, which I really don't think so, uh, the name Tyler, T, where, what was the name I used? Let me make sure I got the spelling the way I had it. What was it? Tyler, T-Y, oh yeah, T-Y-L-E-R. That name was number 48. That's if he was born in 1980. Okay, so that's low. But if the child was born in 1990, which is, I think is more likely or that decade, 1999, yeah. then the name Tyler is number nine on the list Ew. of males. So that's pretty high. Yep. Born in 2000, then, or in 2000, 2009, then it'd be number 16. So for uh -huh. 20 years, the name Tyler was in the top 20. And for at least 10 of those years, it was in the top 10. So if, if I was a psychic that was trying to, or if I was in Kelly's shoes and I was trying to prove something to somebody's, you know, trying to guess a name, Tyler is right up there in that list of uh, interesting. That probably picked because that's, that's, that's pretty darn likely. If you were, a, if you were trying to pick a girl's name and you thought the person's child had died in 1990 and not only she doesn't have to come up with Tracy's son's name we all know that because it's common right. i'm not going to say it here but it's a common tracy talks about it but if i was trying to come up with somebody he might have known living or dead and if it was a girl i would have said emily madison emma olivia hannah abigail or isabella samantha or elizabeth and a guy would be jacob michael joshua matthew daniel christopher andrew ethan joseph and william that's if they were born in 2000 so those hmm. are all very common names that you would throw out. So, okay. So I just put that aside. Now let's go to what she just said. That was fascinating. But before you sneak in, I want to say this. First thing she says is, well, everybody's got their screens turned off and I hope you're all listening. And I thought, well, don't you know? <laughs> yeah. Can't you tell if there's people listening to you right now? <laughs> You should be getting some energy, wouldn't you, from are the people they, that are listening? Are they ironing? Are they walking their dog? Are they listening? <laughs> you should know. Okay, okay. So I wanted to say that before you snuck <laughs> and said something like that, because that was the first thing that struck me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Janice. Um, so I, I was interested in the words that she was using, and she said, I like to think about it this way. That's not the same as she knows that that's what's happening. I Did like to think knows? about it this way. Didn't she say she, she had evidence because what was what was her thing? She said she she was with her mother when her mother gave birth to a child that later was adopted. Is that right? Right. Why right. Not evidence of anything. Well, I mean, she she speaks more she uses terms like i know when she's talking about things that can't be proven like so she knows that she saw her mother um giving birth to a, a child that was before she was before kelly was even born right oh, before so kelly she was born yeah 13 years before kelly was born oh i missed that part yeah because oh she God. she had past lives oh right? dear so, so she's more likely to use terms of like i know such and such when she's talking about stuff that cannot be proven i know i know that people um let me see if i can find in my notes an exact example um well she she's like i know i know people don't die alone you know they've got somebody on the other side um 
yeah, she she says she uses that word. No, she knows there are people waiting for their loved ones on the other side. Right. But when she's talking about things that you can't really prove, you know, like things that would be. um, Like she says uh, that these people tell her like the spirits coming through, tell her that they didn't suffer that they weren't alone, that they um, they weren't in pain. She, you know, she she tends to say, "I I like to think about it that way." She's less likely to say, "I know that this ha- such and such happened." So her her language gets a little bit more sketchy. She says, "I believe a few times there." Yeah, which is the same thing as you I'd know like she doesn't know. That. Yeah, yeah. So she that's kind of one of she said you know, about her her knowing all of the people that had died. Didn't she say something about that when she's talking about her mom giving birth? She says, I know all the people and I've connected with everybody in my spirit life or something like that. And I thought, you've connected with them all, huh? Yeah. All I mean, you, you know, and uh, that's all stuff that you can't prove. That's the thing. You know, it's like there's no way, I don't know if if that's really what, if you, when you die, you, you figure out a purpose and you find, you get a job and which, which actually sorry, made me laugh. I'm not getting no job after I <laughs> no. die. And I'm not coming, but I'm, I'm not out coming back to my funeral either. I don't care what people say to, about me after I did that. Well, I'd, I'd be pinching them. I think, I think I'd be doing, I mean, so she says that there's a period of time you die. There's a period of time. There needs to be mm-hmm. somebody to guide you. So how is it they're they're coming to the funeral if they're not quite? How do they know how to do that? It's usually within a couple of days. So, yeah, no, I don't know. So There's a period die, of rest and reunion. Side, somebody explains the ropes. They should tell mm. you the rules. Mm. Uh, they show you around. What, you, what does that mean? The she says there's a period of rest and reunion, and then you um, decide you have a life review. So they're supposed to review their lives and and. You know, like like burn. or just the last one they just had i think the last one that they just had learn from them already mistake. reviewed the other ones before right and then they get to plan the next one but not until everybody's dead right uh, so everybody, everybody that you loved dead. and knew in in this world has to be dead before you can it doesn't make sense the timing doesn't make sense does it oh really so so you hang around for until the last child has died the last the youngest person you have known or the youngest person you've loved whatever that is so well, i mean you know eighty years 100 years you got to hang out there well it's eternity so if 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 they're reborn do they keep the memories of i don't think she said like if you're reborn shouldn't you have knowledge of your past lives no she well she remembered she remembered her past life she remembered seeing her one of her siblings being born 13 years before she 13 years before she was so she must she must be claiming that you remember at least bits and pieces that would be really noisy in your head wouldn't it i have hard if you remembered all all your past lives i mean you know like wow that's a lot to of information to sort out in your head yeah and and we have this is evidence right of right this is evidence okay in theory i guess you could say um my mom i didn't know my mom okay i had this regression that my mom had had a child before i was born 13 years and she had put it up for adoption if mom had never said anything and nobody had ever said anything to you and you said, mom, hey, 13 years before I was born, did you have a, give birth to a child and give it up to adoption? And the mom would be like, no way you should know that. Nobody has told you that. There's no way you could have known that. Okay, yeah. that might be evidence of something, but it is not solid evidence because there's too many choice chances of leakage. I yeah. mean, she could have read a letter. She could have seen a document that was in the house somewhere and she doesn't even rem- honestly doesn't even remember reading that letter or overhearing a snap of conversation because people had to have known she was pregnant and, and you know at some point somebody right. might have said something some 
document might have been she might have come across a birth certificate or adoption certificate mm -hmm. or or something or her mom might have said things like yeah i wish i had all my children together with me you know or, or yeah. something or i made yeah. regrets in my life that i've done or so even i mean it, it it may be you know a situation you don't know what the like some people talk about that and some people don't you know it may be that that was just common knowledge in her household it wasn't a big deal it's like you know i was young i had a child i decided to give it up for adoption you know sorry that happened or whatever you know like it could be that it wasn't made to be a big deal so it was just you froze if you remember it later then it's not gonna yeah you know like it's just gonna come out through the child could have come come forward or i mean gosh i yeah i mean there's lots of scenarios man. lots of reasons so in other words there is a chance that that could feel like it's evidence knowing this thing that is she thinks or other people could say that's unknowable if nobody told you it's like right yeah that's 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 pretty good but not great i wouldn't call that evidence i would mm -hmm. say that's suspicious be, but it's, there's still too many ways of knowing see especially if she, so bad aren't we can't i can't even imagine talking to us <laughs> no. we don't we're like we just no. we we just will not just believe it because somebody said it we have yeah. to just take it apart and oh my gosh what a pain we are yeah especially well you know like if she was sleeping and she came across that thought and thought that because that's how she that she oh, um we don't she describes her her experiences with her son and healing that healing process was when she was dreaming so if she came if she believes that's true if she came across this thought in her head that my mom had a child um and, and, and gave it up for adoption yeah. while she was sleeping it could feel to her it could feel real you know when she woke up she remembered it and it's like oh that feels that feels real we don't even know if it's validated we don't know if we don't even know if the mom is alive and that she she could verify that she really did put yeah, the child there may up for never adoption. have been a child place for adoption right and there's no way to i think that that's there and that it happened because she this dream or feeling or whatever she had absolutely yeah. we don't know I thought it was interesting. She talked about leaving her body and stuff. There's something called sleep paralysis that makes people feel like they leave their body. Um, and, and I wonder if like some of, I, you know, I don't know, but I wonder if some of what she was feeling while she was working out this grief. Um, a true, true grief. Boy, I, I can't even imagine losing a child. No, way. no, I can't either. You know, and, and that's, that's where this all comes from. I think it's partly, at least partly a coping strategy. Um, it's I think sure it's a lot easier thinking they're on the other side waiting for you to come over and right. it's a comforting. happy life than thinking they're dead and they're in yeah. the ground and no. She talks about traumatic experiences, like death experiences quite a bit. And I don't know whether she's talking about the person who died or the person left behind, but it seems like her motivation, um, which could on the surface feel like a good thing is that she wants to comfort people and say, you know, like, he didn't feel any pain he he's in peace he left his body before the pain started you know that and she says that to to during one of these examples and and i think you know like in her mind she thinks that that's comforting to the to the other person but she doesn't know that no and she doesn't never know the psychic say if he was he was in immense pain and it and his his passing was horrible he was you know and he's and he's still suffering on the other side and he's he's in hell or i mean why, why do we ever hear anything like that no it's always good pleasant everything it's okay he's fine with it it's over right right which is i think that's how people respond to it because the reader when you she primes people during this little talk that she gives to to say you know like your your person whoever it was and any uh, any of these 36 people that are in the zoom call you know your your loved one didn't suffer and and those people that have come to connect with their loved one that's exactly what they want to hear yeah and that primes them we, we talked a little bit earlier about you know what makes people believe in psychics even when their stories are really thin when you look at it 
you know, it's like that emotion behind that blocks out all of the all of the rational, you know, that these some of these people might have gone home afterwards and thought that didn't make any sense to me, especially the one, the murder one that will come up to, you know, like that one, that one blew me away. But um, <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. yeah, no, I know. Like, whoo, like total fail on that. And, and like some of these people are going to go away and start thinking, you know, their, their emotional will settle down a little bit and then their rational brain will kick in and they'll hopefully, think, hopefully, hopefully, like some of them I'm saying, you know, like, and, and, uh, or maybe they won't, I don't know, but, um, we don't know. We don't ever talk to him. Yeah. We don't know. We won't know. So she says she can see dead people. Like she was saying she was with a friend who was dying in hospice and the nurse walks in and she could see the nurse has two dead people one on each side of her and i'm thinking that's mm. not creepy at all i'd be like i'm sorry i'm i'm going home now i'm not going to deal with this person anymore oh you can see dead people around me i mean that's not intrusive at all no somebody talking about that i mean because that just no that's personal and i don't need to be talking about my family members and around mm. some stranger and it's not uncommon for one nurses, a, a family of nurses or a fire fired, a family of firefighters or military or police. It's, a, it's, it's common for people to share, you know, my mom was a nurse and I became a nurse. That's not mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. No, she became a fighter pilot. <laughs> Just like, you know. Well, and the, the hospice nurse might have said, you know, like, just just not really even thinking about it saying oh they're on the other side and they're they're probably you know like helping people out you know and suddenly not really even believing it but this person took it as some as proof that those family members were in heaven being nurses and and that may not be what like uh, last summer um one of my family members went we had hospice nurse, nurses and stuff and and they they said some things that were sort of like nobody really knew you know but it was comforting at the time and you know like you just you know what it, it was just chit chat it wasn't meant to be proof of anything but it seems like kelly may have had a conversation that. with this hospice nurse about the, her mother and grandmother were also nurses and then Kelly put meaning on that to even me. If, those... if the story is even true. Right. Right. We don't know. Right. We weren't there. Right. Right. That's not proof either. No. Yeah. And we're just, we're just blatantly trusting people. And that's part of the problem with this world of the paranormal is they are more likely to believe something from a human being based on trust and not to look at it rationally and say, okay, really? Is this yeah. rational? Does this make sense? No. But she told me and she wouldn't lie. And she was just, I believe her. She's just a trust, you know, you're trusting. And I, I overly trusting and kind of a yeah. problem. Especially when you're in that situation with hospice, you know, there's so many things going on and things Your emotions change are so like- quickly. Your emotion is a, it's a roller coaster. It's really confusing. It's really hard to navigate and stay anywhere near sane you know you're just sort of like and you're just you might just latch on to something that someone says you're not sleeping well you're not eating well you're not you're overthinking the people around you aren't sleeping well and yeah it's not a good time for making good decisions oh and if you're dealing with family there's all kinds of stuff going on yeah yeah. and and you just get thrown for a loop so you might believe something in that situation that you wouldn't believe in and you know later on when things are calmer you know so like you don't know what's going you know but none of that is proof well you know that's what it comes down to absolutely i'm thinking from a testing uh perspective if you can test i mean if you she's obviously wants to be a tested she obviously likes the idea of being tested that she wants to be able to say stuff about being tested if you can see dead people around people that should be testable and it's not like uh, i mean something could be done if she had said look i really believe i see dead people i want to go and have i want to be tested there are ways of designing protocols that will get it down to testable conditions and i'm not going to go into that here but there are ways of doing that and there's like uh organizations that will if you have proof of the paranormal the center for inquiries independent 
they're not an independent anymore. Center for Inquiries uh, investigative group has a half a million dollars for anybody who can prove claim that there is evidence of the paranormal. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm sure she'd like to have five hundred thousand dollars, half a million dollars. Be great. And if you could pass that, not only would you would you win that money, but there's all sorts of other challenges out there, as well as like the Nobel Prize. Um, yeah, you know, being the most famous and the most powerful person in the world. If you could see dead people, that would be used in weapon uh, in military. Um, I, I okay, I just can't even get past that. Sometimes it's, I think about it like, okay, if you could see dead people, wouldn't Zelensky be able to use those all those Russian generals that just accidentally fell out of buildings? Like you know, they you know they're they're the generals who had Putin had had assassinated, wouldn't you want to interview them? Wouldn't that be like, okay, so what did you know? What are the capabilities? Where are the fortifications? What is, what is the, um, what is Putin's, you know, I would think that would be interesting to know. And yep. throughout time yep. to be able to know all these things like, okay, so let's interview all these other, I mean, it would be, it would be it's really useful information. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And especially since you know that Putin and his and his people are the ones that had you knocked off, you don't have your loyalties to him anymore. So you would you would you would think that they would want to communicate with them and say, oh well, you know, he had me assassinated. So here, let me give you the let me give you the codes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You would think, wouldn't yeah. that be like knowledgeable not talking about somebody's like garden or what color hat they wore or if they had a friend named tyler i mean that's not I think important it would, information i think it would be really hard to even just go to the grocery store if you saw dead people around everybody that would be just like overwhelming I, can you imagine yes i've thought about that before what would it be like if you it, it, they some of them will say oh i can cope because i can turn it on and off mm. i think i would be literally insane a blubbering gibberish not able to randomly hold a thought because you'd be like distracted constantly and you couldn't sleep it would be um, worse than the sixth sense i mean it would be worse than that you would just i think i would have to move to a cabin totally isolated and not have human interaction hopefully the animals don't have souls and and i was just going to say that because she also talks to the animals (laughs) so i mean we have chipmunks and links and i mean we have a somebody said there was a cat like a big cat they didn't know what it was out in our backyard the other day deer go by the you know like if their uh, thoughts are randomly coming in or you look out the window and you see like generations of deer around the deer (laughs) i see all the deer deers and how could you even function you'd just be in bed all the time you know in a dark room i was like i don't know that's why i say i'd be in a cabin somewhere but then i guess you can't be in a cabin if the animal's thoughts come through and i mean the idea of being able to shut it on and off what what what, what is that i mean why would you have that ability what what would that doesn't even make sense if you could see dead people then you would see dead people you would see them they'd be there yeah I mean, is there special training to learn how to shut it off? Oh, maybe, maybe. Maybe we should look up that website again. <laughs> I know. What's the website? You get the, Bob's. You get the when is it, Bob's? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Bob. Bob Olson's best psychic directory. They oh, would. Know. I've looked at those. Those two. There's. There's the Dave's. I think right. Shay Parker's best. Shea Parker's. American. There's. I think they have you fill out applications. You pay a fee. And I think you get to sit down with a medium and who has you do a thing with them and they tell yeah. you if you're any good. Yeah. A medium like Kelly, really? She would be my she would be judging me. Yeah, she's one of the members. And it's, and it's on her website sit down with a with a sitter. And if you tell the sitter who's obviously there to be, they're motivated. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to be one of the sitters that gets readings to judge if they're actually and once you have a personal relationship and you're ch- chatting with a person, especially in person or over Zoom, and you're seeing them, you're not going to say, yeah, that was all crap. She didn't get anything. No, of course they're going to say, yeah, she got some things. She was pretty good. Of course you're going to say that. We're humans. We're we're social creatures. Especially. <laughs> yeah. We're women. Most of these are going to be women are going to say, yeah, I think she did get some things. So pass. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say she didn't know nothing. That was yeah. awful. 
Boy, that was cold reading. I mean, they're not going to say that. Of course uh, not. They're not going to. Everybody applies and pays the fee gets on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless it's they're, they registered under the name Susan Gerbeck. I have a feeling they might look that up and go. <laughs> I don't know if this person's going to go there, but you know, he's not really doing seances for people, but they do feel real and they're like a reflection of what the Victorian seances would be. But they do, an, they do this thing where you, you, um, Either they'll have a prayer or they'll sing a song, um, a spiritual song. Um, they they chant or, you know, there's something usually done beforehand to probably, they say, to, to cleanse you or to get you prepared. And you're supposed to be thinking about the person, all that other stuff. But it's really just kind of just to prime you. You're going to be seeing spirits. You're going to be hearing people's voices. You're going to feel a touch. I'm talking about the seance again, but... So mm. that's normal. I think Thomas John does his to add that in, of course, but he also kills time because, you know, you got two hours. Interesting. Call, 10 minutes of it is just like mumbo jumbo kind of stuff to kill time because you, it is, it's, it's easy to kill time with it. Also, I think a lot of psychic mediums will throw in their religious angle by adding a prayer or whatever, because then it's, if you come after them for something, you can say, oh, well, you're just attacking my religion. Or, you know, of course I need tax exempt uh, status. Huh. Sylvia Brown, she started a church. So all of her, everything was donations to her church. It's tax exempt. Uh, so they, wow. they hide behind the religious angle a lot. Wow. So, and then the believers, the people in their audience are all um, religious, right? You don't have necessarily atheists out there. <laughs> Hey, oh yeah i'm an atheist i'm good to go to your reading uh, oh, i think it, there are there are atheists who do have readings and say that they believe in life after death which is weird weird interesting <laughs> yeah that's the whole topic another we day. could do yeah, another whole video on that oh and we can so this woman right here <laughs> is about to give her instructions and listen for the priming and then we can talk about it right after that right before we get to the readings and the readings are going to be blurred and I did it because it's just so much easier, you guys, um, so that we are not watching the people on the screen or, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And we can see their names because their names are clearly on the screen. And it a lot of them, it's a lot of grief going on. I don't think it's, it's just really uncomfortable to watch with them crying and they're upset or they're whatever. I, I It's too much emotion. I think it's we're supposed to be concentrating on right now on, on the sitter. OK, so let's go mm -hmm. back to her. Okay, here she goes. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat. Um, so I am going to just kind of jump into readings here. I do have um, a few rules. So I'm going to bring through the information. And then when I, um, and I don't want you to say anything until I say, does anybody understand this? And when I ask you if you understand the information, at that point, if you understand 90% of, of it, just put in the comments that you understand and, and, and I will uh, work, see what I can, if I can work with you, okay? Does that make sense? Or you could raise your hand. Are they using the reactions down here? I think, yeah, there's a hand. You could raise your hand and that kind of brings you up to the top so I know you understand things. There's a, down below at the bottom, it says reactions. And if you click that, there's a thing that says raise your hand. Yeah, and then just raise that if you understand what I'm saying, or you can put in the comments if you're not good with that or if you're on a phone, because I know it's harder to find the raise hand on a phone. Oh, um, yes, you will be with your loved ones. I'm not sure who iPhone user is, but definitely it is great. And oh, thank you, T Tony. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of see who's here. I do feel a lot of love. I know a lot of people have um, people in spirit here. Um, Oh, hi, Kelly. <laughs> iPhone is Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> Let's stop and go to that. Okay, she's given her instructions. Janice? Oh, I'm just wondering if the person that asked the question about will I be with my loved ones, if that was like uh, prompted or um, anyway, I thought that was one of the biggest parts about, you know, like. The priming is like, oh yes, you will be with your loved ones, you know. So, loved ones. Mm -hmm. and and the women, I think it's all women. Might be two men. I can't remember. Yeah, that I watch they a lot read, of these videos. And they yeah, they read. Them. They read. She reads uh, a gentleman towards the end. 
or two gentlemen two. towards the ones with his significant other and then mm -hmm. another is just by himself mm -hmm. that's right and so i think that um a lot of these people that come up you don't know it because you haven't watched all the other videos they've been here the whole day so as i said they could easily have been they have been read by other people earlier um so it's not that hard to pick up some of the information plus we also know that she's associated with thomas john and who hot reads and all these people are in this little bubble of world they have multiple readings with each other and and it's like a, a kind of a peer a friend group with the psychics and the me and the people who are constantly coming in oh and i should show i should also explain the word we use is sitter the person who's being read is called a okay. sitter Okay. So if we use that word, that's what it means. It doesn't mean there's, they could be sitting. I assume some are, but, but they're called a sitter. And so um, Kelly's about to do her readings. Now she has her way of, of doing her thing. I noticed, and I, I want you guys to notice this phrase that she uses a lot. I'll prime you for this phrase is that she uses the phrase, um, they love you more than what is it they love you more than anything there everybody loves the person at the very end when she's getting ready to end the reading she's doing with the sitter mm -hmm. she does this thing about and they love you more than whatever it's mm -hmm. kind of, i'll remember it again when i hear it again but i heard her doing it last night when i was going through this video over and over and over i thought they're all saying that they're all saying it all of them like did yeah all of them say that to their their loved ones every one of them I want to I want to point out too that her her behavior in between the transitions in between the readings she starts going like this and she for some reason she has to look down um and and uh just kind of check something and we'll we'll find out she, there's there's actually a point about halfway in uh, 30 minutes in where she she actually flips a notebook so um there may be a reason why she starts doing this. It's called distraction. So you don't really <laughs> notice that she's checking her notes. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. There, we don't know what's around her. I have multiple screens. And I have my phone. So I have four screens here. Some message coming into me, you would never know. Well, she picks up she picks up a paper, piece of paper and flips it over and says, um, oh, I like to, I like to um I forget how she phrases it, jot or doodle or something when, when I'm doing these readings. But if you watch her, she isn't doodling through any of the readings. She only uses that excuse when she flips the page. It's about, it, you know, it's, I think it's in the second, maybe our third reading that, that we'll look at, but just watch for that. Let's go check her out. Um, so as I connect, I do want to, um, I do want to bring through, I feel like I've got a, a young man coming through. Um, I feel like this could be, um, somebody's son, but he also feels like if he's your son, he's not just your son, he's your buddy. Um, I know that he, uh, I do feel like he would have been in his twenties. I do feel that he was a, a very, um, how do I put this? He was kind of shy sometimes or introverted. He didn't always like big crowds. He liked to kind of, you know, hang out with a small group of people and he loved his family, but I feel like he was also very independent. Can anybody understand a young man like this? Um, well, actually, before I say that, I do feel his passing was traumatic. I do feel that there, I don't think it was suicide, but I do feel he had some part in his passing. I know it was traumatic and, and it was upsetting and it was unexpected. Can anybody understand this for a son or, okay, Shannon understands this and um, Sherry understands this. So let no. me just. No, 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 no. Oh, no? Sorry. Oh, just unraise no. your hand there. Okay. Oh. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I was just moving my phone actually, so. I okay, can, I'll, I'll unraise her hand. But Beth understands it. Uh, okay, so three people, four people understand it, three, three or four. Um, and okay, I'm gonna keep going. 
Uh, I feel like with this this young man, he's not your only child. I feel like he has siblings. So if you can understand that, keep your hand raised. Um, if you don't understand that, um, take your hand down and let me know in the comments if you're typing in the comments. Okay, so um, so Joy can still take this and Shannon can take this. So Shannon and Joy, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, Shannon, if you could unmute yourself. Just so I could ask you, hi, Shannon. Hi. So, what you understand everything I've brought through so far? I do. Okay, and you understand other children, like he's he's got other siblings, because I feel like it's maybe three or four kids you would have. Is that correct? Three. Mm -hmm. Three. Thank you. And Joy, do you understand all of this? <laughs> how do you unmute? I don't know how to unmute you guys. I'm sorry. I can prompt them to unmute it, but oh, they have okay. to do it themselves. Okay, so she's prompting you, Joy. <laughs> Thank you, Terry, Tracy. Hi, Joy. So, oh, hi. Do you understand everything to... too? Um, he just has one brother, not three. Okay, not so three. I think I'm with Shannon. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. I'm gonna work with you, Shannon. Okay. And so. Would you also understand the shyness and kind of introverted at times or having a small group of friends that he really trust? Yes. And would you, would you understand with him? He is very, there was an independence to him. He did like to kind of keep things to himself. And, but at the same time, I yes. do feel that he had a little anxiety. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay. The reason why I want to make sure everyone understands these are blurred, so it's going to be pixelated throughout the whole rest of this video. So if that freaks you out, just listen. Um, play solitaire or something on the other screen while you're listening. Because I thought it was easier to do that than constantly be back and forth, back and forth between blurring people out and not blurring people out and so on. I think it's really interesting, and I want to make sure everybody notices this. And it'll be true throughout the whole rest of the video. She's throwing out something general, and it is so general that multiple people feel that that's connected to somebody in their life, mm -hmm. and that she has to keep going into more and more detail to get to a point where they're finally um, able to say, okay, that's probably not you. And so, and then Kelly will say, I feel like I must be with you or whatever. From an earlier video that you, Janice, have not seen. Um, the first media on said there was 34 people on. Now, this is later in the day, so it might not be 34 people. It might be more or it might be people have fallen off. But you've got a pool of under 50 people, maybe 30 people. And if what you're throwing out there is, I counted, she said there's four people after she threw that one woman off who's, who was driving the car who, who hit it with her finger. Um, um, like, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't call me. <laughs> She's got four people who say that that related to them. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's how general it is, you know. And just mm -hmm. say, any, anything you want to say before I start this back up? No, well, I just noticed how she she knocked them off. You know, like knocked off the candidates by by making it more and more specific in terms of how many children or how many siblings they were, and she. She put a pretty high one. She said three siblings and that, you know, like most people aren't going to have like, I, I would, I don't know. I wouldn't think people would have three or four siblings. Um, and, and then, you know, like the other, the one that, the one that got rejected only had one other sibling or something. So that's how that in that situation, that's how she eliminated candidates. I'm just wondering, like, mm -hmm. if they're coming through, like, how come she didn't know which one she was supposed to be talking to? I'm just just curious. Well, I have an answer for that. But <laughs> if she was doing a one on one with somebody, OK, let's say she's she's she doesn't have information ahead of time and she's doing it reading with the person. Um, and she throws that information like I see three people and then the person says, oh no, there's only one sibling. Then they, there's always an out, mm -hmm. there's always an out. She would just say, oh, but there must have been some close, very, very close friends like a sibling. Or do okay. they have cousins that were very close to? There's always something she can say to make it fit. 
Okay. There's she's like, there's examples of that later. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. And that because there's sense. a group of people that she's got to pull on and they're already starting to compete for each other. She mm. knows that's how she's going to weed it down. Now, okay. Thomas John, who I've watched, oh gosh, hundreds of hours of his readings, I guess. I don't even know how to, how many it was. He knows he's hot reading. So before he starts, he knows who his target is. Uh, I see. He has them on the screen and he does this thing. He he has a couple different methods, but one of his popular things is he does is exactly what she's doing. And if she's learned from Thomas John and if she's hot reading, then, and she, she knows she's doing this. She has the person in mind on her screen. Remember, she's looking at a screen with multiple people on it and she can read the, the chat. That person is her target. So um. she whittled it down knowing fully well where she's going. She's already got a list of, okay, they have these, this, 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 this. And she wants to, to uh, Thomas John would make it want to appear that he is trying to, he's, 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 it's, it's an act, it's a show. So he's like, okay, who else does that apply to? I want everybody to feel mm -hmm. like they're in on this. And then as, as the person, um, uh, all these other people pull up on the screen, he would say, oh, but did they also work at a library? Okay. Oh, they didn't. Okay. And Cherie, that replies to you because he knows damn well that Cherie's mother worked at a library. So it's, it's, it's steering it. It's like, how do I say it? When you really, 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 really want to do something <laughs> and you're making excuses and you're like, I really want, I really want this car. I really, I can't decide what kind of car I want. Can you guys give me some ideas of cars that I, I should buy? Knowing damn well, you already have it in mind, which one you want people to kind of go to. You're like, uh, yeah, does it have, uh, does it have this thing? And you're like, no, gotcha. the car I'm recommending doesn't have that. I'm like, oh, I really wanted that attribute for my car. I guess my default is I have to go to the one that I really wanted anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. Is that why she says you only have to have 90% when she's throwing out, like, you only you only have to be sure about 90% of the time of what I'm saying? No, and I so, think that, that no? I mean, so, so I think this is a combination of hot and cold reading. So I think she's already knows who she's going to go to. Yeah. So she's just kind of like, hey, everybody, I want you to all feel like you're a part of this, but actually i'm just gonna read this one person over here because i've already done some research on them okay so i'm not saying for sure she's hot reading but i think it's very likely she's hot reading and if she's learned from thomas john that's his method i, I think she got that. i think she has notes but that's yeah, just I think she has notes and it's obvious they know each other and you'll know that as we get farther in okay all right let's go back to the let's okay. go back back Society. Do you understand Very much this? so. Yes. Um, and I do feel he could talk to you. Yes. You understand this. Okay. I do. I also feel with him, it wasn't easy to talk to other people in the family. He felt like not everybody understood him. Do you understand that? Correct. That's correct. I do. Okay. And so this is, I think, um, his thinking feels a little off. Do you understand that? I do. Okay, so he's just like, I'm so sorry, mom. I'm sorry, because it's almost like he's saying you were trying to help him, but he wouldn't listen. Do you understand that? Very much. And he's like, I'm really sorry, but he loved you more than anything. And I feel like you taught him so much and he thanks you for that because you just taught him so much about this world and about how to get through everything. And he's like, I couldn't have made it through this world if you weren't my mother. So he wants to thank you for that. I also feel that he very much is connected to you still and that you feel him so much. Do you understand this? I do. Okay. And I I also want, it's almost like he wants um, somebody in the family, I feel like is angry with him for his passing. Do you understand yep. this? I and do. He's like, he's like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Okay. okay. He wants them to know that. Um, and he loved everybody so much. And he realizes now, he keeps saying, that they were, he did, his family did love him. But I think he felt sometimes like they didn't understand him. But he gets that they did, that it was just he was pushing them away. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I did that. Because he loved his siblings. And he loved his, Yeah. I feel like he just loved everybody. And would he you did. understand your mother or is it your grandmother is in spirit? Or is it my both? grandmother? 
grandmother. My grandmother. You were very close with grandmother, yes. Yep. Yeah, he's with your grandmother, the, okay. and she's a, she's funny and like she's got a good <laughs> sense of humor. Yes. Yeah. Because she's making him laugh and she's making me laugh. So she's like, don't worry, I'm taking care of him. All right. So definitely he's not alone. He loves you so much. He holds your hand all the time. So I don't know if you get tingly hands wow. sometimes or if they get warm. Because he's like, yep. I grab my mother's hands all the time. Okay. So know that he mm -hmm. wants to let you know he's always with you. And I do feel like he hugs you from the behind around your shoulders. So okay. pay attention yep. to that. Just sending you so much love, so much love. And... Um, are you helping other grieving families? Because he's talking about you should be helping other grieving families. Okay. Because okay. you're very it's... easy to talk to and you're a good listener and you have a good attitude, he says, which not a lot of people do. <laughs> That's so, interesting that they, I've been, I've been looking at what, how I can um, honor his life. Well, he loves when you share his story. Because okay. you're always helping other people when you share his story. Because I feel that there's a lesson in it. And he's saying, and that lesson maybe was part of the journey so that you could help others. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave you with that, Shannon. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So um, I don't know how to mute you. So if you want to Okay, so that reading's done. I think there's mm -hmm. going to be like eight or nine of these, something like that. I can't quite remember. Um, why, why go to this trouble of saying, I'm getting a young son, a man in spirit who's died in his twenties. Um, I, he was very shy. Why do that when you could just say, all right, so next up is Robert Fitzsimmons who lived at one five, six, nine, um, Peoria street in Peoria, Illinois who died because he, I mean, does the persons on the other side, don't you think they still remember that? Don't they have any kind of, they've forgotten their name, they've forgotten their mom's name, they've forgotten the cat's name, they've forgotten where they lived? What, well, what they remember that? past lives, right? So why wouldn't they remember what their name was? And last name, mom, sometimes they'll give yeah. their first name, but yeah, why, why wouldn't they just do that? Why wouldn't they just say, say that it, why are we having to play this game of who does this person belong to who 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 connects with that who can mm -hmm. who can who can, nobody ever says an answer to that answer that that question it's a very i think it's a valid question why is it that they don't do that the answer i get is it doesn't work that way Susan. right yeah it doesn't make but sense that doesn't make sense no I had a question about the language she uses too, because she supposedly these are messages from beyond, right? The dead loved one, right? Supposedly. So why does she say, I feel like you taught him so much. And then he thanks you for that. Why isn't, why didn't she just say directly, you know, mom, you taught me a lot and about oh, whatever it was. Channeling him. Right, like, 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 like they did in the old days in the Victorian seance where right, I, uh, right. I, uh, no, but even, talk. even, even just saying it in a regular voice, like, why doesn't, why does she have to say, I feel like you taught him a lot, and then the mom goes, Yeah, and then, then she says, and he thanks you for that because that, you know, that was that nod was a confirmation, or then she says, Is it your grandmother or his? Is it your mother or his grandmother? Like it could be. Oh, I missed that. I wrote yeah. down your mother or grandmother. Yeah, I think she said, "Is it your mother or his grandmother?" Because oh, his grandmother could really be mom or dad. That, if it's there. Um. Is anyway, the maybe I missed. Huh? His grandmother and her mother. Not necessarily. If it's oh. if it's the father's mother, it would That's still be his why. grandmother. Well, so I, I think it. she made, I thought she said I, your mother or grandmother. I think she made a distinction because I went back. I have got it underlined. Is it your mother? I could be wrong, but what I heard was, is it your mother or his grandmother? There's, there's a difference because I'll have to replay that, you guys. So yeah, on. like check. Just I could be wrong. It. Leave it in the comments. Um, but I, he's looking at her now when he 
Kelly is looking at this woman on the screen. She's not blurred to Kelly. I blurred the video for privacy right. reasons. Right. But right. She's looking at her. She has an idea of how old that woman is. She's looking at. She can also see things in the background. She can. She can. She can make up observations about a person. And one of the first that tells is that she's female and she's a certain age. So if you're in your 60s, which I am, not too far into the 60s, but I'm 60. We're the same age. <laughs> so you can make a guess that a woman in her 60s might not have her parents still alive. Mm -hmm. Or it might be close. Mm-hmm. Because they're in their 80s, at least, probably by then. And mm -hmm. uh, if you're one of the later children, which I am, my mom was almost 40 when she had me. My mom what? died in 2008. So, so, a, so when you have a woman on screen who's about our age, throwing out, is your mom dead, is not as likely as if we were in our 80s. If we were 70 or 80 years old on the screen, we appeared to be that age. And then the, it's very likely our parent has died. Mm -hmm. very likely mm -hmm. so a lot of times they'll qualify it by saying is this your mom or your or or you know maybe another older figure in other words a grandmother or a grandparent mm -hmm. because they can't quite tell at 60 but if the person on the screen is 30 40 years old their parents are still alive and their grandparents are probably still alive mm -hmm. so they kind of are vague and you can see how they'll word it because they have to just decide is their parents not alive their parents not i know her grandparents aren't alive that's that's a obvious yeah that makes sense i noticed that she she um is much more assertive about her evidence or facts after she's checked in with the sitter mm -hmm. you know she asks a question first gets a confirmation or a denial and then she says the next thing and remember, we can't see the chat, so we don't know what else might be in that chat if she's saying something to somebody else, um, if they're talking about it. This. So what does she say? Okay, first off, totally missed everything that would be relevant, that would be evidence, like what the child's name is, when did he die, what did he die of, um, anybody's name, why doesn't she name the mother or grandmother in spirit instead of asking? Just say, so Aunt Eloise is there. Mm -hmm. Not your grandmother or grandma, grandma Georgina Whoever. is there. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. None of that is said. Mm -hmm. um, so, part of the reason I think that they don't give that kind of information, like this is Peter Popoff. Remember when when um, uh, James Randi, uh, the faith healer Peter Popoff, was going around these giant rooms. You guys can find this. Uh, it was exposed on the Johnny Carson's show, and and he had an earpiece. So what people would do is they'd come into the faith healing event and they'd write down on a piece of paper ahead of time who they wanted to see, what kind of medications they were taking, what their ailments were, what their address was, and so on. They'd put it in a box. And then Peter Popoff's wife would take the piece of paper and through a, a transceiver to uh, Peter Popoff would say, I'm getting... Okay, so your next up is Eloise Richardson, and she lives at 15569 such and such drive, and here's her zip code, and she has arthritis or whatever. She'd read it, and he would go, God is telling me about, oh, you know, he would, he would just read off what she just told him. She he was getting addresses, and nobody, sus they just didn't suspect. The people in the yeah. office were like, that's not odd. Yeah, God knows my address. He knows my who knows my doctor's name. I mean, God it's knows the same my thing address. I wrote on the paper just before I got here. Wow, that's interesting. God was able to pick that up. Uh, on. But so, I think mediums don't do that because I think it's too specific. Thomas yeah. John will do it, but not yeah. not to the extent of giving people their addresses or anything like that. Yeah. But I think it's just too specific, and people aren't used to that. And if somebody was to start saying, "I'm getting your." specific details of like where they lived or whatever i think they would be suspicious uh, it'd be way suspicious because no other mediums are yeah. really doing it that way anymore yeah i think that's what it is it would be too obvious like i got looked up somebody looked that up yeah it's too specific it can't be privacy reasons because you could say stuff um you could give an address of where they were raised it doesn't mean they're still there yeah these are yeah. addresses that could have been old 
And, or she could say, I think I want to, I don't want to say this out loud because I think it's a little too private, but I'm going to text it to you right now. <laughs> Right. Like a private chat or something. Why would right. I wanted to uh, mention that how much at the end when she's narrowing down an end, she flatters them. Overwhelming flatter. Oh, interesting. And you'll hear it throughout the whole time. This one was, I ah. think you're a good listener and uh, you should be doing this with your life and you should be helping other people because you're so you're, you're such a good listener and people you're will like right. to tell you things and you're just amazing. What an amazing mom you are. Your son is telling me that you should be doing this and that and the other. So why doesn't she just cut out the mediumship act and just tell them that when she's listening to them, tell their story about caring for their sick child, you know, like, I mean, wow, that must, well, just, just say, wow, that must've been really hard and you did a really good job caring for your child while he was sick <laughs> you know why do you need why do you need the mediumship in between that saying that message you know you could you could say it without without pretending that you're channeling their dead child i guess because this is what people are used to and if they were to kind of cut that out it would be s nobody wants to branch out into something too weird i guess or maybe i'm sure there's people on the internet i'm not aware of that have have gone out on a limb and done some of the address stuff. I don't know. It just seems like, I don't know. You'll hear more of this flattery stuff. She tends to end her things with flattery. And most people yes. do something they have. You can feel like, you know, Kelly's probably done a hundred, a thousand or thousands of readings over the time. So she's got her, her deal. She's like, okay, yeah. it's winding down now. He's done talking to you. Bullshit. I want to hear more. Yeah. If, if, well, and she she um she gives them a lesson like she, she her I think her whole her whole like the description that she provided about heaven or whatever she calls it the space after you die is that you you learn from your mistakes or you you deal with your issues or whatever and then you make meaning out of that and and I think she that's part of her what she tells the sitters as well is like you you need to make meaning out of you know you need to honor your child or your mother or whoever it is by doing something positive in the world and I guess that's a, a good message but it is part of her um like her flattery of her sitters well she said and she also said uh, why why isn't there specific information that's the other thing that doesn't come through is not only about like their name and address or something so we know who they're communicating with so there isn't this guessing game for the first two minutes of every every reading yeah why, why during the reading why doesn't the sun come through and give evidence of something or i think when she started she says this child had a hand in his death but it wasn't on purpose it wasn't like a suicide but it yeah. was probably like an accidental overdose of or or a car accident that he yeah i couldn't something. figure that out yeah that was he yeah he wasn't sleep you know he sleep deprived and he hit or he alcohol related or something he died but it wasn't he had a hand in it and people are pissed off at you over it but you know if if Kelly knows this woman, and I've forgotten her name already because we blurted out, but if she had um, known this person, she could have known that history too. So she would have known how the husband, the child, remember I said she could focus on this one person. She knows who she's going to go to. Mm -hmm. She could have alluded to it like this child died because he was drinking and driving and she just didn't want to say that out loud. But why doesn't the child she's channeling to say that stuff because surely he doesn't care anymore why doesn't he say tell my mom that i didn't think i thought i was okay to drive mm -hmm. i thought that that i hadn't had as much as i have thought mm -hmm. now i know differently and i mm -hmm. think you should be um um uh going to call uh, high schools and and giving talks on uh you know to what was it called mad mothers against drug mm -hmm. driving Mm -hmm. I think you should be involved in that because my example of thinking I was sober enough to drive, but not being enough to drive or, you know, mom, I was actually okay to drive. I know I'd been drinking, but I hit the telephone pole because 
something had fallen on the, my phone had fallen on the ground. And I reached over to grab my phone that had, was on the bottom of the seat. And that's why I hit the telephone pole. I was totally fine with driving. I mean, mm-hmm. why doesn't he explain that to, to the mom since he's got a contact with her right now? Why, why do we have to allude to it? Mm-hmm. Because I think he would want to explain. I would think I would want to explain. I was actually okay. I could drive. I was fine. But actually, I got distracted by something that happened over here. And that's why I hit the telephone pole. I would think that's what they would do, but I don't know. Cause yeah. Cause it stays specific. And it also, it also turns away from the loved one and towards the, the towards the sitter, making the sitter feel better. Like you treated him really well. You were patient. You, you know, like all of a sudden it turns and it's about the sitter and it's not about the person coming through. You would think that, that you would want to give all the energy to the person coming through and and not so much with the sitter right in front of you. Cause that's what they're there for, right? They're there to, to talk to their loved ones. So why isn't there more of a conversation with the, with the loved one? Yeah. And there's very little conversation with the loved one in, except for praising them and telling the other family members to get over it. Right. Right. I don't know. Okay, let's go to the next one. You guys all ready? I hope you're all sitting down. We're ready for for the next one. Let's see who's next. Okay, here's the next one. Now, as I um, move off of that, I do feel I've got a father that's coming through. And with this father, I want to, I want to give him a name like a B, a B name like Byron or or um, Brian, or it's a B name, that's all I know. It starts with the letter B. It's like a very strong B sound. And I also feel like this father was a bit of a character. You never knew what was gonna come out of his mouth. He was funny, um, but he was very straightforward. He did not beat around the bush. And I feel like sometimes um, he said things that maybe he shouldn't have said because he didn't think before he talked, but he meant well and he was, he had a huge heart and he loved everybody. So he, he really meant well. Sometimes he put his foot in his mouth, but he meant well. Can anybody understand a father like this? And I do feel like he wasn't the perfect father. He acknowledges that. Um, but he loved you more than anything. Can anybody understand this? If so, uh, raise your hand. Um, so I think Shannon and Sherry's hands are raised from before. So I don't know if you could put those down, Tracy, or not. Um, oh, great. Thank you. And um, so if anybody else understands a father in spirit with a B name, and maybe the B name's not his, it could be connected to somebody in the family if it's not his name. And I also oh. feel like um, maybe, okay. Oh, Beth, yeah, B name. <laughs> I also feel like he was um, a character for sure. So Tony, you can understand Beth said maybe let me um, work with you, Tony, um, if you can unmute. Thank you. Hi. Hi. And you understand the father and, and this character that he is? Yes. I, I don't get the B name. but Okay, um, that's everything. fine. That's okay. fine. You know what? Names sometimes they aren't perfect for me, so that yeah. I'm okay with that. Um, and Joy, you can understand that and you get the B name. So I'm going to come to you next, Joy. I just want to see what I, Tony can understand first. So you don't understand the beanie, but you understand this father is a character. You never know what's going to come out of his mouth. He's funny. He means well. And also, it wasn't always easy growing up with him. Yeah. You understand this? Okay. Yes. And then um, let me just ask Joy, can you also unmute yourself, Joy? And I want to see what you understand. Maybe this is a piggyback. And obviously, your people are trying to come through, Joy. Um, <laughs> so um, where are you? At? Oh, there you are. Hi. And you understand everything, even the B name? Yeah. And what's the B name? His name is Bob. Okay, I can take Bob. I can take Bob. All right, and you understand this character and he wasn't an easy father? Definitely on both of those. (laughs) Okay, and Tony, would you understand this father maybe having an alcoholic problem or issues with addiction? No, no. And would you understand this, Joy? Yes. Okay, so I do think I'm with Joy. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Joy, I'm going to work with you because that's what he tells me. He's like, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. I wasn't perfect. Um, And I think that's what he's talking about is the drinking or something to that effect of addiction. You understand this, yes? 
Yeah. And and so, but you understand he loved you more than anything, right? You guys had a good time together when you were older, yes? Yes. Yeah. And he, he was just funny. I just feel like he could make you laugh. Um, and you kind of had to be careful where you took him because you just never know what was going to come out of his mouth. Like, he was just funny, exactly. right? <laughs> and would you understand, did the drinking, like, did he try to quit later in life? Is that what's what I'm feeling? Or he was trying? He did. Yeah, because yeah. he was trying to be a better person and, mm -hmm. and make amends is what I feel. And so he's like, I had that time. I tried the best to make amends, but you're not the only child. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And I feel like he didn't get the opportunity to make amends to everybody the way he did with you. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. But he, he really does support you, guide you and love you so much. Um, he's always around you. He's just like your biggest fan from the other side, he tells me, because I feel like you're really one with kind of like healing and, and changing the, the family dynamics and doing things differently. And he's proud of you for this. Do you understand that? Yes. And it's not been easy for you because not everybody in the family has wanted to make changes. Do you understand that? Yes. So he, he's just really honoring you and putting you on this pedestal of saying like how proud he is of you. Okay. Now, do you understand his passing would have been from a lot of health issues due to his drinking in his earlier days or the way he treated his body? Yeah. Okay. Was there a type of cancer? Because I feel like I want to go to my stomach. And no. That's fine. Uh -huh. I just feel like then there's something going on in that area down there where the stomach is. I feel a lot of pain. So I don't know if he had stomach issues towards the end. Do you understand this? Yes. Yes, he okay. did. Okay. Well, he is just surrounding you with love and you have a boy in spirit, right? Yes. Because I feel like the two of them are two peas in a pod. They're having a blast together. And, and I feel like they met in, in the living. Um, if not, that's fine. They, they crossed. I was two weeks away from delivering when my dad passed. Oh, so, okay, that's fine. They are, they are just having a blast together. They act like they've known each other forever and they're just having so much fun and i feel like your son kind of had that outgoing kind of personality like your dad you know yeah he was uh, a <laughs> very charismatic and very exciting and fun and your dad was like that i just think that your son knew when to talk where your dad didn't always know <laughs> <laughs> i feel like your son knew better sometimes that he shouldn't say things in certain situations but your dad was just like whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but your son comes through too and and he wants you to know like he's okay. And I know you know this. Now was your son an, an artist or was he very creative? Very, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he sh just shines like this like creative side. It's like he has all these beautiful colors around him, which makes me feel like an artist, right? But I also feel like I hear music with him. Did he play music or was music very important to him? Very, yes. Okay, so he's coming through with that. He has... Um, I feel like that's how he communicates with you, your son, through music. Do you understand this? I feel like you will hear songs and you know that's a message from him, you know? And um, he's just like, I'm so close with you. You know, he's like, I'm always right there with you, mom. And would you understand with your son, you have some of his art as well as maybe some music that he made or his favorite music that he listened to or something like, like his playlist or something he created. Do you understand that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And he loves that you keep it close to you, but not only that, you kind of honor him with it. Do you understand mm -hmm. that? I put together all of his recordings. Yes. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. And uh, he thinks that's really special. I also feel like he wants to thank you because you've been like connected or close to his friends. Is that correct? That's true. And he's like, you're helping my friends. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Because You've been a godsend to some of his friends, he's telling me, like they've needed to talk and you were there for them. So he's like, uh, he works with you now. So you, I, I, I know I've seen you before, Joy. I know you've come to events, but I don't know what you do, but he makes me feel like you help other people or you do this work. You're a healer. I, I just got a new job as a music teacher. Okay, but are you a healer on the side? Maybe. Maybe on the side, I've just been starting to. Because he's telling me that's kind of like what you, it's like your gift. Okay. Yeah. It's like I you help started, other people. I just started this. Yes. And the music's <laughs> a way of helping people as well. So that's beautiful. 
just mm -hmm. take all the love from your son know that he's with you i do want to acknowledge is it his birthday coming up or did it just pass or is it yours both both his okay cause, two days ago and mine is in two days because he's like got a big <laughs> cake and he's eating it and handing you a slice that's why it's like whose birthday is this so and i feel like there's all these candles on it he's teasing you yeah <laughs> so is it like a big birthday like a like a you know like 40 or 30 you know what i mean is it like one of thank you for that what is it my 50th birthday is okay because he's saying it's like one of the solid numbers yeah so congr he's like you know you made it it's a big deal it's a decade yeah so he's just like really congratulating you and he's so proud of you so thank just you. know that he loves you more than anything and he's with you always okay thanks so thank you joy i took a lot of notes there's a lot in that one and there's I a lot in that one heard this one too so you want to start well, um, a couple of things. I think the energy in this one changed because I suspect that the person, she says um, that I I've know I've before. seen you before. I've seen you before. Yeah. It's, and so yeah. The, if you feel it, the, the energy in this one is a lot more upbeat, vibrant. She's much more sure about what she's, Confident. what she's bringing through from the other side. Um, she also mentioned, she's talking about the Bob, right? The the father, supposedly. Name, B name. A B name, B right. Bri Bri Byron or Brian, she said, and, and they come up with Bob. Okay. I forgot about like, that oh, that's okay. Right. I'll take it. I'll know. take it. Like, yeah. like this is a I'll game take or it. something? Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, without any kind of like the cueing from the sitter, she says, you've got a boy in spirit. Yeah, because so, she knows this woman. Of course, she, she knows, knows this person. She knows yep. her history. She knows something about her. Yeah, they they all and possibly she'd had a reading earlier in the day that Kelly we had noticed and she yeah it. yeah. So the energy is much much different. She's not fishing much more as confident. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, big difference. Um, yeah, the Bob. You know, going back to it, a bee name. What what the heck? Just tell us his name. Tell us his name. Tell us his full name. Tell us, tell us all that information. Again, why are we playing around with this? Mm. It's, it's go to it specifically. Just go. Okay, so I'm getting a Robert. I mean, does the guy on the other side go? I'm floating the letter B, and it's just floating around. B. I she don't know. A B name. If it's not his, it's somebody around him. Mm. Mm -hmm. like, like, We'll take anybody. I'll take anybody. anybody has a B in there. Could it be first name, last name, middle name? Yeah. Why wasn't it a last name? Like Boynton. My my last name is Boynton. Why couldn't have about. been? They could have. Could have been. Why, why is it always a first city, name? The city they live in. Yeah. Why is it always a first name? And why is it a nickname like Bob and not Robert? Which I'm sure his name is Robert. Mm. You know. Okay. Okay. Although I had an uncle Bob that was Bob. He was Do Bobby. Really? He wasn't Robert. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> Man with no arms, no legs floating in the, right. in the water. Right. Bob. Um, sorry you guys, a little dark humor there. Okay. Um okay, B name. Oh, his his or anyone. Um drinking or other addiction. Mm -hmm. That's kind mm -hmm. of wide. Yeah. And oh, and she brings up like a. Well, of course, he tried to quit. Everybody tries to quit. Tries to yeah. quit doesn't mean yeah. he quit. Tried to quit. No, no, he just he just escalated it. Um, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, I, I had written in my notes. Oh, family dysfunction. You know, like oh, that's that's a big guess. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> just, just play that especially up. yeah, especially if you've got somebody that has an addiction or something then oh, oh that's no surprise that there might be a little bit of even without any drinking or alcohol or drugs or anything I, <laughs> you I, might have dysfunction in your family i'm I'm writing notes that i i was writing and i can't even sure i read my own writing did not know father what did i say about that um i can't remember why i wrote that um he's always around you which always freaks me out because having your father always around you always around you i'm not so sure i like that idea and that creeps me out i mean there was one thomas john did with a little boy 
the little boy didn't <laughs> want to be on screen because you know grandma was going to tell tells i'm sure he's like you know grandma comes through she's gonna she's gonna tell i mean he the kid's like nine he's or 13 or can't remember now but it's like no you don't want uh grandma coming on to tell tell stuff about they see or about you at that age i mean come on this is my boy but yeah that freaks me out a little bit dad is always watching that just is like creepy ew just yeah, yeah. not not good yeah flattered her again what was the flattery this time it was um i wrote flat flattered the sitter um oh your father um put you up on a pedestal uh. you were the good good child um he had health health issues that led to his passing no kidding was there a type of cancer stomach and she said no well and, that, and she said oh i feel like there's something around that area and then she just where, kind of left where's it. the liver is it in the stomach area like round yeah. about that area i mean you know if you're if you're going somewhere in this area yeah and she, then, she's already know. admitted her father had a drinking problem mm, that's true and then cancer she says that something that he did in his past the way he abused his body gave him so i don't know about cancer but i don't think this is i guess if you're inhaling asbestos or something but a, a lot of cancer is not it's hereditary or, well, or the, other things yeah the sitter said no and then she kind of said oh well okay you know well, what does that mean whenever they get this message and that it's not true are they saying that oh piggybacking she used the word piggybacking oh, she did she piggybacking did. is a really really um common out that people use in multiple situations because think about it you've got 30 people on the zoom screen with you and when they come when and supposedly those 30 people are giving you all their dead people associated with each one of those is sending messages to her and then only one comes through strongly so piggybacking is, in other words, if I'm not quite right, it's probably because another person's um, dead person is trying to come through and it's blending. So maybe like they're, pop they're like the squeezing door. through the same door at the same time. Is that what the, like, is there like a little portal and they're trying to get through the portal both at the same time or how does no that work? Never explain that. I think it could be anything that you want it to be that fits the situation to explain it at that moment. But if you've got 30 people on a screen and each person on the screen, how many dead people would be around them in their life that might want to come through? 100, 200 people, 1,000 people who, I don't know. And they're all trying to send messages because they know they're with a medium right now. So mm. let's send a message. How would you know? How would you know which one is which? That's true. I mean, I was thinking like one person, one sitter, one dead person, but that's not necessarily true. Like I can think of off the top of my head, you know, I've got. Well, everybody, who's one, ever, everybody, more than one person who's died. Yeah. Like There's people in your life, you you have parents, grandparents, great grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins. And of course, Janice is front of a medium right now. Here's the medium. Here is my chance to tell the message that I want janice to know so she'll tell her family member how bad i feel about the situation or whatever yeah. yeah so you might not even know them i've seen people come through on some of these readings that are neighbors <laughs> or or one was a school teacher one was um one was it turned out to be a person that delivered it was a it was somebody somebody <laughs> that they delivered groceries to Another one I've seen was a person lived across the street, not even a friend, but yeah, that must be so-and-so. He lived across the street. Huh. I mean, does the guy who mowed your lawn and the mail carrier comes and delivers mail to your house, are they potential people who could come through also? And, and the pets. <laughs> okay. There's just so many people. especially deer in your yard that are walking by. <laughs> Wait, what are you I'm laughing because it's absurd. 
they say, oh, that doesn't work like that. But it doesn't work at all. Well, anybody who's gotten this far in this video is definitely thinking is is okay with me saying that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, the logic of it just doesn't, it kind of blows your mind when you actually think about the logic of it. That's why I'm laughing because it's just like, it's just, it can't, I mean, if you're thinking about each sitter and if the sitter has past lives, you don't know if the- Oh the, my gosh, past lives, we didn't even have that. Right, oh, right. Oh my God. So Tens like how many- of the people are coming through. Per person. And you got 30 on your screen. Yeah. And Tracy's on the screen too. And Thomas John's on the screen. He's th been there right. the whole time checking in, he says. Yeah. So who knows who could be on the screen at that moment? Who, who could be, if you can, if you can send and read spirits across Zoom, then also be right. in the room with you. If somebody was over, if there was somebody walking by the front of my house right now, are That's they? That's true. Potential? Is it right. potential that I could be getting their message if they have a very strong person coming through? Right. My the partner just walked by. Who did? So my partner just walked by. So and all know, of it associated just... with him. Yeah. And your cat? No, I have a cat. I have three cats. Who knows who's associated with them? But if if somebody's dropping off a package at my door from UPS or dropping off mail, right? And they're there. I mean, is there? There's obvious. Okay. There is obviously not a distance because you're in, these people could be on the other side of the planet from each other. Right. So if there is no physical distance, that's going to be the problem. And some mediums will, you can write them a question on text or email and they'll get it back to you at a totally different time than you sent it. Oh, how, who's off bounds? Could we be in touch with the people in Russia right now who've been thrown out of buildings? I'm going back to, to the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Could they have been sitting in there? She's this woman, Kelly's in Sacramento. Um, so could she in Sacramento just all of a sudden get a message from somebody who had died at the hand of Putin right now? And he's telling it to her in Russian. Right. What is, what is, what is the boundaries? I'm asking you, Janice. I hope you have an answer because you're so smart. You can tell me what is, yeah. what keeps anybody from anywhere, from any time trying to come through to her. If you can do this over zoom or you can do it by email. Right. And all you need is a connection to the person who's. Yeah. Like who knows Kat's her. trying to connect them. with me right now. I heard that. He went. <laughs> A cat's have nine lives, right? He's going so, to, oh my gosh. How many yeah. lives are you on? <laughs> he turned around and looked at me like, can you let me off this door? <laughs> Pam. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of blows my mind. So could he be reincarnated? Could he be right? Like that, have been a reincarnated right. past somebody in my life. Right. Hmm. Pam? Can you wait a second? I'm going to pause for a second so that I can let my cat out. Hold on, people. Okay, sorry. I had to let the cat out because he can't figure out how to use a door. So whoever he was in his other previous lives does not understand how to move a door that is open. <laughs> that is open. <laughs> it's not open enough for him to pass through. So <laughs> there, therefore not open as far as he's concerned. He doesn't understand. The other cats have it figured out, but no. Ooh, we're coming up to when she flips the papers around. So be when Ooh, when she okay. yeah. So watch for that. Um, I have a couple other things written down. You have a son in spirit. Oh, ah, I know what I wrote down that makes sense. You have a son in spirit. She said it with confidence because she already knows that she has a son in spirit. Yep. He knew his father. His father and him were were friends or whatever. And she says, "No, I." My dad died, and then two weeks later, I gave birth. So that was a that was no. Yep. Because Kelly said that they knew each other, and then she just says, "Oh, well, they know each other now." Right. So, right. So, um, 
that was a good catch and she was just like oh yeah of course that makes total sense and then she says oh he has the same personality he's just like his dad his grandfather and she's like yes absolutely so she forgets the fact that she missed that um did he play music or was it um important to him i felt like this is really a big leap because at that point she got to uh kelly got to admitting that she knows the son was old enough to have been playing music or doing art not like an infant child that right the sitter's name is joy that joy had lost a child in infancy or anything like that so so we know that the child of joy that died is made it to a later age yeah Kelly would probably say oh well it's because i'm a medium and i'm saying it's probably because you know her story already you've heard her readings before or or whatever and you admit it by saying i've seen you before um music reminds you of him which is not weird of course no. music reminds you of people music yeah is around us all the time art yeah do you still have some of his art that's you're an artist of course, of course we have what did you what no i burned it in a big bonfire yeah i mean even if your kid isn't an artist they draw stuff and you put it on the refrigerator and the, you know like a you know, whatever it's like you're gonna generally parents are gonna keep at least some of their child's artwork from school you know they may not keep all of it but you're gonna have a you know whatever there's artwork and she says you've honored him which made me think that she's framed something but the joy never said anything she just said oh yeah i have his playlist well that's part of her spiel though she says that to everybody you know, like you it, either you are honoring him by or you right, should be honoring catch. yeah uh you still have some of his art um and then she goes to and i thought this was interesting um after she says oh i've i know who you are i've seen you before yes you're a healer and she's like i don't i don't know about that and, and this is this is this happened in another video that 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 you haven't seen but this idea that they're healers to me healing means healing like physically healing and i always wonder about people who say that they're healers and then they're wearing glasses i don't get it <laughs> i'd sure like to take the glasses and i'd like my eyes healed thank you yeah can heal these up without having to have lysic and i i'd like to have some healed pounds off of me too while we're at <laughs> it and can you heal some some years off of me? And I, you know, to me, I'm thinking, how can somebody say, well, if this woman's a healer, and Kelly's like, she just throws it out there, like, of course, lots of people are healers. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe and she means it in a, a different way than I mean. Like it. a spiritual healer, I think, is what she was. Well, I guess that's being generous to her if we say that, because maybe, not, but other people make it sound like you know you heal, like you but joy heal. Joy's react. Joy's reaction was, "Yeah, I work with. I'm a music teacher now. That that was her interpretation of healing." And then then Kelly pressed it a little bit more and said, "Well, don't you do healing on the side?" And she's like, "Oh well, like I guess I do healing on the side. You know, it's sort of like. I don't know if you do healing on the side. Now. Yeah, Joy. Joy didn't catch on to that at all. Right. You know, only when she was prompted. What do you think about the birthdays? The birthday." Oh, she the birthday! I, she knew. Who she absolutely. Knew. She absolutely knew that either either Joy had talked about having her own birthday soon, or the child's birthday was too. I think that came up maybe over lunch or something. Maybe they had a break. Oh, yeah, um, in between the this is in between the readings, maybe she put it in the chat or something. Like you know, like she told somebody earlier in the day like that she absolutely knew about that birthday absolutely or it could have been a guess she just says who's having a birthday or his i don't think so birthday. we're being so skeptical there's only 365 days out there <laughs> and only if you, if you have about to have a birthday and just had a birthday mm. we've got like two weeks before two weeks after so that's almost a month out of 12 so the odds of almost having a birthday and almost and the birthday just passed is one in 12 so three yeah no birthday, you still don't believe it huh? no the reason why i don't believe it is because right before that she says i know i've seen you before now if she hadn't given away that she knew that person 
I might have gone more with what you're saying. Like it was just a guess, but why would she say that if she knew that that birthday yeah. wasn't why happening? Why doesn't she just give us the birthday? And yeah. She knows. So your brother, your son, had a birthday on the 16th of last month, and yeah. he went. Why doesn't she just say that? And he's saying that your birthday is going to be is was two weeks later. Yeah. And he sent you some special music because of that. Do you remember when you were driving in the car and the car next to you is playing Queens, We Will Rock You? I sent that song to you. Right. I, I, right. I made that happen. I turned, I made the DJ right. on that radio station play that song because he knew he, you would be in the car next. We're getting out there. But that's what I'm saying is you could have said something like that. Yeah. And, and we can't see the woman because we blurred it out. And I don't remember what she looks like. But Kelly uses 30 or 40 years old. And the woman says, I'm going to be 50. She didn't say she's going to be 50 in a couple of weeks. She just said, I'm going to be 50. And it kind of trailed off. I mean, so that maybe she's 48. Maybe she's 49. She didn't say, I'm going to, I'm, I am 50 or I'm, I just turned 50 or I'm about to turn 50 this year. Yeah. She made it sound like I'm, I'm close to 50, very close. Yeah. So the son is saying he's honoring you because you're hitting the big number, the even number, the 10, the day. Why right. is that? Would that be important? Right. Why somebody on the other side of death have to say, good job, mom, hitting the big five zero. And she was saying 30 or 40. Right, 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 right. That's not the, that's not the only time she's way off with her estimations. Like it was in the, in the coming, one of them coming up, she says um, the, the husband and wife died within a year or two apart oh. and they died 11 days apart. It turns out right. they died 11 days right. apart. So okay. look for that. That's in the last one. Okay. So I'm I think I've got away. Of, everything on my notes. I think I've said on this because yep. I'm jotting down as I go, even though I've already listened to this before. I have to start getting rid of notes because I've got so many here now and it's going to get confusing. Okay. We're ready for the next reading. All right. Almost halfway through you guys. So, so yeah, look for, look for when she introduces this one, she mentions that she flips a paper and that she says, I like to scribble, but she has not been scribbling folks. If you've watched, no. she has not been scribbling and she flips a paper and she um uh right she mentions that that it helps her to scribble so i thought that was kind of interesting it's like no you're checking your notes i i completely missed that the first yeah time it's... You would see so that's about to happen so what we're doing i think so here. oh thank you everybody um i'm just going to see who else is here uh I like to scribble when I'm writing and I ran out of scratch paper, so I'm just flipping one over here. <laughs> um, it sort of helps me think when I'm scribbling. So um, I have a woman that's coming through. I do feel like this is a mother, but I also feel like with you, this mother, their, your relationship with her was not easy. She tells me she wasn't an easy lady. I feel like she could be a bit negative um, and she did like to complain sometimes. But she did love you more than anything, and I think you knew that. She just wasn't easy. Um, she was very worried about everything all the time, always worried and always negative. It was never the half glass full. It was the half glass empty kind of feeling with her. Uh, I do feel like she also would have had a lot of health issues, and she would have been on her own at the end because I feel like her husband would have passed before her or they were divorced because I feel like she's on her own at the end. Can anybody understand this? If so, um, raise your hand or write in the comments. Um, and I'll keep going because I'll give more evidence here. So I know I've got a mother. She wasn't easy. She was difficult. She was very negative. She loved you very much, but she worried about everything. Um, I feel like she always had an opinion. That's what she's telling me. She was always had an opinion or didn't approve of something. Um, and but there's still a lot of love. I feel like your relationship wasn't easy, but you loved your mom and she loved you. She just wasn't an easy lady. And I feel she had a lot of health issues at the end and she was on her own at the end of her life, meaning her husband must have passed before her, your father. That's what I actually feel, not that they were divorced. I feel like he, he passed before her. Um, and 
she was on her own and she was very uh, stubborn stubborn lady <laughs> so she tells me so can anybody understand this stubborn mother <laughs> if so nobody's raising their hand all right hold on mm. okay Tori uh, will you unmute yourself please hi hi so what can you understand everything or most of it um pretty much uh, most of it okay you understand the difficult relationship um not really easy? okay um i you guys were was adopted oh. at birth okay. and met my birth mom about a year before she passed away oh so this was your birth mother so that yep be... and the personality that you're describing oh, okay. but then would you understand she wasn't easy and that's because yes I feel like even though you yes. found her, she wasn't easy that's what she's yes. telling me and she's apologizing for that because she had a lot of health issues. Do you understand that? Ah, uh, yes. And she just complained all the time, which, I mean, I guess she wasn't feeling well, she says, but she's like, I really complained too much instead of like really appreciating the time I had with you. Do you understand that? Uh, somewhat, yes. Okay, I like, I don't like the word somewhat. So it's either yes, no, or I don't know. So let me, if that doesn't resonate, that's okay. Um, but I feel like it should resonate because I'm um, thinking this woman would have complained all the time, is what she's telling me. So if you uh, don't, if, if you can't take that, that's fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all, I promise No, you. it's just, um, yeah, she did complain, um, not all the time, but okay. um, life wasn't easy for my mom. Yeah, okay. And you understand that um, her life, her husband would have died before her? Her last husband died a month before her. Okay, thank you. Um, and Tracy, you can understand a lot of this. Is that what you're saying? Tracy yes. Thomas? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me work with Tracy here real quick and see what do you understand, Tracy? Um, my mom was very ill at the end. She complained a lot. Her husband passed before her. Okay. And, and you had a good you loved your mom, but it wasn't always easy. The relationship. Yes. I think I'm with you, Tracy. Oh, I'm like, you have to be able to take, like, this woman's telling me, like, no, I complained a lot. She's like, and I'm sorry about that. She's like, I'm sorry at, about that. At the end, she was so miserable. Like, out of mis, that's exactly the word, miserable. Yes, that's what she's telling me. Yes. And she wishes that she had taken that time really just to enjoy her last moments, oh. you know, and, and instead. Because she's saying, you know, I just, I wasn't as bad as I, I, I mean, I was bad, but I wasn't as bad as I was saying. I just didn't like it. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I, what I felt. Yes. Yeah. She's like, I don't know why I was kind of dramatic about it. She's saying. <laughs> very dramatic. And so um, she's just like, I am sorry. And you were oh. very patient. She keeps saying you were so patient, so loving, so kind. Oh. And she was like, I didn't even feel like I deserved it sometimes. And it made me feel bad. She so told she, me that all the time. Oh, so she's like, thank you so much. You were such a good person, such a good daughter. And she's like, I know I wasn't easy, but you know, everything I did was because I loved you. Do you understand that? Yeah. So she's just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And of course she's with your son. And, and I feel like the two of them are having so much fun over there. Oh. because they're just having a blast because he's making her laugh so <laughs> i know that they're together and i also feel like she's with your father now is your father passed no my father so has. then this must be your stepdad were you close yeah. with your stepdad yes he was more of a father than Thank my you, own because that's what he's like oh no i'm the father he's yes <laughs> yes he was okay so he's like they're all together they're watching over your boy. He's watching over you. They love you very much. I also feel like they're super proud of like who you are and the things you do for others. Do you understand this? Yes. So I feel like they're always helping you from the other side. They're always helping you from the other side. And I know you do some work with like the, the grief groups. And mm -hmm. I feel like they're talking about how you're facilitating or helping those griefs, grief groups at times. Do you understand this? Yes. So they're thanking you and they're just uh, appreciative and want you to know that they're always with you. All right. Yes. So I'm going to leave you with that, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. That's the first time mom's come and she just passed about four months ago. Thank you. <gasps> oh, she loves you so much. She's, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so glad she came through. Thank Aww. you.
As with all of them, there's so much information. I'd forgotten that this was Tracy. This is so oh, this God. is Tracy the host, right? So my question is I went I went to an art show one time. It was a contest. And the the um people sponsoring the contest were allowed, the the board of directors or whatever were allowed to put their own pieces into the art show and they won. Like the people hosting the show won. And I was always thought that was like, what the heck? And then so I had that same feeling with this. It's like, why is the host allowed to get a reading when all these people paid to attend this summit and like anticipated having a reading? Well, it doesn't work that way, of course. Right. You can't tell the dead person, sorry, you can't come through. Right. They, so like they, the... they jumped in. She, I guess Tracy could have said, this isn't about me. I think that's all mine. I can connect to it, but let's, let's, let us yeah. have a chance. Tell my son to just knock it off. I'll, I'll text right. him later. Right. I mean, th- I, what I think happened in this reading is that she picked the first person, but the first person wasn't a good fit. You know, like she was working too hard to right. make it work. She said the word sort of, somewhat. She goes, I don't like it, somewhat. Yeah. And then as Tracy, it's uh, not. Kelly missed that it was, was, oh, so it's your birth mother. Like she totally missed that. And so, like, I think, I think Kelly was relevant to have come in there, huh? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a totally different element. Yeah. And so, and so, well, she said, I'll keep going. So I'll, I'll get more evidence, which there's that word. Just she threw that in. Name. Just say the name and maybe like where they grew up. Give us your love. Right. Give them the last. What is, if you want evidence, that would be so simple. Right. These dead people have all forgotten everything. Right. And so right after she said that, she missed that it was the, the, um, the birth mother so i think kelly in kelly's head she was like oh let's pick somebody that i know so i can make this reading go a little bit easier let's get the energy back up in the let's room get the energy back up so the phrase that i keep hearing over and over is she loved you more than anything mm-hmm. she says that every time pretty much oh but i want you to know she loves you more than anything it's almost like a tick you know it just comes out without her saying it and i yeah. think Okay, that's your phrase, but you're making it sound like it's coming from them. So right. is that what they're saying? And they all say right. the same thing. And you notice at the be- very beginning, she says, I'm getting a mother who's not, she's negative. She's not a very easy person to get along with and so on. And several people claimed her. Yeah. Again, it's so vague what she's yeah. trying to do. Not evidential at all that she's, she's there giving all this on there and at her own on her own at the end there was health issues well no kidding like i said what what, were were she parachuting out of a plane and she fell and that i mean (laughs) right right no she had health issues at the end of course she had health issues at the end of course she's miserable yeah of course she's complaining and she says she's complaining more than she should at least that one woman who came in first said had had at least the the kindness to say, well, she didn't always complain, but she did complain. Well, yeah, of course. Right. She didn't right. always complain. No, but right. she, Kelly says she always complained. What do you think about the, he passed before you and your last husband, the her last husband. She oh. knew that Tracy had a stepfather. She right. Must have. She was, oh, I'm not talking about your biological father. Oh, I must be talking about your stepfather. And oh, I missed that part. Yeah. She's like, yeah, of course. He was more, he was closer to me than. than oh, that's right. right, right. They know right. each other well. They talk, they probably don't sit around and talk about dominoes or bridge. They talk about their family members and their relationships and they have a long history together. So, of course, Tracy's talked about how she has a stepfather right of course she has this isn't these people overshare daily about their lives that's right because i have the wording of that it's not like she said oh was there a father figure or something she said um is it your father no then it must be your stepdad 
and and Tracy was like, oh yeah, it was my stepdad. He was like, he was more of a father to me, or whatever she said. So yeah, you're exactly. I missed that part. Yeah, yep. She says, um, and and this is common with a lot of me. All almost all mediums do this, but I, there was an example of it just a few minutes ago. She says something sounds sort of like a a factual kind of thing. And then the sitter confirms that, yeah, that's exactly right. And then she says, yes, because that's what she's telling me. They almost all psychics will do that. It's like a, again, it's like a, just a thing you say without even thinking that, yeah, that's what they're telling me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what Bob, the sitter remembers. Bob, yeah, that's what he's telling me. They don't even think about what they're saying. And the sitter isn't hearing that. Right. They just go, oh yeah, she knew all along. They're not hearing that it came after. They're just when you're the sitter, you are on this. Okay, you've paid money to be here most of the time. Mm -hmm. they, they paid fifty bucks to be here. They've allocated their day to sit here and do this, devoted to this mediumship reading, in the hopes they'll get a reading. They're motivated to get a reading, right? So, right. like right. with um, the first woman who said, "I I connect to it," who was adopted. We'll see that information has yep. come through. Now a person later on to after this, the two or three readings are going to be after now know this woman has been uh, adopted at birth. And, you know, so they, that information is already out there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it comes up because I'm kind of listening to these out of order, but uh, what was I starting to say that she, <sighs> perfect. I'm getting myself confused. I forgot. <laughs> I'd make a horrible medium. <laughs> I wouldn't have any room. Them. <laughs> she goes in and flatters her. Yeah. I know Tracy works with the grief groups because I've written an article about or two about these grief groups that allow okay. them, their, their, their parents, they're called parents healing partners without healing, healing partners. It's a three letter, three acronym. Yeah healing partners okay i can't remember it's not important but the point is is that it's a group and this one is online i assume this is true with all the other ones too but this one's online it's notoriously infiltrated by thomas john and his friends all these yeah. groups, they're oh. in there it's a grief group that meets online thomas john has been kicked out because i think i think he got kicked out but what they're doing is these are parents helping parents heal that's what it's called okay helping parents heal so there's a grief group that Tracy, I'm almost positive, is in it or has been associated with it. And people um, have lost a child, so they're getting help. Now, these people in this group are talking about their loss and their child. And it could go on for years. I, one woman, she was talking about how many years she's been doing this with this group. So they're all, they're, of course, everybody knows everybody's personal history. Right right beyond and uh so she flatters tracy by saying oh i know you're involved in this healing group you're not healing if you're still in therapy years later uh, that's not mm -hmm. healing that's that that's rehashing it and just keeping the wound alive of course everybody grieves differently we all grieve differently right but death is a part of life so this continual keeping the scab off that you're oh well you're missing your son let's talk to him let's see what he's up to today yeah why don't, we, why don't we check in with him you have to allow people to get to a point where it's not always on your mind always on your mind you have right. to be able to live right. through it right. so these grief groups i think and therapy i think my in my opinion if you're still in it for years later you might want to look into getting a different therapist or a different yeah yeah oh yeah 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 because it should you should be moving past that at some point yeah. now you should have come to some normalization yep yeah you can't live in that pain and chaos all the time but some people do that but i'm, part I'm of their personality i'm wondering if it, it's sort of like when you were saying that because she's recommended working with grief to other people grief groups with other um people other sitters oh I is this like an amway yeah. is this like an amway thing where you get people to 
like go and infiltrate these grief um well you know and, that's interesting and bring that them back that to because them. these mediums that thomas john has on the summit are our instructors you can hire them to help you learn how to be a better medium yeah so they yeah. have an incentive to encourage people to go into mediumship as a career on the side healer mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. i think every single one of these has on their website that you can you can hire them to be your instructor oh so there right. is so, some there is some um are they recruiting are they using these summits to recruit people well yeah i would think so yeah mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about it, but in that way, but I think so. Yeah. It's not just about getting readings all the time, but you want to, mm -hmm. they want to sell their swag. They want to get their events booked. And mm -hmm. part of it is um, I'm going to um, help you in spiritual. They have classes. They teach classes. Mm -hmm. They're all paid. Of course they're paid mm -hmm. for their classes. They do. And they're paid for their. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can buy videos and you can buy instruction. And so this is mm -hmm. a to do it interesting yeah i guess i guess that makes sense so she has encouraged the last two hasn't she almost all of them she's encouraged them to she's either said that they they are already helping people or encouraged them to, to um, honor it. honor their loved one by by working in a grief group or whatever not not going out and helping um at the local animal shelter no no you know or you know, whatever charity, maybe, maybe the person who passed away was really interested in, you know, I don't know, um, like was a really good bicycle bicyclist or something, or, you know, not starting a, 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 um, boys and girls club in their town that, you know, or raising funds so that the local school could have roller skates for everybody, you know, whatever, I don't know what it is, but you know, why is it, why does it have to, why why is honoring your past loved one have to be related to do something doing something with grief work it's like i want my roller skates by the way but i used to roller skate with a kid but now a psychic knows that as i've said it they can say it the the it's not even as personalized as your next door neighbor Joanna is struggling with some life issues and i think that she would really benefit out of you coming over and helping her with gardening because she, mm -hmm. she loves mm -hmm. gardening and she's right. she's really not able to get out as much as possible so mom could you could you go and give some extra time to your next year nothing specific like that and remember joy earlier she says i just started a new job which the psychic didn't know um and i'm going to be a music teacher mm -hmm. and she still kind of played that down the medium kelly played it down by saying oh that's amazing but aren't you doing healing on the side and yeah. then playing down the actual legitimate job that is um a passion for this mother obviously because she lit right up and she was like oh yeah I'm a, I'm a music teacher you know like she was really happy about she that she gave that information she did she did uh, kelly didn't know it she just said did your son have something to do with art or music which is yeah. pretty generic um, yeah did your son have anything to do with traveling in cars did he <laughs> did he right right anything did he yeah. ever draw i mean it's really generic but so when she said yes and i'm becoming a music teacher i just got the job kelly just was like she 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 just kind of was like oh that's nice but aren't you healing on the side yeah that's what made me yeah to... like hmm, they're recruiting is that meant that's that we're hiring <laughs> Yeah, that that to me felt a little like uh, I don't know what's going on there. Why didn't maybe she tell nothing. her more about the job? Why didn't she say, you know what, that's a wonderful fit for you? Or yeah, maybe she's gonna say, you know, in a year or two down the line, you're, you're gonna start having some problems with such and such at your job. So, or I don't know, give her some advice. Some and they can see the future, right? Right. I I don't know, but if Let's they're good at reading body remember. language, wouldn't if somebody was like, "Oh yeah, I'm teaching music," wouldn't you go, "Wow, that's really good. You're really honoring your child who loved music by being a music teacher." Woo! <laughs> you know what I mean? It's sort of like no, you're but it's like nah, not, not that, not that. You know, <laughs> you need to go into mediumship. 
<laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just being cynical. We're, we're really at the, two skeptics in the room. Two skeptics in the room are not going to go over this. Okay, so grief groups, your father has passed. It was your stepdad, flattery with your son. He, they are with your son. Your mother is with your son. She said it, boom, right like that, because we all know she's got a son, and that's Tracy's identity. It's like yeah. I was on Gilligan's Island once, and so that's my identity. I mention it every chance I get. Tracy's always talking about her son. Well, I guess I would, too, if I thought I was really in communication with my dead son. <laughs> Next notes. Oh, my gosh. Sure. Another. Let, let me flip another page of my notebook. I'm using up scrap paper over here because... Oh, well, so when when she transitions to this next person, she goes something like this and and drinks her drink. But I think she's also taken it as a chance to look at it, her notes as well. Oh, aren't they right there in front of her? Yeah. Oh, here comes the cat. <laughs> kitty, 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 kitty. If you if you if you acknowledge him too much, then he stays longer. He does more annoying things. So. <laughs> That's how he is. Okay. Let's go to the next. You ready? So who would he got? Yep. You ready for another one? Yep. Who's next? Uh, I didn't write anybody's names down. Oh, yes, I did. Laura, maybe? Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to see um, who else is here. I have a woman that's coming through. I'm not sure of the relationship yet. I know she would have passed from breast cancer. I do feel like this is like either a really good friend, like a best friend or a sister or like a cousin you were very close to, same level as you. I know that she left behind, I feel, a husband and kids, so maybe this is your wife. I'm not sure, but she's telling me this story. It's not very clear yet, so let me keep working with her. I also feel like um, with her, uh, she was sick for a long time, and I almost feel like she had the cancer. She thought she beat it, and then it came back, and when it came back, it came back with a vengeance. So can anybody understand a, a good friend that would have, or a cousin, or a sister, or something like this that would have passed from breast cancer and I know it's breast cancer because she showed me the little pink thing and that's for breast cancer also um I know like she would have had it and then like uh, another cancer maybe and then beat that and then this came because I feel like this was the second time she's getting cancer um Laura says my sister okay so Laura if you want to unmute yourself that would be great hi hi so you understand this for your sister and she left behind a husband and, and children? Yes. Okay. And you're very close with the children. Yes. Yes. She had one son. Okay. That's fine. You're very close with him. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I feel like she, she's, you two were very close in life. And I also feel like, um, she was a fighter. Do you understand oh, that? Extremely. Yes. Yes. I, I feel like she was kind of shocked that she didn't beat it at first and that it had come back. Is what I feel. Yeah, with the vengeance, yes. Yeah, that's what she's like. It just like it fought me back, and I got I got tired. I couldn't fight anymore. That's what she says, and and I just feel like she's thanking you for doing so much for her. Do you understand this? Oh, a hundred percent. Yes. She's like you were her rock, and you continued to be the rock for her family afterwards, and she thanks you for that, and she appreciates everything you did. Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps, and I feel like you're a mom to her son now. In, in whatever way you can be, she says. Yes. And she we appreciates both, that. She had breast cancer, um, and then it uh, metastasized after 10 years. So a year after she passed, I had breast cancer as well. But you beat it. Yes. Because she's on your side there fighting with you. She's like, we're fighters. <laughs> so she's oh, thanking you. She's thanking you, and she's wanting you to know She's over there and she's your angel now and she's helping you any way she can from the other side, okay? Um, and she's not alone. I feel like uh, you sometimes think that she's over there all alone, but I feel like she's with other family. Do you understand this? 
Oh, a hundred percent. Yes. And she has a friend over there. I feel like one of her friends is with her. Do you understand this? Yes. A friend that passed a breast cancer as well. Yeah. So they're hanging out together. Yeah. Right. And were you getting your nails or toes done or something this week? Uh, yes. <laughs> so she's like, she's like, I love it when she goes to the spa. I kind of hang out with her. <laughs> so she's just really kind of like saying, I love to see it when you take care of yourself. So, uh -huh. cause you're not always doing that. She's like, she's very selfless. She doesn't always put herself first. So she's just really loving you from afar. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to leave you with that, Laura. Thank you so much. All right. Um, and if you want to mute yourself, that'd be great. I don't, I can't do it. I don't. Hmm. So does she love you more than, <laughs> what is it? What is the line? I think it's easy. She loves you more than. Yeah, I forget. Yeah. Whatever the love, the love thing. Her. She loves you more than. Anything? She loves you more than anything? Or is that what she says? She loves you more than anything. So she, she didn't get that one. Yeah, I've got way too many notes here. Hmm. So again, no names. Here's what I think. I think her notes said, <laughs> use the word of vengeance. Well, because... I, I don't know about that because I've had breast cancer. And the word fighter is used constantly and, and returning with a vengeance. I think that's a common phrase. For people. No, but she said, yeah, but then, well, maybe, but that's what, that's what, uh, that's what the reader said or the sitter said as well, that it came back with a vengeance. Like yeah, she must, awful. she must have known this person. Well, the other thing is that she says, were you getting your nails and toes done or something this week? So that could have been again in the comments. So, Oddly enough, right. I'm doing my nails right now. <laughs> That's funny. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, I watched this yesterday and I said, oh my gosh, my nails are in bad shape. I've done <laughs> gardening and I have got to, and this is the perfect time. I'm sitting still sort of, and I can get my nails done. And, and yep. the cat doesn't seem to care. No. Um, okay. So. I'm getting a woman who had breast cancer. Yeah. A friend, a sister, a cousin, or a partner, or something like that. Yes. Tell us her name. My gosh, how hard is this? Sick for a long time. Usually people are sick for a long time before they die of cancer. Yep. Uh, and she said another cancer and then it came back and then breast cancer because she showed me a little pink thing because mm -hmm. people in the dead always send you symbols that are modern used mm -hmm. symbols. Uh, she says it was my sister she left behind a husband and children i know you caught this there wasn't children there was one son mm -hmm. that ain't children um and this um you're a fighter again that's a word that's used constantly in the breast cancer community and i think i'll probably a lot of other communities as well yeah and this little bit this always pisses me off so she's giving her a whole bunch of praise okay everybody's getting praise but what pisses me off is whenever they say something like this you were her rock you were the rock you did so much you were this and i'm thinking what about the husband and the son <laughs> and the and the other family members did they they didn't do anything they weren't the rock i would think her son right. would be her rock right or maybe her husband right it just or even herself really you know like down. Yeah. maybe she was really stoic and and like worked through the what you know did the best she could with the situation that she was in i mean you know that shows some mental fortitude of the person with cancer Absolutely. I mean, any a number of people could have been a rock. And he just feels like, because I'm on the call with you and I want to praise you and I want to make it better for you. I'm going to say you were the rock. Yeah. Well, if she's it's talking to your sister, why doesn't she say, and my husband was so supportive and my son, was there a message for the son? No. Son didn't get any message. Neither did the husband. No. That's pretty selfish of this sister, the unnamed sister, friend, sister, cousin, partner. <laughs> unnamed. Right. Friend, unnamed sister, the yeah. whole time. 
I didn't get her name. No. And then the woman, the sitter, Laura, she overshares as they all do because they think they're communicating with their dead. And right. she's helping the medium out. And she says, oh, I had breast cancer. And she said, I had breast cancer. And I made a note of that. And that's the same thing I heard yesterday. And then this medium says, but you beat it? Well, that's what usually what the word had means. Yeah. 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 And you beat it. So you, yeah. She had family and friends on the other side. And Laura's like, absolutely. We all have family and friends. This is kind of a short one. It was a short one. What do you think? I I I think they, I've got I've got that's all I got on my paper. Yeah, I don't have much either. That's that's about all I had. I I just thought that 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 the character that she needed to call up next or wanted to call up next on her list of characters that she was creating had to do something with cancer or vengeance or whether and she knew that this person was in the audience i mean otherwise why would she ask if she was getting her because she she said it really confidently about getting her 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 nails and toes done and i think sometimes they use that like surprise information to to convince people that the readings are real like if you because that that's just of of all the readings she's done that she hasn't really gotten that personal with people and it's like oh you know like you got your nose your your uh, toes and nails done and it's and it seems like an unexpected kind of surprising kind of information and that feels more real sometimes than more like proof sometimes than mundane information so i don't i don't know if that's why that was thrown in there or not but or she could have been talking about it in chat and and uh nobody and she didn't say oh yeah you're absolutely right i was just talking about that in chat i was just telling somebody in chat right. the other thing we're missing is there is a world out there i'm not one of these people that lives in this world and i don't think you are either because i know you're an artist and you work with your hands we don't go get our nails done. Not. Nah. I, I haven't for ages, but I mean, it's something I could do. I have done. I am painting my nails, but this is like the first time I've done my nails in probably a year. Yeah. But some people, they go regularly. That is so saying you just got your nails done is something that in, in if you've got nails that need to be filled, they have to be done every three weeks or so. So you're always getting your nails done. That's true. You're always doing. And we don't know because we can't see on the screen. She well, could, maybe she was sitting like this and she had really perfectly manicured, you know, like yeah, she's we, listening. You can, you can pin a person on Zoom. You can pin yeah. them so that they yeah. blow up to be the biggest person on the screen. And you could take a good look. And so maybe she had decorated done. nails, like beautifully she done. Has, yeah, if she has those kind of nails that are longer and they look really well done. Yeah, she's having her nails done. Yeah, she's having her nails done. She's probably getting her feet done too at the same time. That's kind true. of how they do it. Okay, so yeah. We okay. don't know because we can't see on the screen, and I blurred it all out. But like the the video I did at the that um, it's in a different video where a woman where the sitter the medium says, "Are you still wearing your wedding ring?" And ah, I said, "Right." Well, it's right there on the screen. You can see her mm -hmm. as she moves to dab her eyes and stuff. You can see it on her hand. Right. So by saying, okay. "Are you still wearing your wedding ring?" It's like, "Well, you saw it. Can't you see it? Do you have eyes?" I mean, yeah. So yeah. at some point, Kelly could have pulled up this person on the screen. Yeah, and she's sitting there like this person another time. And look, took a good look at each one of these people that is on the screen and yeah. said, ah, this person, Laura, she's obvious. Let me look and have a good look at her surroundings. Yeah. Uh, she's, look at her nails. This is a woman who takes good care of her nails. Yeah. And look at her, whatever. And, and you know, maybe looked at her earrings or looked at her clothes, gotcha. looked at whatever. You can see these things that are going on that you and I watching this video now can't see, but they're easily there. So saying i've just got my nails done is could have been just a coincidence because lots of women just got their nails done 
uh, possibly like if you can tell that somebody is blonde that shouldn't be blonde, you know, and you can say, oh, you just got your hair done. Now my hair is gray. This is gray, you guys. I'm not getting my hair done. But if you had seen um, and, and you looked at me and you said, that woman is not naturally a black haired person. Right. And then you could you could say, Susan Gerbic is not should not have black hair. So you can't see her roots. So therefore, she must have just gotten her hair done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And awesome. she likes that. Kelly likes to leave people with kind of a positive sort of thing. And she, the, that one was surprisingly short. Um, and maybe she was just like trying to figure out some, some way to give her a compliment before they left the session. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking about that. We talked about that the last reader is that there's a certain amount of time that they come in. If you're coming through from the other side, do you, are you only given a couple minutes on the other side? I mean, is it like, because it, it's all have that same thing or is Kelly just cutting them off? Right. Like, but okay, she's I'm not saying you only, you only get three minutes. I mean, because they all are. And Thomas does right. the same thing. All, all do. They're like, here is your dead person. They want to tell you this, 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 and this. Okay, now they want to leave you with something positive, And they're going to give you something flattering. Okay, now they're gone. Is that how it works? Because right. if it's not like you and me who through, could talk like. <laughs> I could, as we're doing right now, I could talk for hours. Do you remember when we went on that vacation? Do you remember that car ride? Right. We took? I Kelly says they've had to go through their whole life. What was it? How did she word it? Look at the beginning of your notes. That you have to revisit your life. Is that what it was? You oh, have yes. To, you have, yeah, you have a life review. You right. have a life review. So could, right. if this is like a rare thing to be able to, for that family member to be able to come through. Right. Like Tracy's mom came through this time and she's only died a few months ago. Maybe she hasn't had time to get through her whole review of life. But if if you you've got a whole life reviewed, I don't think that the dead need to take notes or anything. But shouldn't they just say, "All right, I'm here with Laura. Let's review my life." You remember when I was sick? Everything. I we're not. I took that newspaper off that guy's (laughs) steps or whatever. That time, could you please apologize to him for me? Uh, Remember that time that I I I said. Santa Claus isn't going to bring you some toys because you're right. behaving badly. I want to apologize. I probably shouldn't have said that. Okay. And remember that time that I had too much to drink and I right. told you that gossip and, and okay. Right. I probably shouldn't have said that. I apologize. Okay. Remember right. the time that I was telling you your best friend in high school was probably that guy you were thinking of dating that he wasn't going to be amount to anything. You shouldn't have anything to do with him. And he ended up becoming a CEO of Microsoft and, I'm apologizing for that too. And down the list, why? <laughs> it's true. It would take more than 10 minutes or five minutes. It's like three minutes. Or three sentences or whatever they yeah, get. I I mean, I Kelly should have said, she has a ton to tell you, but we got to move on to other people on this call. Right, no explanation. Like it fades out. Like, right. I only you have a couple minutes with you. Right. maybe it's like a calling center over on the other side we have like you know when you're in jail and you have to put in so much money and you only get so much time right is that how it works that they they can't i want to know these things well we can ask kelly so many questions <laughs> kelly has asked the questions oh we would be really popular and they would just say it's not how it works we right don't. right that's the she problem. seems to know everything. That's the problem. I mean, like, if this stuff was really real, I would really want to know this stuff. Like, I'm, I'm kind of making fun of it, but also, like, I'm really curious about how this would work. You know, like, well, it sounds amazing. I, I can't wait to die so I can go and find out because this sounds cool. I get the. It would be really yes, yeah. Some of this would be really fascinating. I don't see my kids as much as I'd like to, but if I die, then I could be with them all the time. All the time. Seven. You'd probably find out things that you don't want to know about. Yeah, your probably. T- but I could send them music. I could. <laughs> I could. I could send them. Or the last, the other medium that was in the recording that I have. Uh, she says, "If you see a bloom, a flower blooming, 
and it's just kind of by itself huh. your son sent that to you oh so okay really what about all... <laughs> oh that's not how ecology works yeah. so i mean it's like tinkerbell world i'm just going to make that flower bloom if right. they have the power to to materialize things and make things happen then right i'd like some money in my account <laughs> you know, can't you just materialize some extra money that would be a, that can't would be a I, great um... can't i go find some money laying on the street or something or right. if you can materialize it let's let's make some materialization happen because i sure would like that well, because I think she says something like, or they try to give you signs and omens and stuff, you know, like throw some, throw some change my way. That would well, be they great. always throw coins at people, but why don't they throw bills? I mean, at least dollar coins. I could, I could see maybe a bunch of those every, every day. I, I wouldn't mind going out for a walk and every morning there's ten, twenty dollars sitting there. That would be great. Day. Yeah. That would be my, my dear departed parents are thinking of me. They know I'm always short of cash. Come on, right. <laughs> pony it up. Right. I mean, and I've always wondered about that. When those po coins materialize, they're sending you coins. Are they counterfeiting coins? Or are they taking the coin from one place and lifting it up and putting it in another place? Are mm. they real coins? I mean, are they spirit coins? Do I, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, that was a thing. Oh, yeah, it's huge. Mm. It's, yeah, oh my gosh, that's like, Hot, uh, cold reading 101 if you were to open up the book you somebody's sending you coins so uh, if, if they're sending you coins and you're supposed to look at the year on the coin and it's supposed to make like you're supposed to say oh 1967 that means something and then it could mean anything it could be okay. your first kiss. Uh, okay. it could be the year you got your car i've seen people say oh that's the year you had surgery it could be a birthday uh -huh. anniversary passing day special event the vacation day you know, they went on vacation it could be anything because so people, when i'm walking when i'm i i um have ha 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 yeah I, I usually pick up i find coins once in a while i well, found a counterfeit hundred dollar bill oh the other day somebody really likes you i was i would have liked it if it had been a real hundred dollar bill oh. that would have been nice it was counterfeit it had it was well, playing it come from the spirit world because they're counterfeiting can they materialize things apparently they can because okay so if i'm walking it. down the street and i find a coin it's from somebody from a spirit somebody is it always it. from a spirit or just sometimes like how do you know how do you know if it wasn't just somebody getting in their car and they dropped some change as opposed to well, they, could have been, they could have been made to drop the change so the joint oh. ch change so that you would find it so if they're not materializing it okay and they're not counterfeiting it right are they making other people lose their change or worth drop it okay some people drop change on purpose i've seen i've heard of people just dropping their pennies just like oh i got a bunch of pennies in my pocket and just throw right. it right okay that's pocket. different right okay so but you they could were make made to drop it so are oh. are you is the person who's leading the change hmm. somebody who has been forced or forced hmm. to drop it so so it's theft right Nobody huh. talks about these things. I There's so many this. questions. I I'd like to know the answers to these things. I mean, serious. I'm serious. I would really like to know the answer to these things. I think we know the answer, Janice. You're just making it up. One of the things I want to make sure I mention to you, Janice, is and all those people out there watching. Hello, people out there watching. Hi, right, people. Subscribe, please subscribe. Let us know if you like this kind of stuff. And if you're still with us, awesome. You're going to learn a lot. There's so much information I'm learning from Janice. And I hope Janice is learning from me. I am. Too. It's, the, it's just an interesting perspective. So yeah, we're learning a lot. So what I what I want to do is just mention this really quickly because we haven't really, we keep talking about hot and cold reading. And I said, Kelly's doing some combination of the two. What she's doing with her hot reading is different than the hot reading that Thomas John usually does. Thomas John knows who's going to be attending his events because he's he's got their names and so on they bought they paid to go so he knows who they are right so he's then just goes onto the social media and looks them up so it's a different kind of hot reading what kelly i believe is doing 
in most of the cases where it feels very specific is she's either watched the earlier episodes of of this reading that she's in i mean you know the person the sitter right before her or the sitting right before her because it's the same women mostly women throughout the whole day i've seen them come up multiple times um and also she knows these people they're in the same circle of friends and so she knows of their story so she doesn't necessarily get the specific names and, and so on thomas john comes up with I know you have a brother named Charlie and he, he and he has a dog named Buddy. You know, I mean, he has more specific things because he's seen it on social media. Whereas I think Kelly's just like, oh, that's that woman who's been coming to some of the the events. And I think she has her mother's died and it was really, you know, of of, of cancers. I mean, she has more like a yeah. general feel of what's been going yeah. on with people, which yeah. is why I think her readings are feel more general and it's specific in areas like she knows somebody's son has died but and that's your stepmother or stepfather but i don't think she has names and stuff so those mm -hmm. are the things that's what i wanted to mention and then also this thing about permission you and i were talking about so if a person we just noticed the unabomber died it just came up on my breaking news I said, oh, well, maybe Kelly can get in touch with them. Can we go and get in touch? Can we get a reading with Kelly? And she could talk to the Unabomber. Each psychic says you have to have so much time passed before the death. You know, three months, six months, a year. They're not going to come through because there's so much time. But apparently Kelly can is fine with um, sooner. Four months, right? Four months, yeah, four months. One of the, one of the readers. Tracy, four, four months ago, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that was funny. Tracy said... That's the first time mom has come through and she died four months ago. And I'm thinking, wow, you must get readings all the time. If this is the first time she came through, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, four months is so your mom died four months ago. How many times, you know, how many readings have you had in that four months time? Mm. So can Kelly get a hold of the Unabom Unabomber and ask him stuff or can she not because his loved one isn't the one that's asking to get the reading. Can she just go to wherever and talk to them is what I'm saying. Because we know mediums do this all over the world. They are in touch with Princess Diana, their prince, uh, Char uh, Michael Jackson. They don't have a personal relationship with this person. And they don't have one of their loved ones there. So how are they able to, supposedly get in touch with these celebrities if she can't just ask well like i said we're going back to those russians again if so can she just try to contact can she sit in a quiet room or whatever she needs to do and just get the message and then we learn some really important information and or does she have to have a connection to them right janice i'm thinking out loud what do you think yeah no you were saying that that they some of the psychics say they can't get in touch with a celebrity because they don't have permission to from the celebrity to to bring them through but then then my question then is like if i was wanting my dad to to come through he he didn't give permission for me to talk to him after he died you know like I, i'm just curious about when the permission thing works and when it doesn't work like it works that... when they want it to work and it doesn't work when they want it not and when it would be at a disadvantage for them to have it work so okay if, all right is if 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 there's no way they could know some information um the example I give was I want my brother to come through because he needs to tell me this information that I do not know about um, something that happened. Yeah. And I want my brother like, to come through. He's my love. Where'd you leave the checkbook? Yeah. Or <laughs> some mystery of some, some murder or something like that. Mm. I need mm. you to come through to answer that question. Hmm. So this, if the psyche cannot know the answer that because it's just not unknowable, nobody knows, or, or where is the body buried? Hmm. 
Right. They'll say your brother's here, but he doesn't want to talk about it. Oh, okay. And, and I had this on one of Thomas John's, she said, uh, with operation onion ring, one of the children, we fed him some information, but we fed him a limited amount of information. And so, and I've seen him do this before. He'll say, grandma's here, but she doesn't want to talk about how she died. She wants to move on from that. Or he'll say, your brother's here, but he doesn't want to talk about it or wherever doesn't want to talk about it. And it's because he can't know the answer. There's no way to know the answer because yep. the answer is like, I fed him the information. So he couldn't possibly, there's no way of Googling it. And if you guess, how how could you, I mean, there's too many ways of getting it wrong. Because all I've said is, can he come, can my brother come through to answer this, this, this uh, question I have? Yeah. But I'm not going to tell you the question or this mystery. He'll, my brother will know. He knows what I'm talking about. Can, can my brother... It's just a way to deflect when the information well, was... is so so specific yeah it's it, he doesn't really want to talk about that right now <laughs> like why is my cat always take the same route every time to come and look out the window there's nothing <laughs> out there for him but whatever he'll sit there he'll <laughs> entertain okay. people so all right let's go back to the readings you ready? okay yep everybody out there watching you ready hope you're sitting down because this is going to be a while we're still got a bunch more to go through but this is super interesting so i'm learning lots okay back to kelly back to kelly think it's not letting me thank you um all right so there's so many spirits here and it feels so great um i just want to say and I'm trying to get to as many of them as I can because I want to give everybody a reading. But I do want to remind everybody, if you don't get a reading, really listen to the messages and, and for piggybacks. I always say spirit has a way of getting through to everybody as best they can and that the messages aren't just for the person I'm reading for. They could also be for all of you. Um, so if there's bits and pieces there that you resonate with, know that that's your loved one trying to come through, okay? I always say that um, spirit's pretty amazing and smart that way. Now, mm -hmm. as I um, connect, I also um, want to see, let's see. <sighs> I do feel like I've got a father that's coming through. He's a very good looking man. I feel like he was very good looking in his day. He was very outdoorsy. He loved to be outside in the sun. I feel like he was very active. He was a lot of fun. I feel like you would have grown up having a good time with your dad, that your dad was your buddy. Um, I know that he's very easy to talk to. He's a very calm person. He's not, he's not um, overbearing. He was very easy to talk to. As a matter of fact, he makes me feel like you were very, you would come to him before you'd go to your mom sometimes because he was calm and he didn't react. He always was, he would listen to you really well. And I feel like that's really important. Um, I also feel like you, he would have other children or maybe he had like, um, your parents would have been divorced because I feel like you would come to visit him is what I feel like, or he would come to visit you. So uh, can anybody understand a father in spirit? Um, and he would have passed, I feel like from cancer or something like cancer where he got sick and he was sick for a while. I do feel like it was, we knew he was sick, but we didn't expect it to happen the way it did or when it did. Can anybody, two people under, somebody, were you raising your hand, Sherry? Yeah. Oh, okay, and, and Tony, yeah. you understand this too. Sherry, what do you understand all of this so far? All of it. Okay, F, I kind of feel like I'm with you, Sherry. You've been on my eye the whole time. I feel like Spirit's been trying to take me to you. <laughs> so let <laughs> me work with you, because I do feel like this is your father trying to come through. And you understand that being the outdoorsy guy, and being very good looking. Yeah. You know, yes. and your parents weren't together, so you would see him and he would come to see you. And he was easy to talk yeah. to. He didn't have a temper. Yeah. He was very calm. And you could, yeah. even though he's a dad, he's like, she could tell me anything and she knew that. You know, I didn't <laughs> react. I didn't judge. I just was there to listen and be there for her. And was this cancer how he passed? Or a type of illness? Would you understand that if it's not cancer? I feel like he was sick for a while. Is that right? He had cancer. Okay. Thank and he you. was sick for a while too. Okay. And, but I still feel like even though we knew he was going to die, 
We didn't know it was going to happen the way it did. It happened different or quickly. Do you understand that? Quickly. And yeah. both of that, yes. Yeah, and he's <laughs> like, it was just like he didn't want to go through the the whole ordeal. He makes it feel like it's like his soul. No. just like, it's, I'm not going to win. It's just time to go. And he felt like it was right. better on the family. He didn't want to make everybody suffer. So it's like his soul chose to leave sooner, you know? Yeah. And he... Um, really didn't want to put everybody through the, the heartache because he loved you all so much. And he was very independent. He didn't want to be taken care of. Very. He didn't want to be taken yeah. care of. You understand this? But, you know, yeah. he, he was the one who always wanted to take care of everybody. He was very giving, very understanding, very loving. And he's still like that from the other side. You know, do you have a son, Sherry? Am I saying I have, your name right? I have a son. Is it Sherry? Yeah. Or Ch okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm really bad with names sometimes. So I feel like he's very connected with your son. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. Like it must have been very close or he's just very connected with him in spirit. So I don't know if your right. son has these, this gift or if he feels spirit, but he's saying that your son and him, they can see, it's like they're very connected. Okay. Huh. And I know you worry about your son a lot because he tells me you worry a lot. And he's like, I'm watching, on, I'm watching over him. So he wants you to know that he's watching over him. Um, I also feel like, is your mother still here? Yes. And she's not doing so well, or is she having some health no. issues? Lots of health issues. Yeah. So he's just letting you know, he knows that you, you, you do a lot for her. And he's uh -huh. also, even though they were divorced, he still watches over her. So he wants you to know she's okay. not alone. There's a lot of love on the other side looking after her. Okay. 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 And um, I, I have to say this too, and I hope this isn't like, I hope I'm, I'm not wrong, but um, he makes me feel like you had a difficult relationship with your mom. Do you understand yes. that? And yes. I would love to see you heal that relationship because I feel like that would help your mother, he keeps saying. And it's hard, but sometimes we just have to forgive and forget, even though, not forget, forgive, but not forget. That, sorry, that came out wrong. Sometimes we just have to forgive right. and let them know that we forgive them because your mom, he makes me feel like, is holding on to all that pain. And and that, I feel like, can sometimes make our health issues worse, okay? Right. And and I know that you worry about her, and he just wants you to know, like, they're all watching over her, okay? A lot of love from the other side for your mother and her health issues, but also for you and helping you take care of yourself, Okay. So I'm going to leave you with that and just know that your dad's amazing. He's got great energy and he surrounds you. Is he you. with my daughter? Oh, well, I hadn't connected with that far yet. Let me, because these are quick readings. But um, was your daughter kind of, uh, did she <laughs> pass a young adult? She passed, yes, as a young adult. Between like 15 and 25, somewhere in there? She was 36. Oh, so she was a little bit older. Okay, so um, I'm not sure. But would you understand that she was very independent? Very. And very stubborn. Is that very right? stubborn. Yes. So she, she, did, she is with him. And I also feel <laughs> like she loved to push the limits with everybody. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I do think she didn't take anything. She was going to tell you. She, like, stood up for herself. She was very strong that way. She didn't take anything okay. from anybody. Right? Do you understand that? She did not. Yep. Yeah. So, um, in her passing feels like this was an illness. Is that right? Was this cancer? She was murdered. Oh, okay. Don't tell me anything. Just yes, no, I don't know. That's fine. She's not showing me that part then. <laughs> or she, that happened. Was she sick with something? Or did she have some kind of health issue? She had health issues, yeah. Okay. But they would, nothing that was diagnosed. She was, she was, she had an addiction. Okay, that's... That's an illness to me. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. I consider addiction an illness like cancer. So, yeah, that's, so that's, that's how my data bank works. Because to me, that's an illness. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. And she's, she's just letting you know that she loves you and she's so sorry. Um, I feel like before this happened, you guys were um, having a hard time keeping in touch or like she wasn't like getting back to you or something. Is that right? Well, she had just moved, so, I mean, she, you know, she didn't get, she, I was, yeah, you're right, 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 when she passed, I was looking for a phone call from her, so, yeah, nobody could get a hold of her. Yeah, that's what she's saying. 
So she's like, I'm so sorry this happened. I'm so sorry that you, I hurt you this way. And not that she hurt you, but like that it hurt you the way it did. She wants you to know that she's okay. She's at peace. And whoever did this, I feel like they're paying for it. Is that right? Uh, they haven't been brought to justice just yet, but they're paying I mean, for it, it in could their be own way. Through. Yeah. Yeah. So she wants you to know that. And I do feel like you know who this is. She keeps saying, you know who did it. So um, I do. Do I know who? Like, I know all, I think I know all three well, of them. She's, who did saying, it, so. she's saying, you know who did this. She's saying, you know. Okay. And she's saying, yeah, okay. not, she's saying, don't waste your energy on, on the hate. Know that it'll, okay. have, that, that, that person will be taken care of in time. Just be patient. And okay. she keeps saying, okay. she wants you to keep living your life and keeping her name alive the way that you do, because I feel like you advocate for, for her in some mm -hmm. way. Do you understand this? I do. Yes, I do. I advocate for her every day with the police. Yes. She's like, don't give up. I'm trying to get it. Okay. Yeah. And she's just like, you know, she, she's right there by your side, supporting you and loving you, but she wants you to, to, you know, really take this pain and try to use it for positive because she's like, you're a pretty okay. strong willed person too. And she's like, my mom's great at making things happen. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've got her, you've got her strength as well. So she's like, don't worry, we're going to be there together, mom. Okay. So thank you. you know that. I'm sorry she didn't come through right away. Your your dad did, but um she was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny because my dad came through in my first reading too that I ever had. He came through first with her. Well, he's the strongest one. He must have been there longer, maybe, or he just likes <laughs> to talk. He likes to talk to you. Yeah. He was your best friend. Yeah. He says he's like you were like we're really close. So we were. Well, he's watching over her. He's showing her how to, everything works over there. So don't you worry. <laughs> on the other side yeah thank you i'm gonna leave thank you with you so that much. you're welcome god bless you so much thank oh, you thank you all right um she was murdered how did you she was not murdered get <laughs> uh -huh. Was no. my daughter, what about my daughter? About my daughter? Well, did she have she cancer? Murdered. No, she, she was husband. murdered. Oh my God, that ripped my heart out. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that really quick. These people, this is not a game. The people who are on here, they fully believe, and this is extremely manipulative yeah. of their emotions. We've seen and heard lots of tears. Um, they. This is not a game. You are changing people's lives by your readings. And I don't think necessarily in a positive way. And this one really shows it because she's like, uh, you just, this woman's advocating for her daughter to the police every day, every day, every day. And so she's, she's saying, I think I know who the three people are. Now, Kelly was smooth and got out of that. I've seen some people, including Thomas John, who don't, they say, yeah, the person you think it is, is probably is is yeah he he alludes to it it's like how dare you how dare you without knowing anything about this case say that 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 you know the mom's suspicions are true and kelly kind of got out of it she's like oh your daughter's saying not to really focus on that the hate and all that other stuff but that could have gone uh, yeah, sideways she real quick what if what if tell what if this sitter who's the sitter? Uh, I don't know if I wrote down. What if the name? she goes after uh, Sherry? Sherry. Sherry. What if she goes after these three people who she thinks is responsible. The police aren't taking this seriously. They're just saying poo pooing. No, it really wasn't murder. She 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 gave herself the drugs that that killed her. It wasn't murder. We're not going to accuse these people. And Shelly says Sherry says I'm going to take out my revenge on these three people. I think were the ones because even the psychic told me. That they were probably responsible i mean you can't this is a responsibility these these mediums are giving themselves and it's not it's not always uh pleasant right i don't know they they, they just don't think about these things no Thankfully, well you haven't heard saying just one person and and uh then sherry was saying no it's actually three yeah well she messed up on that and she goes what about my daughter yeah, yeah okay so remind me this this just happened at the very end and i i didn't right. hear it clearly 
she said, I'm sorry your daughter didn't come through. Your husband or your father did right away. And she said, I think Sherry said, Sherry, sorry. Yeah, I think so. I should probably, I should probably read it. Sherry. Sherry. I think, I think my, well, that's odd because my father came through earlier today. Yeah. And I think she said, and my daughter too, with him. My, my yes, husband. I think she did. So if but Kelly father, had read it, she, she missed the part about the daughter coming through. If she had yeah. watched that and said, oh, her father's dead. Yeah. Um. Okay, where do you want to start? But supposedly he was the strong one. That's why he came through. We're not well, any they... other people on the call. No, not even the people walking by, not the Russians. No, <laughs> it's no, right. That's not one perfect person because she's such a good sit, uh, reader. She can only, she did well, mention she... piggybacking. She did. Oh. She mentioned piggybacking. She says bits of what, if it doesn't fit you perfectly, that's because the bits that don't fit you perfectly fit other people in the room. Right. Oh, so baloney. so if you don't get a reading if you're the one of the rejected ones don't worry because a little piece of information you get the little leftovers that is just so reading. wrong and this so one vague. Like this one really bothered me a lot this one bothers me a lot she said she started off with saying like the father had cancer or something like cancer and then then she said was it was this cancer or a, a type of illness so like she's like a type so, of illness yeah a type of illness yeah, i wrote that down too keep in and mind then, the cancer and heart disease are the number one killer of adult males bingo and right they don't ever say i've never had a psychic do a cold read and say i'm getting that they died from falling from a parachute no the parachute didn't open when they jumped out of the plane no it's never that right. never he was caught in a fire no it's never that it's always like a cancer or a heart illness almost well i suppose there's some out there that aren't but though commonly that's cancer or heart yeah or an ill or another illness what was that something about painful it was really painful let me she see if i have it being painful yeah and then she's she's sort of big on like saying well it's not you know they they left their body before it got painful or whatever i don't know if she said that here i don't think so but um she said that he looked very handsome he was a man that was very handsome when he was younger and i yeah. I, I wonder about that thing again so she's seeing she says she sees sees him like she said i see they're showing me that little pink um thing that means breast cancer or he's showing me a cake and he's handing you a piece mm -hmm. so she's visualizing these things why do the dead visualize why why are they in human form i guess because they want to try to make it understandable but why wouldn't they just be like balls of light or something you know right I that, and wearing clothing and are they trying to be polite and not show their naked body or do they do they only present as they used to be but she says he's presenting himself as being attractive when he was younger so right he's saying i'm her father i'm you know i died i died at the age of 90 but i'm going to show you myself as a 30 year old right I, it just doesn't and make out, sense yeah and out a good looking outdoorsy and fun a, a buddy almost so does so is the vision she's seeing is this man this attractive man and all of a sudden she sees like elephants and and trails and hiking and like like it's flashing like it's flashing through your like if it was a tv show where it's like and you see these flashes of things in his life is that what it's it is or does she mm -hmm. see icons like she did with the breast cancer pen are icons of like a safari and fishing and here's a forest and they pop up over around him like these things images pop. i mean because that would be an interesting thing to know is it are you seeing through his eyes you're seeing yourself walking on a hike wow that would be yourself interesting fishing. Mm. i see my arm going out and i'm fishing i see myself picking up a gun and i'm hunting i see myself working in the garden i can see my hands as i'm going through the weeds or right. is it like i said icons well she she says they show her icons 
they show her things i don't know do you have a son <laughs> right I should, i'm i'm curious don't about you know if i have a son <laughs> this right well but, well what did she go down all the family members and miss the daughter that got Maybe murdered the daughter that had been murdered would be kind of like high up in priority she missed she missed the age too she said between 15 and 25 and the person was 36 and then she's like oh well she must have been really independent and stubborn it's like well a 36 year old living on their own might be described as independent and sometimes stubborn or just I might know. be something to say to cover up the fact that she totally blew it totally blew totally. it is your mother still here still alive well right. don't you know right right is the ask mother my son. so <laughs> ask dad <laughs> i'm just really ask. curious about why she went down through all the family members in this particular reading where she didn't in others and then she missed the major pro the major heartbreak of this woman why didn't she name the the she didn't name the daughter she didn't name nobody again so your your sister Eloise is here and she wants to tell you about the time that there was a kitten and yeah. she told you the kitten had died, but actually we ran over the cat. And I didn't want you to know, she, we told you she ran away to a farm in upstate New York. <laughs> right. Because we wanted to spare your feelings. Yeah, we wanted to spare your feelings, but I need to come, come and tell you now that the cat actually got run over by a car right. and I was driving the car. Right. But um, yeah. And I felt really guilty about it. No, no, nothing like that no um, you know and she cat. also she also tells her not to tell her anything about the murder you know like don't tell me any she said yeah, you, I, I saw you react to that you're like because we just talked about it if you don't have any answers oh she doesn't want to talk about that <laughs> no yeah kidding. i was like uh no kidding she doesn't want to talk about that well that's kind of important how come, right why, i mean if you can talk to the dead okay look at this again i've i've said this ad nauseum over the all the readings i've all the analysts i've done and all the articles i've written if you can speak to the dead and they can relate stuff to you why do we still have missing people and cases right. that have not been solved right why right because they can't talk to the dead oh my gosh it's so obvious right Even if they don't want to come through this moment or they're not ready or whatever you could you had a legitimate meeting who really, really can communicate with the dead. They should be down at the police office going through the cold case files. All right. Now this one right here, I'm centering in on blah, blah, blah. Nothing. It wasn't even a human reaction. She's like, like if the, if somebody said, you know, my daughter didn't, wasn't ill. She was murdered. I would have gone well. And I did when I watched it probably both times went, <gasps> Oh my God, I'm I so that. sorry that that happened to you. Nope, don't tell me about it. You because know, like, it's an ew. everyday thing to get all these. It's things. just ew. If you, know, you talk like, to the dead all day long, everywhere, the grocery store, while you're getting your nails done, there's dead, yeah. dead, 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 dead. You yeah. Know, I guess it would, you just become jaded because that's that's the only thing I can think of because this is a reaction I hear all the time. People, you could see them falling crying i mean if it wasn't blurred out you guys would be able to see it too everybody watching right now you'd be able to see it the yeah. motion and they don't go i wish i could reach out to you and give you a hug right now i know this is really painful i am yeah. so sorry this is happening to you you know maybe you should seek out a real grief counselor a licensed grief counselor yeah. who could actually help you through your grief yeah could you do you have a pastor or a minister or some spiritual person you could talk to who could help you through this moment because this is intensely painful for you i know that no none of that look another That's reason like, with me. ew ew i just wanted possibly? to reach out and hug this person you know like i'm so sorry that happened to you oh my gosh yeah when thomas when i did the operation onion ring with thomas john and the kids where he's reading children yeah. from five to twelve those yeah. kids were in it was it was horrible i haven't released the videos um i have i have a little bit that i've grayed out all the people in it and i could release it but i'm waiting on i'm holding everything off be, for reasons that i can't talk about on on video yeah but um the uh the children are i i 
badly wanted to go and talk to these kids and hug them. It was just some of the things he was telling him. He thought he was being nice, but you could tell the kids were just so emotional and manipulated and you could feel the mother's pressure on them. It was, it was awful to watch. Yeah. So these are adult women. Okay. So yeah, you know, they, they've made the decisions to go through this kind of stuff and to believe this stuff. And yeah, I know a lot of culturally they're raised in this and they've never even thought of questioning this. This to them is real. Right. They are at least still adults. And they can make their own decisions, but still it's manipulative. Oh yeah. Your wife daughter was murdered okay and then she tries she tries to make it about the the addiction and stuff you know i wonder i wonder what people think that are watching it's like how would you react to that situation because that this one of all the ones that the examples that we've had i think it's a pretty good range of examples uh you know uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but this one oh just did not sit with me at all she says, how come my daughter didn't come through it? What about my daughter? And she goes, oh, well, we're just doing quick re readings today. And I <sighs> thought, you could have gone oh. as long as you want to. There's oh, no, I mean, you've got 45 minutes that you're able to do readings in, but you could take up the rest of this time. There's, there's, there's at least um, 19 more minutes left on this recording. She could spend that whole time with her explaining how to find the evidence who the people's names are yeah uh, she could she can do all that there's no reason she can't solve this case right here right now yeah but she chooses to say it was just flippant the way she said that oh your daughter didn't come through well we're only doing quick readings today like yeah i'm so sorry that your dead person is not able to come through because i don't know anything it just it did feel ugly and yeah, that, yeah. she's like well before that before that you know did she have any illnesses and it's sort of like there is nothing before that. If your She's, daughter, sorry, if your daughter's murdered, that's all you've been murder. thinking about. You could give a crap about the, you know, oh, they yeah. had she, brain she had ankle. tonsils problems with her tonsils. So yeah. Health issues. And yeah, that thing about, well, she have health issues. She goes, she was, she had addiction problems. She goes, right. oh, in my world, health problems equal right. addiction issues. And right. I could see somebody making that argument, but they're totally different things. Yeah. This isn't cancer. Somebody becoming addicted to heroin is not a uh, heart disease necessarily, right. even though, even if the heart disease was brought on by you, or right. like if you have black lung disease, because you were, you were working a coal mine, right. that is, you brought it on yourself because of reasons you had to work, you know, or whatever, but a drug addiction is, yeah, I guess you can see how it's a health issue, but it just feels very different. And I, I don't know if that's, I think it was just a way of her trying to say, save face that I got it wrong by saying help. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Dad came through earlier with the daughter. So why didn't he come? Why didn't she come through this time? I right. wonder what all the things were that missed that uh, people who are watching would get, um, get the reading. I, I do know that lots of psychics will say that with these large group readings. In fact, they say it usually at the very beginning, if it doesn't happen for you, pay attention because there'll be health. There'll be other things that come through and, and uh, you know, it means something to you, but I trust me, I've been in a lot of these zoom meetings with these psychics. Yeah. And there's like people on the screen and I'm right there on the screen watching them. You know, my video is turned off, but because I'm a known person and I right. have name on my screen, but I'm there. But what happens is you see the people get up and they leave and other people's readings you'll have like like let's say there's 10 people there you know the person being read is there and then maybe two people else are there and they're watching but other people they turn off their video and you know they come back with a bowl of cereal or you know or they come back with a bowl bag of laundry or something they're not there the whole time they're not it doesn't feel like they're taking it as seriously. Like I better listen to every moment of this because there might be a message. My dad's trying to get through to me. Right. With that little drop that didn't make sense. They don't feel like it's important to them only until their reading is up, but not, not right. Else. I don't think they take it seriously. Why would you? I mean, you know, like you're there I for your person. It. You're there for your loved one. Right. I, yeah. If, if something had so, popped up, I'd want to say, oh, wait, 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 that's my dad. That's my dad. That's my dad. 
My turn. I was wondering what what people think. Like, if you're tied for one of the readings, right, and you and you're the one that you're gets the rejected, one that played back and forth, right. And so, and you're the one that's like, oh, well, no, the other one, the other person, I'm going to go with the other person. Like, what does that person feel? Like, I, I'd feel kind of weird about it. You know, it, like, it's, sort of it's like, painful. Thomas yeah. John says, here's what Thomas John says, and I've seen this also from others. He says, I'll, maybe I'll come back to you. They never do. And he never comes back to him. Never. Nope. I just listened to a whole series of readings he did in um, uh, Vegas when he was doing his show thomas john experience at, at caesar's palace the one that happened right uh, canceled because of covid he didn't notice that by the way um he was touting his tickets oh make sure you get the tickets for june and july i've got the screenshot tickets are now on sale for june and july for my show in vegas in 2020 he didn't notice that there was going to be a, 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 a pandemic little thing like the world closing down and i didn't notice that right um so anyway she says um he does it a lot. I've just been listening to it because all I have is the audio. So I've been listening to it and he does it repeatedly. And this is why you have to listen to multiple yeah. things. I mean, I could just do a reading and I could just analyze one reading, but to really understand a psychic, you have to listen to a series of them. It's just of readings. It's just too, you see the pattern and you mm -hmm. see, you see their methods and how they, how they approach it. It's, it, to really get an understanding of it I yeah i see that with fc videos yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I the bet. more you watch the more you watch the more you pick up the little tricks and you the different patterns for different people and i'm sure it's yeah, the same soma has, what you're doing. has definitely soma i say your last name Mac i think it's i don't know how to pronounce it i say macopedia but i don't know if that's right it's i would not like, attempt it <laughs> soma she's the person who teaches uh rapid prompting rapid method prompting method yeah and we've seen tons of her videos i've seen her so many times but yeah she has a method her her style is a certain way and so you can see how she approaches the new the new person she's trying to uh work with and it's like oh yeah well she always does that oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's all a, a pattern where she puts the person in the corner and turns the chair so the person can't get up and she ignores what they're actually saying you know just Anyway, we're getting off onto FC. Anyway, sorry. no, but it's sorry similar to like uh, you know the 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 techniques um within the different psychics or mediums or whatever are very similar, but each one has a slight interpretation, and some might some might be more skilled at at certain tricks and techniques than others. You know, like some are more believable than others because they're more practiced or more um, they're they're better at distraction like changing the subject when things are the answers are wrong or getting animated or whatever they do to to deflect attention away from the fact that they're not actually providing evidence they're just asking a lot of questions and hoping the the sitter will feed them the answers that they need yeah and and if you watch them over time too it's another another great way of watching like suzanne north which is a uh, another one of thomas john's she appears with thomas john a lot mm -hmm. um i have an article that i've got on skeptical inquiry if anybody wants to look at and i looked at suzanne north a couple of years ago and what she would do is i have an old reading that she did with mark she didn't do it with mark edward but mark edward was on a tv show and the tv show was looking at mediumship and they hired him to go into a mall and pretend to be a psychic medium and they brought people in and he gave them psychic readings and they filmed it and so they also interviewed suzanne northup who's been around ages she's been in this business and so the reading i was listening to was her talking about how she said something she's showing me a rose somebody's showing me a rose and that could be a flower a tattoo a, a actual rose it could be somebody's name it could be whatever she's showing me a rose and then she says also this line about well, somebody passed on and they, and they had a car and they, and the car got handed down to somebody else, the next generation, like somebody else got their car. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, that's all right, whatever. And then I listened to a reading she's doing with Thomas John on a zoom thing like this and darn it. If not the same damn things come up, she's showing me a rose, it's oh. a rose 
And then what's this about a car that's got, you know, he's died and now the car has been handed on down to the, to somebody. It was almost like verbatim. And there's probably 30, 40 years in between the two. So I'm wondering if I was to sit down and watch more of Suzanne's readings over time, if those same phrases and those same gimmicks and those same things come up, because like, you know, like, like, like Sylvia Brown and so on, they didn't predict that there would be this thing called the internet that we could pull up recordings of them years and years and years later. Right. A lot of these TV shows, you watched them. And if you didn't, weren't there at the time and they didn't rerun it, you would never see that show again. She never knew there would be something called Lexus Nexus. You could pull up transcripts my god or or recordings or she she didn't she didn't know that so now we have the benefit of being able to go back and look at content but they think people tell me susan people in the psychic community don't you have something better to do with your time they always they tell me that it's like really is this making you uncomfortable that i'm looking <laughs> into this why is it making you uncomfortable why do you care what i'm doing with my time right you know right. and it's like yeah it is time consuming sorry, I'm interested in this. I think it's an interesting phenomenon and, and I want to understand it. And I think understanding it helps people. So get over it. Right, get my over mom, it. you're not my mom. I'm gonna you're not my mom. You're not the I boss of me. Leave. You're not the boss of me. Anyway, okay, so let's go back I've, to the reading. You have something okay. else you want to say about this? Oh, uh, no, I was just, I was just saying that one of, one of the benefits of comparing too, is to show that um, these techniques don't change over time. They're the same over and over and over again and that's that's one of the signs of pseudoscience is that it doesn't change it you know like it if somebody points out to a psychic like or questions a technique or whatever that they're using they're not going to change it they're going to make an excuse and then they're just going to keep using it instead of adjusting the technique to to actually be more evidence-based like communication huh? <laughs> the same thing 30 years ago as they're doing now except now they're doing more of the the thing in the air, letter board in the air and oh yeah but that's still that was happening in facilitated community like the traditional too it's like okay, same stuff look up facilitated communication facilitated communication.org that's got that's a blog and and has resources and all that information but if you want a good summary of what facilitated communication is and rapid prompting method Go to Wikipedia, get that. And then once you have more understanding of what we're talking about, then you can go back and read the articles probably and it'll make a little more sense. But this is this is very closely tied in a lot of ways. It is very closely. One is people are alive, the other people are dead, but a lot of motivated listening, a lot of motivated sitters, except yep. that in your case of facilitated communication, it's motivated parents. Yes. Motivated um, facilitators. Right. I, I mean, I see it as both of them as coping strategies for really tough situations. Yeah. You know, it's it's sort of like it's 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 better to believe in something than to believe in nothing. Because you know? the awfulness of just death and nothing yeah. else, you will never, yeah. ever have contact with your loved ones again. That's yeah. a horrible. That's horrible for a lot of people. Just, yeah. And I can't even grasp it. If somebody was to die suddenly and that's the end of them. You will never see him again. And when you die, nothing will ever, boy, atheists, we got it bad. We don't have, we don't even have anything we can have, we could give them as <laughs> like, well, you become stardust. You could be worm food. <laughs> That's not very, it doesn't really have the same kind of thing of some, you'll get a new job when you're ready and right you go to all the funerals and weddings you want. You can hand out birthday cake. I mean, that's much more comforting. It is much more comfortable. But comfort you know what it's infantizing all these women that we've seen so far. It's making it's like you guys are 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 juvenile. You're just children. So I'm gonna have to give you some easy thing because of course you can't possibly deal with the grief and, and um right. the loss. It's like right. I'm gonna give you some easily easy solution that it's gonna be all okay. They're there, good girl. Don't be a. It'll be okay. Don't think about it too much. You'll be with your loved one, and he's he's watching over you right now. Here, watch. Here's a coin. I mean, yeah. that's that to me. It's like, it is. It's like saying, placating people. Yeah. But the yeah. hard part is you got to deal with your grief. You have to come to a realization that your child has died, either by their own bad actions or right. genetics 
or accident or illness or whatever, they're dead. It's horrible. It's gut-wrenching horrible. I wouldn't want to have to experience it. I, 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 I hope, is there something we could do to help it so that less people will do this? die of that method or whatever you know can, right. how can we help out society to keep that from happening to my to other children can we put up street lights that might might help or can we lower this people speeding up and down the streets or can we figure out brain cancer for children i mean can, how can we actually right. help right to make a difference but to talking pretending to talk to these people is just this is a this is a very lucrative thing what was it we were saying about Oh, this Kelly person, she's got a crew. She's going to Egypt in February of 2024 with another medium. I was forgot to mention that. I want to go to Egypt and have a bunch of my friends or people show up and get paid for it. Right. There's a lot of money in this, you guys. This isn't easy. Yeah. From my little list. Yeah. There's There's a lot of money in this and it's cash. A lot of it which means I think the IRS should be looking into it. <laughs> Maybe some district attorneys too, because I doubt they're reporting their entire income. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay. You're, you're a trooper. We got? Now you're just holding out, Janice. You're doing great. So, <laughs> it's so nice yeah, to find okay, somebody else who wants to do this. I have time for another reading. So I'm going to um, bring through somebody else here. Um, okay. So as I connect, <laughs> I feel like they're all going me, me, me in spirit. Um, <laughs> so I'm just trying to like see who's going to come through the strongest. But as I connect, I do feel that I have got, um, well, this is an interesting feeling. I feel like I've got a woman that's coming through. But for the relationship, I'm a little bit, um, hmm. I feel like this could be an aunt, somebody's aunt. I feel like she could be the life of the party. She was a lot of fun. She was kind of like the fun aunt. Um, and I feel like this would be your mother's sister. Uh, I feel like her passing was traumatic. There was something traumatic about her passing. I also feel like she was somebody who was not always lucky in love, meaning she had a broken picker. She didn't always pick the best guys. Um, that's what she tells me. Um, definitely though, she was a lot of fun, very charismatic, very outgoing, very loving and compassionate and just a lot of, um, a lot of feelings with this woman, a lot of like just big energy. Can anybody understand somebody who was an aunt or like an aunt in spirit? This could, maybe if it's not your actual aunt, it could be like mother's best friend and you grew up with her, but definitely that's somebody, okay, Louise Ken and Shelby Ken. Okay. So, um, and so let me work with you real quick, Shelby, and see what you understand. And Louise, I'm going to have you come on after. So Shelby, if you could unmute yourself, um, if they'll let you. Hi. Sure. You understand Hi. the aunt, or is this like a mother's best friend kind of feeling? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On my phone. So, um, I can understand aunt, mom, sister. Okay, and you understand this personality, this like beautiful, fun, vibrant lady. Yes. And not lucky in love, always picking the wrong guys. <laughs> well, um, that's the only part that I can. Um, okay. She was married. Okay, I don't tell me too much. Don't tell okay. me too much. So okay. then let me see what you understand, Luis. Um, or am I saying that wrong? Is it Lewis? Sorry. Lewis. Lewis. That's okay. I names. That's Apologize. okay. Apologize. Spirit gets mad at me all the time. Um, <laughs> so you what do you, do you understand the aunt and the personality? So I do. Um, I, I understand everything. It's just that it was my father's sister, not my mom's. Okay. I could be on the wrong side. And I, yeah. that's fine. That happens on occasion. They come in on my the other side. But you would have understand not lucky in love. Absolutely, yeah. So if she's because she's coming in on mom's side, would you understand your mom and her being really close? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's why she, she liked your mom a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and and she's kind of the fun aunt. That's what she's telling me. She's like, I was the yes. fun aunt. They loved oh me. The God. kids love me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and she's just and you understand a tragic passing. Yeah, very much. Yeah, and so she's like, I'm sorry to the family. Um, but I feel like her passing, I don't always see the passing. 
She's telling me she doesn't want to talk about it, but it was tra it's traumatic, she says. Yeah, it was. Yeah. She wants everybody to know I'm okay. I'm at peace. She loves the family. Now, are there questions about her passing, though? Unanswered questions? Or no? Um, or were no, there? not too much. It's just, yeah, there, there was right when in it happened. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Because she's like, in the beginning, there was a lot of confusion. She makes me feel like about it all. Yeah, yes. Confusion. So yeah. um, she just tells me, you know, she loved her family. She loved life. Uh, but I feel like things weren't always easy for her because um, she big had time. such a big heart and she gave so much, but it didn't always get reciprocated, especially in love. And you're so right. Like you are so right. Yeah. So she's like, um, I also feel like she's like, sometimes I felt like I could be a burden to the family because of my ish my problems. Oh my God. Yes. You're so right. <laughs> yes. And she's like, I know now I wasn't, but she's like, I realized now I wasn't, but my mind, the way it thought, that's what I was seeing. And I wasn't thinking clearly and I wasn't using good judgment when it came to the people I surrounded myself with. Do you understand this? Yeah, for sure. So it's she crazy. sends so much love to your mom because your mom's still here, right? Yeah. She sends so much love to your mom, to your dad. Now, are your mom and dad still married? Yes. Because I feel like um, if she, is this your dad's sister, was she older than him? Uh, she was younger, but I don't know. He's just kind of, he's a hard to love guy. So <laughs> <laughs> she loves him, but I feel like she was always trying to give him advice. That's why I was asking if she was older. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense actually. Okay. Yeah. She's like, I always was having to tell him what, how to do things. Like he wasn't, she's like, she's like, my brother wasn't always like, um, was it like aware of social cues? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she's teasing him Big still. Time. I feel like she liked to tease her brother. She'd like to have a good time. Um, <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. But you know, he's really smart. She keeps saying my brother was really smart. So your dad must be very smart. Yeah. And, and yeah. she's like, and she's like, you're very smart. And you're not her only nephew. She has like other nieces and nephews. I yeah, think. huge family. Yeah. And she just loved all the kids, but she didn't have any of her own, or did she? She makes me feel like that's she really had, funny because she only was had like one. Okay. Exactly. But you're right. That's oh my god. Like that's totally her she's essence. Like, was that everybody we was to like her. my kid. Yeah, yes. she, that's how she felt as yeah. an auntie. Um, and I feel like yeah. she never forgot birthdays or things like that. And, and Absolutely. Celebrations and graduations, like they were, she loved all that stuff. She loved to yeah. buy you guys gifts and she always bought you gifts yes. that you would love because she put a lot of thought yeah. into it, you know? She, she paid, did. She paid a lot of attention to, you know, what you liked, what your passions were. And that's just who she was. So she's like, I'm yeah. still around you. I still love you. And you must be very sensitive because she's like, you feel me all the time. She keeps saying I you're did. feeling her all the time. And she's come to visit you several times in dreams. Do you understand this? I, I do. I and do. she gives you messages and you give them to your mom. Is that right? Yes. And yeah, dad. I totally do. Yeah. yeah. She's like, she's like, yep, he's got that gift and I can connect with him so easily. He's a special kid. So she just loves you so much. And I know you're not a kid, but she's calling you a kid, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I call everybody a kid that's under under forty. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but wow. she's definitely, you know, um, such a huge spirit, such a huge energy. Um, Big time. Is there an S name connected to her? I keep seeing the letter S. Um, oh, that's fine. I don't always get yeah, names. I just keep seeing S, S, and it could be like her last name, maybe. I don't know. Um, her ex-husband actually was Steve. Oh, okay. And were they close? Well, they, they because of the, the one son. Yeah. They, they still talked. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know. They, they were close though. They were actually very friendly. I think of, that's what yeah. she's talking about. So then I feel like she's sending love to him and the son, because I feel like that maybe makes sense. the son is having a, a difficult time right lately. And I feel like it's he been is. a while since she passed. It has. But, but it must be coming up on an anniversary or a birthday or something of sorts. So we just, just passed hers. Yeah. And so she's like, it's been a difficult time for my son and his dad. They're they're, Yeah. So she's yeah, sending a lot, a lot of love to them. Okay. Yeah. That love. makes a lot of sense. And thank I feel like she you. loves how everybody honors her every year and they never forget her. So oh, she's like thanking wow. you guys for that. Okay. I feel like no matter what you guys always think of her and you always do something, even if it's little, but she loves that you always think of her every year, everybody. Wow. Yeah, that that's we do. That makes sense. Wow. That's so just awesome. take all the love and she sends it to everybody in the family and 
um, she keeps saying you're so special. You're so special. Wow. So I don't know if you know thank that, you but so she's much. telling you that. All right. Thank you, Louis. I'm going to leave you. you with that. <laughs> I love this guy. He's like so motivated. Yeah. Motivated. Yeah. And, and that's another thing to mention is that, especially since they talk about this piggybacking stuff, that if the connection is broken, like if he doesn't relate to everything, or if he says that sort of fits, she could break that connection and say, not you, I'm moving on to somebody else easily. So they, so they're more likely to, they're more, the sitter is more motivated than you would realize to make sure they kind of help and agree so that, yeah, that is right. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember her giving me a really good Christmas present. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're kind of right. You know, so that they do that to kind of keep the reading with them. It's, it's, I call right. it motivated, motivated listening, motivated sitters. Yes. Would yeah. You... Because the, she was saying, oh, it's a, 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 the mother's sister. She was really clear about that. And he's like, oh, that was clear. I wrote that down. It was the, it oh, was my father's sister. Oh, well, you know, it was like, and then what else she got wrong? Um, oh, I noticed in this one too, that it, she didn't want to talk about the passing. It was oh, too yeah, I, can, I can hear you psychically going, what? <laughs> what? Well, I'm, I always wonder if it's too traumatic for the person who died or too traumatic for the They're dead. Why would it be behind. traumatic for him? Why would they be, <laughs> if, why would that be a problem? I'm dead already. How could how could it be a problem for me? I would be telling everything. Of course, <laughs> they have some sort of internal, um, you know, issue with that. I don't know. Like they're they're they died traumatically, so they don't want to talk about how they died. How would they Why? even know how they died? Well, they should know, but they were there. Well, I mean, you know, is there consciousness when you? If you were depends you on which medium you're asking, and if if whatever you say would make sense or if it wouldn't. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. If, if it fits, then it fits. If it doesn't, like, fit, then it doesn't fit. Right. I liked when she, uh, and the dad sister. The dad sister was older than him. No, she was younger. Oh, like, but she gave advice. There were so many. Yeah, there she was gave so many advice, and therefore that's why I got confused because she gave advice. I know that was like, oh, give me a break, you cop out, cop out, because she wouldn't have said said that if it hadn't been, if she had been right, she wouldn't have said, oh yeah, well she gives them a lot of advice. That's why I think she's the older sister. No, right. She just said that because she had to get out of the situation that she got wrong. Yeah. She didn't have any oh, kids no. of her own, or did she? Oh, and he says, "Oh, she had one." Oh, right, right, right. right. That's what she's. That's right. That's what she's telling me now. <laughs> Is there an S name? Hmm. And last. Name. And she said last name. And he says Steve. There, and he said Steve. And she's like, "Oh, that must be it." And she says, "Here's what I got down." Uh, he says that's her ex husband, and she says, "Were they close?" <laughs> it was They're her exes. husband. It was her <laughs> husband. Of course they were close. Just because they're not, you know, maybe not close now. But what a stupid thing to say. Were they close? They had kids, right? So what? they must have been they had close one. at least. They must have gotten close at least once. Well, it could have been some sort of artificial thing. But well, it, it's yes. still like, really? <laughs> An S name? Uh, An S name. Snake. Uh, cistern. Uh sandwich it's just dumb spirit airlines that's it we were on a spirit airline flight once before um maybe we went to a place that was started with an s we our favorite restaurant we used to go to was called <laughs> stivetto's we to, I mean, come on yeah really? you see these people and you're hearing and you're feeling these people and they can't give you a name, a right. real name. Right. They throw out a letter of the alphabet. What is it again? She feels an S or does this S appear in front of the person? Like, like here's the figure of the person and here's the S like being drawn on. Right. It's like they're, it's like bad TV or something. Okay. <laughs> bad TV. Traumatic I'm death. Wondering, traumatic death. How is it? What would be a traumatic death? Janice, give me a traumatic death. 
Yeah. It's like jumping out of an airplane or like, pushing out of an air. Uh, or any well, a car crash or a murder, for example, and another murder. Um, you yeah. know, and and she has the people apologize for, like she said that the 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 um daughter that got murdered apologized, and this traumatic death here apologized. And it's sort of like, what do they have to apologize for? Well, like, traumatic. one got murdered. <laughs> Sorry. Like, she couldn't help that. And then this one had some sort of traumatic um, I, I'm wondering ending that she didn't want to talk about. Like, so oh, if it's that traumatic, well. Kelly just... doesn't know. So, I mean, <laughs> that's why they don't want to talk about it. Suicide. But... I mean, did she die of suicide? He, did, he wasn't saying, he wasn't giving any indication like that it. she died of suicide. Traumatic could mean many things. And I was thinking, because he said that it was confusing at first. Right. That means. And it got cleared up afterwards. Okay, right. so I'm thinking of somebody whose parents, and I know this because it's not somebody, I mean, it's it's known. Parents uh, were found in their living room dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh. So would that be right. traumatic? Because they just fell asleep and they went to sleep. Right. And the confusion was when the paramedics and all that came in, you can't smell right oxide so right they came in so there probably was some confusion your parents are dead we need to figure out what's going on you know the, yeah. the first thing is to call your parents are dead and right. the ambulance comes and takes them out and then there's probably a period of time before they know it's mo carbon monoxide poisoning right because you know the paramedics are there they're taking people in and out you know the doors are open and stuff like that and right. possibly they say, well, this is a mysterious circumstance, so maybe we should check for carbon monoxide poisoning, maybe. And they some bring in somebody and they test it. So it takes uh, hours or a day or two before they uh -huh. know. So that would be confusion. Would that right. be considered traumatic? Right. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking too. Me, like you're it, hearing about it because I didn't know that my right. parents, they weren't sick or anything. Right, because it took them several days to figure out what was going on I've i was thinking too of like um people who break their hip and they fall down the stairs you don't know if they were you know like if that was an accident or if that was a you know like a foul play or anything like anything that would take a Let few me days the christy mysteries for you young lady <laughs> this little right. trip wire across the um yeah hey. so dramatic is just a word it like i said it's if I got a call at work saying your parents are dead. We don't know what killed them, but they were they were in their chairs and they're dead. Right. I would be traumatized. Right, you would feel traumatic, and I'd be, feel traumatic for the rest of my life, thinking that even after I found out that it was carbon monoxide, thinking that carbon monoxide is going to be in the house, or right. my children are going to move somewhere and there's going to be carbon monoxide there, or I I would I think I I would have a I would have everybody I loved carry around some sort of portable carbon monoxide thing for the rest of my attorney i'd be so traumatized right. about that could about i that. could i have sent them new batteries for the yeah for the for the carbon monoxide detector that didn't that failed and and he said for the first okay so first thing i want to say is she she starts off with this woman me 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 so again here's this person coming through it's like they're taking turns are they taking turns are they is there like pick a number in the spirit world and you grab a little number and calling spirit number or whatever it's your turn and she's like me 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 my turn i'm number that's I, it doesn't make any sense to me no um, are they like duking it out for a spot or what mine, mine. yeah and if they're not physically a form how would they so the first woman <laughs> came you up can't elbow somebody if, <laughs> if you don't have any elbow arm wrestle you with my non-arm uh traumatic death okay so she says me 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 woman aunt fun aunt mother sister traumatic death picked bad men big energy she might not be your aunt she might be like an aunt like an right mother two that much information two people out of the possibly 30 people here said that was yeah. mine yeah and and the first one came in and said um that is everything there except that she she fit every one of those things that she was a fun aunt her mother sister a traumatic death a big energy 
but she was a long time married a long time right so so it's so vague that two people out of these 30 hit almost everything until it gets to lewis and it's interesting spirit always gets mad at me spirit is that like god or what is gets mad at you i mean why would they get mad at you because you can't pronounce this person's name i don't it's not a all oh. like she just read it that's all like why would that why would that make anybody mad the, yeah, the spirit guy spirit. that she said is her name his name wrong wasn't even mad yeah, so spirit why doesn't spirit get mad, mad at murder and all that but this <laughs> okay um your father's side that's kind of a fault and you see how she got out of that when she was wrong she yeah says, it was your father's sister oh but she really liked your mom right right i got out of that one she's a she's a quick thinker isn't she i think they, these psyches are very practiced I yeah think a lot of the stuff comes out without them even really thinking about it well i'm assuming that like especially with you know the quote-unquote quick readings i'm i'm not so sure that even in a long reading it would be much different but in these quick readings you're going to get the same kind of um life issues that come up over and over and over and over and over again so if you've got a scenario there might be some minor differences and like the details of people's stories but that's why she says don't tell me the details i just want to know these generalities so i can yeah. i can fit it i can fit it to something i've got a formula i've already got in my head well, i'm sure i could i could guarantee you that these uh this goes on constantly where they start out at the beginning i'm getting an older mother father uh women figure that could be your mother blah 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 and they do a lot of the mother side father side and then if they it's a 50 50 chance right so right. um if you get it wrong half the time then i bet that answer is very it has been right off her lips multiple times oh but she was very close to the other side of the family she was friends right. with them already right that's why oh, okay that's why i'm getting that right I'm sure, like you said, it's it's her spiel, her thing. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't want to talk about her passing, even though that's right. probably the most interesting thing. Yes. Yeah, tell me, tell me more. Tell me more about that. That would have been something I'm sure he wanted to know about. Especially uh, if it was traumatic, you would think they would want to clear the issue up, but I don't know. Seriously, yeah. I mean, would... if they were really there to comfort the, the living, then why wouldn't they say, you know, it was traumatic? But it's really, you could have been standing right next to me and it wouldn't have done any good because my heart just gave out. You know, it's like, even if a doctor was there, it wouldn't have mattered because it just. The inter the other thing that he mentioned that's kind of lost in this whole thing. He says, she said something to him, uh, the wrong age for sim siblings. She wanted to give advice to her brother and her brother was very intelligent again with the platitudes of praising everybody and mm. then he says i had a have a huge family and i thought well that's just much more opportunities for getting a hit mm -hmm. somebody's going to hit you're going to get a reading because you have a large um world to, to pull from i have almost mm. no family i have very that's true. family members so yeah so i would be sitting here for for like a very long time because i'd be like oh, that doesn't apply to me no, that's not mine no that's not mine either that's not mine either uh, but he but he's got tons of family members especially Aunts, uncles right? nephews cousins he probably has you know like he talks Brand about them, a huge because i think he says huge doesn't he he does he says the word huge i wrote yeah. it because yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It. I was spelled the word huge yeah so i see it uh and then he said something she says well did she have did she say she had kids or she he said she only had one kid right she didn't have any kids of her own or did she he said she she had only one and but you're right because i think she, i think the psych uh, kelly said something like um but she really loved kids Everybody and he said her kid. it's funny she, he 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 said it's funny she only had one but you're right like that she liked kids or whatever like so she'd already even before he had answered really she had moved on to the next subject and to him and his head that was probably a hit yep and that she visits you in dreams, which is completely <laughs> common. In fact, you know, it's funny too, Janice, last night when I, I uh, this morning I woke up and I was partly awake. 
I swear I heard my partner's voice, who's living, very much living. And he wasn't in the room with me at the time. And I thought, I woke up and I felt like I looked around and I was just like, that so clearly was his voice. It wasn't, it wasn't him. I almost said, what, what did you want? But man, it was just like as clear as, as I, I recognize, but they, because you hear their voices, you hear them in dreams. It's common to dream about people. Yeah. It's not, it would be more calm. It would be more uncommon to not dream about them. Yeah. And he said in the end, Kelly says, you only think about her, you think about her once a year and she really appreciates that. <laughs> you only think about her once a year. She was your fun aunt. She had a traumatic death. He's like, yeah. Only on her birthday. She does, He doesn't think, did, they, did she die on her birthday? Because, you know, like, I would think at least that you would think about her twice a year, like once on her birthday and once on the day she died, maybe. Well, this is the fun aunt. This is the fun aunt. She's like a mother to all of them. She oh, right. buys him the best presents, right? She right. always remembers the birthdays. She had a traumatic death. Um, and there were some questions about her passing at the beginning and that she was always teasing the father, which is their siblings. Of course, they're always teasing. My God, it's so stupid. They say these things that are so vague and as if it's like really clever. And uh, she was very close to your mom and on and on and on. She was like an aunt. Uh, well, she was an aunt, all these things, but you only think about her once a year. Your favorite aunt who always right. buys the best presents. I would think, well, now, now I'm thinking birthday, your own birthday, her birthday, Christmas, right? Yeah, all the holidays that you celebrated together. Right. Um, the day she died. So that's like five or whatever, you know, or six or seven. And other things we you, call like Thanksgiving. Years. You know, like Thanksgiving like, or you seen a carbon monoxide. <laughs> I'm going back to the carbon monoxide. I, I, we don't know that's true, but that uh, it just came to my mind. But like whatever it is, it triggers whatever that traumatic death would be. Right. If it if it occurs somewhere like a, I don't know, a car crash or falling down the stairs, you know, it, it, maybe if you were at the top of the stairs and you look down, you might think to yourself, oh, Aunt Lily, sing. Again, where's the names? Where there's no names, S name. Right. An S last name. And he said Steve. Maybe her last and name. She Steve. said, right, you're right. Is maybe her name the last name is Stevens? Maybe. Or the person? Her ex That's, not, that's not what he said though. No. She was close to really close. He could have he was so motivated though. She could have said he's been here for three hours. He's been wondering when it's finally gonna be somebody his turn. Right. He could have said her skin was purple and he would have said, Yes. You know what? I remember that. She yeah. They're... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're getting towards the end, you guys. Okay. I think there's two more readings, so we can do this. Yeah. Do this. Hang in there, people. Yeah. I know you've been I with us so far, people. You've been us with us this long. You might as well find out what Kelly finally has to say for Right. Herself. And don't forget to look at your notes while you're distracting yeah, people and, by and rubbing don't your hands. To like this video, leave comments, share it, subscribe, hit the little bell, all that, all that stuff. Please do that. Time, I think um Kelly think Lauren's coming on in 15 minutes. If you want to do one more, or if you want oh, to stop, yeah. it's up to you. I can do one more. I'd You're just to. so full of energy. and I know. And... It's been a great day. I'm loving it. Awesome. They're all just coming through. So I'll, I've got another one. Um, okay. All right. So um, hmm. I do have a mother and a father that step through together. I feel that they lived a long time. I want to make them in their like 80s, maybe older when they both passed. I do feel like they passed very close to each other. Um, and I feel like the your mother would have passed first and father shortly after. Um, and I also feel like I'm seeing that they lived somewhere in a, a, a is this right the word, rural area where the houses aren't right on top of each other. There's actually some land and maybe some animals and things like that, like out in the country. 
I feel like they would have lived in a place like this. Um, and, and I feel like they were very independent. They took care of themselves to the very end, I feel, or very close to the end. Um, they were quite healthy for the most part of their life, other than, you know, um, getting older, there are things that happen that normally happen to everybody. There's not much we can do about it. But I feel like other than those things, they, they took pretty good care of themselves. They, they took care of things around the house. They were pretty strong in that sense. You know, they did their best. And uh, I feel like they, they loved each other and they would have been married for like a long time, 60 years. That's what I feel. Can anybody understand a mother and father in spirit like this? And, and if I'm wrong about who passed first, that's okay. I just know they were very close to each other when they passed. I feel like the passings were very close um, within a year or two. Can anybody understand uh, this? Okay, so uh, you can understand that. Is it Alan um, Aland? Okay, um, can you unmute yourself? Thanks, hi. How do I say your name? I'm sorry. Alan. Alan, okay. And you understand all of this, part of it, some of it, what do you understand? Most of it. Okay. Do you understand the rural area? That one's the, the only one that's, uh, they used to go out in their RV and live in the woods. Okay. So maybe that's it. But did you ever live in a rural, like an area ever growing we up? grew or up did... in the suburbs with, on a big piece of property. With there's like the houses aren't right on top of each other. And did you have a lot of animals? No, just dogs and cats. And... I don't know. Let me think. Um, let me ask you another question here. Do you understand the love that they had and how they were married for a very long time? Yes. And and I feel like you're not the only child. There's like, I feel like we have a big family. I have two sisters. Okay. Um, so I've already, I'm just thinking, I'm not sure I'm with you yet, but I'm not sure I'm not either. So I want to just keep working with you. Okay. Um, let me see this. So nobody else can understand this, but Joyce is saying her grandpa, but I really feel like this is mom and dad, somebody. So I do feel like I'm with you because I know it's like mom and dad and you're the only one so far. And I'm just going to work with spirit. I could have a couple things off and that happens. So would you understand your mom was, um, a very strong lady and both your parents were kind of strong and strong willed. They kind of were going to do, take care of things and independent. Definitely. Um, and I feel like your mother, like, and your dad, they worked around the house, they took care of the yard, like all of this was almost the very end. Yes. They were just like, nobody, like we can do this ourselves. <laughs> and I do feel like your mom loved to have the family over. And when I say big family, she's showing me, you're saying there's three of you, right? So there must be more grandkids then. Cause yeah. I feel like when you add the grandkids and the wives, that's the big family she's talking about. And she loved that. Cause I feel like she loved to have everybody at her house and she loved to entertain. Do you understand that? The family? Definitely. Okay. And um, she's very sweet. I feel like your mom can be very sweet, but she's also, I feel like funny. She likes to tell jokes or she's just silly. There's like, she has a good sense of humor. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And um, <laughs> there's something about your mom though. I feel she's coming through really strong. So if I'm with your mom, I, I do feel like she was a bit of a character. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I, that's how I know she's a character. Um, definitely, you know, she's just funny. I just like her. She was intelligent. Yes. Very intelligent. I feel like self-taught college. I don't know, but very smart. She had a lot of knowledge. Yes. And um, I feel like the way she raised you wasn't traditional. Is that right? Mm, Maybe uh, right. I, I don't think so, but okay, that's, that's we have to judge that. Yeah, well, maybe I'm, I've got that wrong, but I feel like she was a pretty um, she was pretty open with you guys. Like she let you guys talk to her or share things with her. Like she yeah. was open that you could talk to her about anything, pretty and much. she didn't always get mad. Right. When you made mistakes or did things, maybe like some parents would like ground you for. She would talk it out with you. Yes. Which wasn't like normal parenting back then. <laughs> she'd help hide it from my dad. What? She'd help hide that from my dad. Yeah. <laughs> she's funny. Yeah, that's what she's telling me. But she's like, they were all good kids. She's like, that you know, they didn't need to be in trouble. They were all good kids. So she just loved you guys so much. 
Um, and she, she still does. And your sisters are still here, right? Yep. Yeah. Cause I feel like she's just loves watching the families and, and everybody's families, like how they grew and just what's going on. And has it been a while? I feel like since your parents passed like over 10 years or like four, four years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. It seems longer. That's fine. Um, I, I could be off on that, but definitely, um, they both just come through with so much love and they pass pretty close to each other. Is that right? Well, yeah. Like 11 days. Oh, that's really close. Thank you. And, and was it your mother first, then your father? Yes. And did they get to pass in their own home? Cause that's what I feel like they wanted. Um, my mom did and okay. um, my dad didn't. Okay. She was he happy about it, but he yeah. wanted to. Yeah. But they were fine with all that. And I do feel like there's been a lot of changes you know, in the family since they passed. I feel like a lot of things have changed. I don't know if that makes sense. It but does. I feel like I wanna acknowledge the big changes and, and the decisions that had to be made. So I feel like there were some decisions that had to be made about their, their estate. Is that correct? Yes. So they're okay, they're happy with those decisions because they make me feel like even though they were independent and strong, they didn't necessarily prepare their will properly or something. Uh, is that right? It wasn't the will, but there were some things that were really left too yeah. open. That's what they're saying. And so they're like, we didn't think of everything. And so we, we understand the, the, the decisions that had to be made. So th they're <laughs> fine with all of that. So they just want you to know that they just want everybody to be happy and, and to have peace. And I feel like since they passed that you guys have not been as close as you used to the family. Is that right? Right. So I feel like they're kind of saying like they know that and they'd like to see you guys closer, but they understand is what they're saying. We started trying this summer. Yeah. So I feel like they're helping from the other side. How's that? I believe that they're, they're trying to bring it because family's important to them and to you guys they're saying. So yeah. a lot of, a lot of love, a lot of healing, know that they are connecting and they are there to help you from the other side. So don't forget, you know, we have our angels, we have our guides, we have, you know, all of that, right. But we can also call upon our own loved ones to help us because they know us best. Right. So don't forget that because they're like, we're always here and we'll do our best from the other side. You know, they do have a little power. <laughs> You'll be surprised sometimes at some of the, I call miracles that spirit pulls from the other side. Okay. So, okay. um, just don't forget that they keep saying, cause they are strong people and they're still strong from the other side. They love you guys all so much. They just send all the love in the world, all the love in the world. Is it your anniversary, your wedding anniversary? Mm, no. Is it theirs? No. I feel like I want to say happy anniversary to somebody. <laughs> so I don't know what that's about. I don't know. Maybe it's my nephew. I don't know his anniversary. Okay. Well, I'm just going to leave it. So they're saying happy anniversary. I don't know what that's about. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. That was really clear and loud. Okay. <laughs> so they're wishing that. Well, oh, happy anniversary to you, Cindy. <laughs> Somebody's got an anniversary coming up. Um, I am just going to leave you with that and just know that they're very much around you. Okay. Okay. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. All right. Tracy. Kelly, that was absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a joy to read for everybody today. And I loved spirit. They just really showed up. And I will include your website and um, with the recording, if there's anything you want to go ahead and say about yourself. I'll end that there. And then if we have to sum up, we'll, let, we'll see what she has to say about her website. Because you and I both done a little digging in here right so um i think she should have stopped with lewis <laughs> there was so many wrong like, like misses in this particular reading like she i think she's tired because i'm exhausted <laughs> <laughs> right right she she said um it's somebody who lives in a rural setting and he said no it's the suburbs well wait there were two people right thought this was her reading so it was so vague at the beginning that two people were vying for no no that's mine no that's mine no that's mine no that's mine but he could 
she was she didn't even want to have him right because it wasn't connecting to the things she had said that was one of the most important things that she lived in a rural area a lot of property they had animals uh, do-it-yourselfers took good care of her i thought you're know, like farmers you know right like that's that. what i was thinking too and yeah. she she's like well uh, I, nobody else is saying that they could take this so i'll just have to go with you but wait let me go see if maybe somebody else anybody else take this because, anybody come on somebody somebody's gonna have this and then it comes <laughs> back it was like she's like all right i'll take you can you give me a reason why you're why, why it's not that it's a hell um farm <laughs> oh well they had an rv and they right we had cats and dogs she said dogs. and she had that out too because she said well did you have animals and he's like well not really just cats and dogs but she could have gone with that she could have said and you had animals and he said yeah like cats and dogs she said yes exactly but she didn't she was like oh no that's not what i was talking about she no, was talking, she, really talking about a farm or something she totally wanted someone else to like yeah she should she should have ended with the last one this one was kind of yeah. i think she's really tired out in love for years okay so this thing about they're in love for years they had a marriage it was over 60 years mm -hmm. and then she starts saying that they were healthy most of their lives i'm thinking well if you made it to 60 years old uh 60 plus years and married to the same person you probably have had a healthy life yeah otherwise you would have been dead sooner yeah a big family very big family big family two sisters yeah oh he said he I said two sisters all the others right oh, oh well i gotta count everybody how many dogs the wives and the grandchildren made it a big family he's like no uh i could have a couple things off she said yeah no kidding yeah you those, think those things she was off were for other people who were watching right right were they dead were they've been dead for a very long time like 10 years yeah 10 years and there was actually four he said four and they they were they had died with um within a year or two of each other 11 days well, they she said died. They died close together did she actually say a year i don't remember hearing that yeah she did at the beginning i'm i'm right um um they died within a year or two of each other at the beginning she said and She's then got a problem with you know there oh did they die did they pass at home because they wanted to right the dad the mother did but the oh, dad doesn't? wanted to oh no i can't wait to go die at a hospital <laughs> or nursing home or rehab facility I'm or hoping putin's gonna push me out of a window <laughs> right i'm not really stuck on that because that's on my mind right now it's like give right me a break. no i know it's horrible Ugh. uh yeah i think they've got a uh, website now of all the all the accidental people falling out of all the accidental generals and stuff that happened to accidentally die yeah that opposed to him okay there's been a lot of changes in the family and they want to acknowledge the changes in the family yeah it's been four years uh yeah i think they probably had to sell the property or, or whatever there's lots of changes she said i feel like there had to be decisions made about their estate no you think what then then she said well it has something to do with the will and he's like no it wasn't the will there was decisions that were open now here's what i thought she says well the family hasn't been quite as close as it has before and mm -hmm. and i picked up on that too especially when he started she was talking about the will. I have the feeling there's a little drama going on in that family. And right. that, that this large estate that was in a city, he said it was, right. it was in the city and it was a large piece of property. Yeah. Somebody probably was willed it or um, somebody was given more control or or something like that. And there's bad blood amongst the family. Yeah, the there's family members kids. are throwing a buggy. I yeah. bet you one of those sisters was very close and took care of the, the parents, you know, and she probably ended up getting more um, out of the estate than the other sister and brother or the other two sisters took care and he didn't. I have a feeling that's what's going on. And that's why they're not as close as they were before. And mm -hmm. how he said, we're going to have to try to start doing that. And um, 
Uh, yeah, she's like, oh, you got to fix the failure. And then she's like, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> not as close as before. He says, well, we're, we're trying this summer. She's, yeah. yeah, that's what she wants. They want you to be close again. Yeah. I That's what I'm thinking. Is there some kind of drama going on? And they, yeah. And somebody's not happy about, about that. Yeah. Hey, happy anniversary, Janet. Yeah, she's like, no. <laughs> she's saying it loud and clear. Yeah, I know. I love it at the end. She's like, well, I could be wrong, but I'm not. So happy somebody anniversary. Somebody on the chat goes, I know, happy it's anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> Those things about birthdays and anniversaries coming up always is, it's it intrigues me because again, it's like there's the anniversary day and then there's a three, two or three weeks after the anniversary and the two or three weeks before the anniversary that would be considered a kind of a hit if somebody said, yeah, I'm getting something about an anniversary coming up. Right. Oh, well, it just happened a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. There's, there's or, a period of time I'm planning that, one. Yeah. Well, no, we're in the, we just the bought the party favors. About. I've had yeah. many. And so, yeah. so you've got this like almost four four weeks or so, maybe even five. I or six think you're right. That could fit in that little window of just about to happen or just happened or right. today and then right. you only got 12 months and almost a whole month of it could be relevant and you've got how many people's anniversaries could that apply to their anniversary um his his anniversary a family member's anniversary an anniversary of a death I don't know if she'd say happy anniversary. Mm. anniversary no, but like that. when when did the summit take place? Because if it was in June, oh. I would say that there's oh, lots of they anniversaries made up by in now. June. You're right. They should be made up by now. Like in the summer. <laughs> right. Right. No, I mean, but the anniversaries probably would, I don't know, uh, you know, like early in June and then through the summer and then September you know whatever it's like the I, I would think if it was in the winter maybe oh, not this happened on september 18th okay so september is a great month to get married well well maybe in maine <laughs> in maine it is because well, it's like it's not too hot it's beautiful California, it's, anytime is a good time to get married here sorry but we don't have weather. right right we well have weather here different. Yeah, they, but but in Maine, you you're not gonna well unless you really like the winter, you're not you're more you're less likely to get married in the winter. I think in Maine than yeah, like the fall is summer. beautiful here, right? Well, so he says this summer we're going to try to work on that. Well, that's a whole year from where he's at now, unless he can right. do September right. summer. <laughs> that's funny. We will in summer. Uh, yeah. we're gonna we're going to do that in the summer. My grandma, I had a relative that used to say by and by, like, can we can we go to the store and get, you know, candy bars? She said by and by it never would happen. So I think he's saying eh, next summer we're gonna do it. And he's like, bye no. and by. It means no, it's never ever we'll gonna see. happen. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll see. We'll keep it in mind. I think one of my kids finally called me on that one day and I stopped using it. That means <laughs> no. That means no. no. That means no uh okay well maybe i should stop saying okay so what else do i have written down here um i think that's all i have in those notes there were a lot of fails in this one i thought this was it she should have stopped at lewis i think because he was so motivated and excited about you know like anything that she said then that would have been you know i think she was trying to go out on a well she had 15 minutes left in the thing she very well like she couldn't have stopped really and she's like no no the wedding anniversary, I think she threw out there as a way of saying, like, at the last minute, like, oh, right, it was a wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was. How could you possibly have known? I, th I thought that would have been a big hit. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what hit. Right. right. And if it had hit, it would have been phenomenal. But right. it didn't hit, and it so blatantly just absolutely failed. It was like, wah, wah, wah. Sad it, trombone. It, it, I would have been more likely to throw that out if the if the couple had been sitting together, like closer together, but like the other person was that. kind of on, like on the couch. Do you think it was a spouse, his partner, or sister? Oh, it might have been. A, oh, I didn't look. Partner. I wasn't looking up at the time whenever he said about the siblings. If he is, if she said, "Well, we have," I have two sisters, and if he had looked at her, 
Right. I'm gonna tell. I bet you it was it's it's harder with the blur to to know what kind of relationship. Yeah, sorry, guys. Had. It's just such a pain to have. The... No, no, no. Um, I think it worked out. Oh, it's fine. I mean, you don't want. You really don't. I don't want to have to do that. These people could. It'd be embarrassing for them later to. Yeah. No, I think it's. I mean, I I don't I don't mind, like, um exposing kelly because she's made herself yeah, yeah, a public she's, figure she's, figure she's, but those people are just there for a reading you know like yeah a private reading i and it know, shouldn't I, give anything specific away to be able for anybody to figure them out yeah who's that vague except for the murder uh, i i feel bad about that one that's that's i mean that for me was an example of like I think a lot of people say like what's the harm in in doing this but that one was just sort of like that was an example of you know a more obvious harm than the other ones and the other ones are just kind of stringing people along and taking their money and that's bad enough but still just good, still uh, good, you know good. like have have a good happy life and help people out didn't she stop giving them advice to go into the mediumship world here in the last couple of readings yes that, that kind of faded i think she got her recruits in early on and this kind of faded so in a nutshell let's let's just look at this again she says at the beginning of this so this is um i wrote down at the beginning to make sure i ask you she says it's been a successful day she feels really good about all the readings she's given. Of course, she's going to say that. She's not going to go, well, I kind of failed at everything today. I really apologize. I was off. But I'm going to ask you, what, if anything, do you think that she got that was accurate of any kind that might feel like she has some sort of ability to communicate with the dead? Name name all of them. Name, I, I can't because the... the um... I felt like the one, the more, more quote unquote successful readings were the, were the ones where she already knew some information about the people. Like a hot reading. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and the other ones were so vague and, and sort of, she, um, she spent a lot of time asking questions and fishing for information. She wasn't like, yeah. Um, anytime she, especially early on, if she was going to say something definitive about somebody, maybe she didn't know quite as well, like the first reading, I think maybe, um, I'm looking over my notes to see if there's anything. She really kind of asked the question and got confirmation from the person. And then she made like, uh, your mother was older, right. Or whatever. I don't know what the questions were, but I'm just making that up. But you know, your mother was older and the person would say, well, no, she was kind of young when she had me. Well, then, you know, whatever. Then she would go in a different direction. Or if she had gotten an, an affirmative for that, then she would have made another statement. Like, oh, she was having some health issues or whatever. And and so a lot of it depended on, she asked a lot of questions um, and tried to draw information out of people, even though she had directed them not to give her information. So for for me to say that she got anything any information yeah. that i would say was from directly from the dead i would say i don't i can't I, I, i'm not seeing it i'd have to give her a zero the only thing i we saw that was even remotely like you said it was with tracy where she says oh that wasn't your dad then it must have been your stepdad I mean, right and and he's here with your son and you know and, and that but we know she knows him about the nails getting your you just got your nails done but then i kind of talked about how you can see their nails if they have those long claws and how it, you know they're perfect and everything you can see right. it on the screen or they could be talking about it or it could have just been a general hit um yeah and the son you know oh you've got a son that's passed she said on one of them and and but right. she knew the person she admitted yeah, later that she knew the person um I, so, i'm not seeing anything um again i mean you're like if if you're if you're talking about information oh, the b name she got a b name she names bob right right she said brian wow. or, or byron so like she offered a she offered an example and it was bob it was it wasn't even like you know um oh man there is yeah no so I, I yeah like if you're talking about evidence in terms of 
how I would define it, which is she doesn't know anything about the sitter at all. And she doesn't fish for information. And she is and, not looking these people up. She is, like I said, she's not the hot reader that Tom. No, I don't think she's Google doing that. He would have uh, saw the name on the screen hours ago. In fact, he's got a readings coming up. I haven't read him yet, but I guarantee there he's he's they're going to be spot on hot reads. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think her hits were like maybe they took a break and um, somebody talked about having their nails done or something, and and then she just used that later. So that's I don't, I don't think she was, best. that's the best we got. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, and, and you, like you said, she could have gotten that clue because the person was sitting like this and her nails were beautifully done. So mm -hmm. you don't really, I don't even, I, I don't even know if that was a hot reading at all. You know, um, you know, I'm convinced that, but it could have, yeah. Use that or a guess. So she's okay. So uh, Kelly Eckhart, she's from Sacramento. She calls herself an evidential medium. Now, mm -hmm. this woman, she said she's certified and everything, right? She Does she call herself right. famous or popular? Or a lot of psychics will do that. They'll say, you know, that they're well-bound mm -hmm. or she, does she mm -hmm. do any of that? She might earn a best website. Best-selling author or psychic I'm trying, uh, I'm trying psychic to find stars or. No, because I think they would have said that in the introduction. Yeah. So you didn't see any of that. So she, also she said um, an astrologist. Right. She said she was certified advanced psychic evidential medium and that her expert status came from the Ronnie Deutsch radio show and the 98 rock show. And we've already talked about how those aren't reputable um, sites. She and I think she's hot. She's good. Right. And well, she got she's on those two. um directories for the psychic directories right and she got her 16.99 certificate 16 dollars and 99 cent certificate that said she's an evidential a master evidential media i mean i don't know that if that's where she got it but i just looked i googled it took me half a minute to google it and find that i could get a certificate to be a master um right, evidential medium she she's got okay on Instagram. Again, think think of if this person could communicate with the dead. Not only would she be working with Ukraine right now, and 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 it would be a powerful thing you could do if you could actually communicate with dead people. But well, I mean, I've been watching the the um, hype about the Brian Koberger case about the four Ohio. Oh gosh, that was terrifying. I'd be loved. I'd love to know. You know, like from her um what happened to those four students that got why murdered didn't she, why didn't she warn them right the murderer was amongst them they said they think he was in the house be, men been there and just didn't kill that he'd been in there before why didn't oh, she crazy. warn these people why didn't anybody right. warn these people right it, it's just like those kinds of things what about covid why did we not get warned about that you know there's all right. those things we don't get warned about and if they say oh but nobody would have listened to him Will there still be a record of you trying to get us to pay attention? Right. And you didn't. There's no record of you saying, hey, everybody, there's this, something horrible is going to happen. The world's going to close down. Millions of people are going to die. Economies are going to be almost failing. All these horrible things are going to happen from uh, 2020, 2021, and it'll get better in 2023. I see that happening. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it might be some kind of illness airborne illness no there's nothing right people like her are like i'm going on vacation i don't know if it was her but i've seen several psychics that would say you know they plan vacations during the time covid happened so why did they plan a vacation then if they didn't there there's just they must have known there was going to be some kind of disruption in the world that would let them know. anyway on instagram okay i on Instagram, you're supposed to be famous. I mean, well, you're supposed to be like speaking to the dead. She's got right. 3,000 followers. 3,000 3, followers. Okay. She does readings all the time with different people. Small group readings, large group readings, fairs. Um, uh, she's, she works with other people all the time. She's going to Egypt. 
Oh, she's got Kimmel, Kimberly Meredith. She's going to be with. I did a reading. I did a whole thing on her too. She, she's okay. blink. She's the healer that blinks. She goes like this, oh. and the amount of time she blinks has to do with like whatever it is that I'm blinking, and she uses blinking like a verb, like, like, I'm going to blink. It. <laughs> I see six blinks, so that means something about six years. She's out there, boy. That is an interesting. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> like, okay. She's right. a blinker. I'd, um, I'd like to know about the the mediums that use people. Um, they use facilitated communication. There's a there's a a parent oh, in um, Indiana, I think, yeah. that goes to the spiritual. There's the a. I got tired of got tired of holding the, the kid's hand and moving it around and he decided that he was getting his messages from her telepathically that one no this oh, one is different one this one is that they're using the kid as a human ouija board oh i just found her son um up on instagram there's her there's a son her son died in 1995 okay and what did i say the year was 1995 yeah 1995 i said tyler was where is that list so his friend so was that when he would they were up for, in the top 20 still I said, 1995 well i know it was the top 20 but oh tyler uh anybody born in 1990 to 1999 number nine okay and that's when he was born 1995 right dab in the middle and there's a post on her page, so it would not be. Oh, wait, this is, this is, okay, I got it wrong. Sorry, guys. This isn't Tracy's son. This is, um. Oh, that's yeah. Kelly's son. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Her son died in 1995. Okay. Then again, if she would know a lot about these names, because her son probably had com had names like that, too. Right. Uh, her son had it. names of Tyler's in, in his, his little world. I know that when I was growing up, when my kids were growing up, the name Ashley was everywhere. Yeah. Ash and you might not, you might not even remember that, like consciously, you know, it just might be one of those things that are tucked in the back of your head. Yeah, exactly. Cause you won't, it's, it's just one of those things. So here she is on, on Instagram. She's got like zero followers, 3000 followers for somebody who's communicating the dead is like next to nothing. She has a crystal shop in Sacramento and that has 3000 likes oh um on twitter 178 followers okay it's pretty weak that's not somebody who's made a name for themselves no i'm not saying she isn't making money because i'm sure she's making some some cash but that's not much yeah between her crystal store and and the and the readings that she's doing she's probably doing okay still even with not a big following this, there's so much money in this world. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's not even funny how much money there is in this this little world they're in. Any final thoughts? No, this was fun. I mean, you know, like no, it's fun, huh? <laughs> it's been the day with you. Yeah, I um, I think that it's interesting the degree to which human beings go to 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 soothe themselves with things that are um outsiders like psychics or you know some people use drugs and alcohol or whatever but you know like i think this is a coping mechanism for for a lot of people and it could be just a temporary thing you know you go you know just to help you through a certain and you know i think maybe there's a percentage that go once and they they get a reading and then that helps them in some way and they move on with their life. But I think some of them sort of get addicted to like speaking, you know, whatever they convince themselves that this relationship with the person community. beyond it's needs to continue. It's a community after a while where you make friends and you um, go to conferences and you read the same books, you listen to the same podcasts, you get the readings with the same people. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these women don't show up at, multiple things there was a couple in here i said oh i've seen her before oh okay outside of this and, mediumship reading because they're all in this circle they're all in this little yeah world. and uh, if you're in that world you're less likely to like you stay within your i don't like this term but you know you kind of stay within your own bubble you don't you don't look outside that group 
Um, especially if your needs are kind of getting met, then you just kind of like, and then I think there's also this sort of us against them kind of thing that happens where, oh, you're not, you're not a believer. So, you know, there's a, there's over time, there's a, I don't know if it's paranoia or whatever, but you know, like there's a distrust of people who aren't in your circle. I guess. I'm sure nobody's gonna nobody in that world is gonna want to listen to this unless it's Kelly. Hey Kelly. <laughs> I wasn't impressed. Yeah, but you but you would think that you would think that people who are practicing a profession would want to know where their weaknesses are and correct the weaknesses so they could be oh, you think they would want to hear what the skeptics think of them? No. <laughs> no. I told no. you Kelly is gonna be even slightly interested in what I have to say. Or you no. and I have to say, but no. she might might hate listen to the video to see. Well, that's true. You know, reach out, Kelly. I'd love to talk to you. Um, here's <laughs> my last question before we go. Okay. What do you think the people who had readings from her today think? Because I know that is a, a for a fact that what a lot of people do is they'll say, um, like they'll leave and they're misremembering they all got copies of this reading so they have access to this video just as much as i do they all got the same video and so i know they could listen to it again and think about it and maybe they would have a different experience after they listen to it again and go yeah that was pretty vague but a lot of them will say i i had the most amazing reading today because my aunt's ex-husband steve came through Right. And she knew, or um, or um, looking at my notes here, she knew about our birthday, my son and my birthday coming up. She knew that our birthdays are right next to each other, or she or she knew that our my grandparents passed within eleven days of each other, or she knew that my daughter had been murdered, or you know they they remember it differently than actually how it happened because they don't usually go back and listen to the readings again, right. Right. I don't think about it. What do you think these people thought when they hung up the phone and they left? What kinds of things do you th think happened in their mind? They thought happened to them. I, I, if I was going to pick like the two that I think might, might have different thoughts once they, once they've left would be the last one, because there were so many things that weren't right. And I think he was aware that they weren't like, he didn't sound like he would, he didn't sound like Lewis, who was like, oh, you know, yeah, you're right. He was like, nope, it wasn't, we didn't, we just had cats and dogs, you know. He might, he might have thought it was probably the other person that should have gotten the reading, not me. Yes. But not, I don't think he would say, gosh, I think she's not really talking to the dead. I think he would just make an excuse that it was. Right. I mean, it depends I mean, he on. He his... call for an hour that's true they're motivated to sit there and listen so obviously well that's true and then the other one was for me was the murder one because i don't know if she'd go back and think you know that was really condescending of her to tell me that i shouldn't be angry about my daughter being murdered i think she's going to hear it totally differently she's going yeah. to hear it like oh my gosh she said i should i i'm i'm doing the i'm advocating for her i'm doing the best for her i think she's gonna leave i think she's gonna probably be one of the ones that leaves the reading thinking that that was the best reading ever and really she yeah connected with me we can see it as condescending and a myth like, like she had to hours. say you know what about my daughter but um but then you know the like, husband's a stronger connection right that's true and she'd had she'd had previous readings too so yeah you're probably right I'm sure she did. And like I said, she was in the, she was in early in one of the earlier calls. True. So she's been, she paid her 50 bucks. She's going to be here all day. She'll be yeah. here. And I bet you she comes up and gets another reading again. How much you want to bet that she gets a reading uh, later on and somebody remembers that there was a murder. Right. Thomas right. Might say that. He might say, I'm getting that your daughter passed and there was something really something. Yeah. Do you I, think it's like interesting? Do you think it's like playing the lottery? Like it pays off just enough to keep you playing. Like if you're motivated, 
You know what I mean? Like you're you're at a casino and and you know that the house always wins, but every once in a while when you're playing the slot machines, somebody gets a bunch of coins that come out of and everybody's like, "Oh, I got to keep playing because that person beside me won." Do you I think it's know. anything like that? I don't know. I think that like psychologically it depends because some some people like these people here today, they paid 50 bucks, they hang around for hours. And they're getting multiple readings. So like one person gets read in the mornings, one person gets read in the afternoon or whatever. And I think that, I think they think of it as, um, of course I'm getting read. You know, of course, it's it's not a big deal to them. No. I don't, hmm. I don't really think so. I think they think of it as just common. And for an example, when Mark and I went to um, uh, Essex Park, uh, the Stanley Hotel, it's supposed to be haunted, you know, it's, just, it's it's not, but they have a ghost tour. And Mark and I went through this ghost tour. And at one point we stopped outside of the hotel rooms where, this is where The Shining was written. Okay. And so we're standing there on this ghost tour and the the person giving this ghost tour had his whole hands and we had to sing a nursery song like ring around the rosy okay. and uh talk about in, in, indoctrination you know getting you yeah into, yeah to see stuff and this yeah. woman this woman stops it, um and her kids were with her she was like you know my age now and she had adult kids with her teenage kids and she says Oh my gosh because it was supposed to bring out the little spirit children and they're supposed to mingle amongst them and touch you and stuff oh she said that a child was holding her hand she felt them holding her hand right then because we're just standing really still and you know we had been holding hands i think and then i think we we had to we were we were still yeah she said oh my gosh the, I, 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 they're holding my hand i can feel them holding my hands and then it was if that had happened to me i don't think i would have moved out of that hallway forever i think i would have been like i'm moving into this hotel thinking that there were ghost children would be there holding your hand and touching yeah. your hand you know that would yeah. be phenomenal i would be like yeah. okay so i need to be here in this hallway i'd have a chair i'd have a room in there permanently and i'd come out and i'd say okay kids tell me i'm gonna sing ring around the rosy for you again and 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 so on and and her and the the tour person's like okay let's move on and, her, and, the, and the kids and she's telling her kids but there's kids holding my hand they're like come on mom let's go and she's like okay you know I was like, okay I to myself if you are in a position and and ch dead children are holding your hands the ghost dead children right it was it was like the equivalent of mom come on i'm hungry let's go you know, let's go get a cheeseburger or something. She's like, all right, I'll go. They weren't impressed. Nobody, they were just like, and I asked Mark, I said, what do you think about that? He goes, oh, it's probably such a, a common everyday occurrence to this woman to have dead children touching her hands that it was like, okay, what's well, just another day getting my hands held by a dead children. Uh. Ghosts. And these people who are attending this today, they this is normal. They've mm. had you could tell from the, what they were saying. They've had readings for many readings. Normally, right. my brother comes through, and or you know, it's it's a normal life for them. To look at it from our perspective, they would call us uh, pretty bad names. I think. I I don't yeah. think they could see us that. I don't think they could see it from our life at all. No. I know Tracy can't, but some of these other people can't think that they would even think see they wouldn't even think to question it would they they'd, they'd say well I, I didn't get a reading this time but i'll just get one next time or there was other things that they don't understand i really felt that or or she's just that janice and susan are just picking apart my reading how dare they right or why 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 would somebody even do don't they have a life they were on for like five hours right right no how arrogant of the skeptics to be putting down my my choices or my reading i don't think that they would think very highly of us right but i do this channel not for the not for them people who are believers until they start to question then they come to my channel they find the channel or they find my articles and they say 
oh, that did feel weird. I did yeah. kind of have a feeling that something wasn't quite right. Same with Epstein. Yeah. You're not going to yeah. turn a believer. They're no. a rabbit hole. They're not changing their mind. It's only when they start going, that was odd. They've got to question it themselves. Yeah. I, I see, I, I've watched um, your your videos and stuff. And what I find interesting is that I think it, I think it helps people to begin to understand what questions to ask. Like somebody might internally say that didn't quite feel right to me, but then they just move on because they're not, they don't really know what questions to ask. Like how, do, how do I even approach this to, cause it seems like if you're in that group and you're having questions, you know, it's, it's not going to be um, uh, met with positive energy if you're questioning it and nobody else is and so if if you've got internal questions and you're around that situation you're not going to say anything but if you come across the susan gerbic um critique and you're teaching people how to ask questions you know and 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 or you know a light bulb might go on you know it's like oh that's I'm getting now I'm getting the word get those people bit with my that, that makes sense now. now I understand and I am getting those comments on my website on my YouTube channel they are saying I was wondering how they did that and now I understand yeah I didn't get that before but always they're starting with a question they're all like that wasn't quite right to me and I was wondering if anybody else had noticed it and I googled that psychic's name or whatever and I stumbled across this and now it kind of makes some sense I yeah. get that not as often as I'd like, but you know, right, I've been right, doing right. This channel since March, but right. still, it's, it's the same idea. But I also want to—I really want the skeptic world, the scientific world, to take this seriously and understand that this is a like a mind trick or a—it's uh, emotion, it's a manipulative, and there's yep. a lot of wordplay that's going on in here. And I think that we poo-poo it and say, "Oh, how stupid! Why would people believe in in this kind of stuff?" Of course, it's nonsense. Right. Or um, you know, they're just throwing out letters of the alphabet. And and I think that they, I think if you really watch it like we've done and dedicated a huge chunk of our day to it, to understand, I, I think there's nuances and there's a lot going on yep. that is far more than just, oh, what's wrong with these people? Of course, they're just giving generic stuff because in the mind of somebody who really wants to believe, there was a lot of evidence to them. Right. They don't they don't know about the hot reading stuff. Right. They don't have a clue or they they feel like, well, you know, it's just a vague thing. Not I mean, mediumship isn't an exact science. Of course, she's just feeling her it, and maybe she got it misinterpreted. And so 10 years, four years, that's not such a big difference to a person who's already dead, you know, and it's like, why do you have to be such a stickler on everything? I could see it from their point of view. I can see it from their point of view, yeah. but I yeah. guarantee somebody who's a firm believer is not going to see it from my point of view or your point of view. Yeah. Well, and they're not taught to look, you know, and they're taught that it's bad to look, you know, like if you, because oh, yeah, it, I'm assuming that if that. you're, you don't if you're a, a doubter and you show up to one of those conferences and your your reading isn't going to be valid because you're doubting and that changes the energy you're a skeptic you have negative energy right so yeah. so if you're taught if you're not taught to think critically and you're not and you're taught that you're not supposed to ask questions then you you're not going to come across this information you're going to think it like you said earlier uh, you're going to think it's kind of normal for this kind of thing to to occur but if you've got if you've got those like niggling doubts and you're like something's off and you're willing to be open enough to explore a video or you know an article or whatever and and start reading then like you might not buy into it all at once but you might be able to to start thinking well if this if this one thing wasn't right like when she said you know an s name and i filled it in for her i didn't realize that, I'd done that. if that yeah. was kind of off then what else was off about that you know and the, and the more that you can ask those questions the more likely you're going to move into you know and be open to what the answers are you also have to be in a position to say 
oh, okay, I believe that. And it served a purpose, but it may have just been a coping strategy and I, I may need to move on. There may be other ways that I can handle the I grief of the son grief. or daughter or whatever. From this Mom I can't constantly be right. in my life like this. Well, anyway, right. anyway, this was, this was so much fun. I had a really good time. Fun. I know I watched the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Thank you for the invite. And you know what I got to do is after this, I've got to edit out those little things that were in there. So I've got to watch this video again. Oh, so I will be an expert on Kelly by the time we're done. Well, I know, no. I know where to fast forward to, to get to the parts that need to be edited. Yeah. Because yeah. A few places that we, we, that need to be edited. Not too I'm many. Not, yeah. I'm not missing that much, you guys, but I yeah. really appreciate your time. This was fun. Um, yeah. I'll have it up by the next day on our, <laughs> on my channel. So. I'll be interested to see what people have to say. You know, I'm interested. Okay, that was in what way too get? long. I couldn't watch it all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. What did we get? Watch what did we get? Channel. Right. What did we get wrong? You know, maybe I, I people saw did. stuff that we didn't see. Only the true true fans will have watched. Right. And maybe Thomas. Hey, Thomas John, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Can we talk? Yeah. <laughs> this is my friend Janice. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Take care. Thanks, Bye. Susan. <laughs>